Well, handedly oh, neighborinos, it's the Welsh Hunter here, back with another epic guide and one of my absolute favorite games of the year, A Plague Tale Requiem. Yes, A Plague Tale is back. This was again developed by Asobo Studio, published by Focus Entertainment, and will cost you normally around £49.99 slash $59.99 in the US, but of course, was a Game Pass Day 1 release, so smash the Game Pass straight in the p ass. So, so, if you played the first Plague Tale game, you know exactly what it's like. You've got to run from rats, uh, incredibly moving story, Hugo has a mental power, etc, etc. Well, it's more of the same this time around, but they've made it even better. A happy ending isn't what Amicia and Hugo get, not just yet anyway, as they still need to fight rats, fight human rats, and fight other supernatural rats. It's a rat infestation. As for achievements, you will get 16 for completing each chapter, but the upgrade all skills and weapons are back, and this time around it's a little more annoying because 9 times out of 10, we will have to start pretty much a new game plus to get the final few materials needed to upgrade everything. Uh, there is a cheese method with the weapons, which is good, but not with the skill, sadly. Plus, we got a whole bunch of collectibles to grab as well. It's easy, but fantastic. All in all, you're looking at around potentially around 15 to 20 hours to complete this, but I'm going to show you a little trick what we're going to do. So if we head into the settings now, you can turn the difficulty down to uh, narrative, which I, I advise. It's obviously up to you, completely up to you. But if you go across the gameplay uh, with the right bumper, go down and you can see a couple of options. And the main one we're going to be going for there is invincible mode. Now again, um, this is just specifically for the sole purpose of the walkthrough. I highly advise using, uh, not using invincible mode, um, fighting the sort of enemies on your own, etc. As it is really fantastic. But again, I'm doing it now. This is just solely for the purpose of the achievement guide. Um, but I've played it without and it was just awesome. It's so, so good. But of course, that's just to let you know, if you do ever get stuck on a path for whatever particular reason, um, Invincible Mode is there for you to pick and choose, and it does not void achievements either. So keep that in mind if you do end up getting stuck. But again, I advise just leaving it off and experiencing the story for yourself. So again, you can have a little look around. Uh, you know, you can put it on narrative, which is the easiest, um, which is the easiest game mode as well. That's basically it. Doesn't again, it doesn't avoid any achievements. So you're not going to miss any for doing that. Again, like I said, please don't call me a cheat or a loser because I've done that. It's just solely for the purpose of the walkthrough. I want to make it nice and easy for everyone, and it's there if you want to enjoy the story a bit more as well, huh? Exactly. So, also what I'm going to be doing then is I will be skipping the cutscenes. I'll let you watch the cutscenes by yourself as to avoid potentially any spoilers. Um, so, if you want to, you can just press and hold the B button to skip the cutscenes again. I highly advise watching them anyway because just everything in this game is so freaking good. Um, but yes, yeah, so you can watch it sort of on your own monitor or your own TV screen there. I will crack on. So what we're going to be doing then is following Big Hugo, or still Small Hugo, actually. Um, eventually, we will be able to press the right trigger to sprint. There we go. So you can press the right trigger to sprint. It's a nice, easy beginning. Oh, I also forgot to say, so with that being said, then let's begin. So with that being said, then let's begin. And here we are then. Right. <laughs> so we're just following Big Hugo. We've got Big Lucas with us as well, if you remember everyone from the first game. Uh, we're just going to be playing a little little game of hide-and-seek before we get into the, you know, rats trying to eat your eyeballs and stuff like that. and You know, everything that's happened from the first game. So, <laughs> so uh, one thing I should point out as well, the voice actors have changed from the first game. If, you've, if you can remember, um, I think, I believe, there was just a little more sort of French. There was a little more French to it. These voice actors are a lot more English. I am... Um, doesn't make a difference to me, but I know how how people can be picky with uh, changing voice actors into the next game. Anyway, what we're going to do then, don't do what I've just done here. All we're going to be doing then is hiding from Lucas. Now, what you'll be able to see is like a faint glow. There you go. So he's just got a diamond on his head, i.e. he has just seen us, but we've run away, which is fine. So we're going to hide behind this wall. Um, but what you'll see, if there are enemies walking about on the screen, if this is the first game you are playing, you will see like a light... It's like a... A little glowy fade um, appear on screen, uh, which will tell you exactly where the enemy is. Of course, we'll see a lot more of that later on. 
I'm not sure if Lucas actually starts off in random locations. The second time that I played through this, he started in a different location and almost caught me. But uh, yeah, so all we're doing for now then is we are just hiding from Big Pukas the Lucas. Old puke bag. Old rat face. All right, that, that's a bit harsh. She hasn't got a rat face. So eventually we will be able to get this little notification that says we can sneak up behind him and press the X button. Now, that's what we're going to do. So we're going to press the X button to scare him. Now, normally, of course, um, in real life relationships, if there is a boy and a girl and you sneak up behind someone, for, for whatever reason, there's always a finger up the butt. What, what, but to, that's what happens in every single relationship. You don't just slap a butt. For some reason, you got to jam a thumb right up there and... Man, that hurts. <laughs> that hurts, man. But it's all fun in relationships anyway. So from here then, there was a bit of an edit. Um, but what we're going to do, we're going to go past the wall that we just were. So basically, you can probably just see the tower directly in front of us. That is the direction that we are heading in. Uh, so just keep heading down and then eventually little Hugo boss right here will want to climb on rocks. <laughs> what a kid. What a damn kid. So it is literally from where we were because Lucas, I think, like I said, was in a random... He, he might be randomized from me. He may be in a different location for you. But all I'd done there was just head left, head towards the tower. And here Hugo is... Uh, Hugo Boss is flying on rocks, apparently. Broski's high off life. But we are going to get our first missable achievement. Now, it is easy, but... There can be potentially a little glitch where, so basically Hugo is going to throw pine cones into the river. Sometimes though, every time he throws one in, the pine cones may disappear. If they do disappear, I highly advise pressing the start button and pressing restart section, the second option right there. So if that does, it did happen to me, he threw a few in, he threw a couple of pine cones in, um, they disappeared. And I had to restart the section. So if that does happen, um, just, just make sure to do that. So don't worry about that first pine cone. Only now. So if you press the left trigger and then hold the right trigger for a few seconds until the aim is squarely on it. There we go. Like so. And that's all we're going to be doing then for the next couple of minutes is just shooting the crap out of pine cones. Again, I highly advise if you just get your sort of aim and everything ready rather than wait because it does take about a second or two delay so even before he throws it in get your aiming ready and just shoot every single pine cone we've got a buddy here on the right uh, Tonin hey toning it down <laughs> ah, that was terrible tone it down no no it still doesn't work anyway don't worry about him all he does is actually throw rocks in which is not needed for the achievement you just focus on little Hugo Foco <laughs> you just focus on little Hugo boss and his pine cones, he's going to start throwing two or three in at a time. So just focus on little broski, get them all done, and then after the cutscene, the achievement should unlock. Okay. There's the cutscene, and now it should unlock. So it should unlock it immediately here. If it doesn't, you will have to restart the uh, checkpoint again. And if you've gone too far, you will actually have to play it from the very beginning and do the whole hide and seek game again, unfortunately. That's exactly what I had to do, which is a pain. But hopefully it worked for you anyway. For now, though, all we're going to be doing is following the obvious path around. A path. You're very posh, aren't I? <laughs> Follow the path. Uh, but just follow the path. It's basically, like I said, this is just a prologue, bit of a tutorial for those who haven't played it. And if you haven't played it, play the bloody first game as well. It was fantastic. Um, so, yeah, nothing else is happening at the minute. All we're doing is just going to be following the path, enjoying the scenery again, until rats go for our butt snatch. Again. Captain, 
button. What do we do? Let me see. Oh, a locked wooden door, eh? Not like we can just kick it in or anything. Uh, anyway, we're going to head through to the left. Unfortunately here, Hugo is going to get us caught and in a lot of trouble. You don't need to go into dark, eerie, disgustingly creepy places. You can just play outside, you know, but... Well, I mean, if you've been chewed on by rats for so long in the first game, then I suppose you can have a little adventure. So we're going to have a little ball right here. Now in the timestamps, what you'll notice is it'll just have... So we've got the chapter... Basically, it's chapter one. Chapter one is called Under a New Sun, and then it's got a whole bunch of, like, sort of mini levels, if you want to call them that, within the chapter. So it's levels within the chapter, chapters within the chapter. So that's what you're probably going to see if you're wondering what everything is. So, for instance, we have just started the hives level of the chapter. So, um, we are going to be doing a little running section now. Again, this there's only one path that we can go, so go round and then jump down. Are they burnt? I don't know. Let's be discreet and get out. Maybe it was an accident? Where are the people? And when we do jump down, there's going to be a cutscene and we're going to have to run immediately because Angry Steroid Man is after us and wants to cave our face in with an axe. So let's try not to do that. So immediately, as soon as the cutscene ends, start running, head to the right, climb through the wall with the A button there, head to the left through the open door, Keep on going, keep on going, keep on running, keep on running. Press the Y button. Again, a lot of things will alternate between the Y and the A button. It'll always tell you uh, which button prompts to press anyway. And then immediately press the B button here to crouch down. Uh, I think she does it automatically anyway, but it's the B button to crouch anyway. Now, this is always a not entertaining part. If you didn't, if you wanted to see some blood and guts early, well, there it is. An axe straight to the head. And that's... Uh, Oof, and you can hear the sort of squelching of brains and stuff as well. That's, um, that's nice. <laughs> Not really, though. Right, now remember, if you have um, chosen invincible mode, what you can do is pretty much just run straight to the exit objective. But what I'm going to do is still act as if um, invincible mode is not on. Uh, just, obviously, you know, it would be pretty unfair of me to just run through everyone. So just wait, of course, until this guy here is looking sort of towards the house, towards the dead body. And then his buddy here is going to get him going. So he's eventually going to walk, and then we can go straight ahead. Oh my god, it's my, my grandpa! My grandpa is full of biscuits and chocolate needs. Ah, damn it, grandpa, what the hell happened to you? Press the white button here to go through the door again. And just wait, wait here though. Do not go forward too far. Now we can just go and hide behind this little bit of wall. So, yeah, like I said, even though Invincible Mode's on, I'm still going to be acting. It wouldn't be much of a guide if I just rushed through to the end, would it? It wouldn't be much of a guide. So what we're going to do then, we need to press the right bumper, scroll over to the hand icon right there. That will enable us to throw it rather than use our sling. So press the left trigger again, press the right trigger to throw it. And when he turns to the left, we can now start uh, keeping going on. So yes, as I said, it wouldn't be fair of me to just run straight through to the end. That's why I'm still acting and doing this as a proper guide. But anyway, head to the left, head into El Bushio. All our heads been stuck in a bunch of bushes before. It should be something that we're all used to by now. Uh, you know, when we're trying to hide, play hide and seek and stuff. Uh, wait until that guy is around there. He may see you, but he should be pretty much okay. Again, if you've got Invincible Mode on, he can't even hurt you, so you don't even have to worry too much. Um, but just crack on anyway. The game has very generous checkpoints as well, as you will see. You've just seen it in the bottom right-hand corner. It does save often. Uh, climb underneath here. Well, you're not climbing underneath here. You're going underneath. And we're just going to stay for a few momentioses, a few mentoses. Now, this is going to be another little tutorial thing, so if an enemy gets close, you can press the Y button to distract him, and that's exactly what we're going to do. Um, there's, there's quite a few more to this game than there was in the first one. Uh, sort of new mechanics. So there it is, pressing the Y button there. You sort of threw it just past his head, <laughs> it enables you to move on. Don't move on, head to the right, of course, into the bushes again. You, know, you don't want to be caught, and get stabbed and that'll be a very short game wouldn't it that'll be a shit long 5000 uh, games gamer score type game then wouldn't it and that's not what we want 
Right, hide behind these barrels, pick up these pots as well by pressing the Y button. Of course, yeah, pots were very, very good game mechanic in the first one. So, again, pressing the right bumper disc, choose pots, left trigger to aim, right trigger to throw, throw it over to the left, as you've just seen, and that will enable us to move on. So, sneaking through, sneaking poo. Don't worry about hiding underneath the cart. We can uh, pretty much just go past the Marge Simpson unbrushed haircut haystack right there. And we can go through the door, except we're not going through the door because it's bolted from the other side. So, we need Big Boss, Hugo Boss, uh, to go through. Now, um, with a few game scenes, it'll tell you to look, but what you can do is hold the left bumper and then you can press the Y button in order to get certain characters to do things for us. This time, we got Hugo to go underneath there and uh, he is going to open the door for us. Naturally. You think, <laughs> imagine if he just run away and just left us to die. I would haunt the crap out of you for the rest of your life. And then your mental disease thing, whatever you've got going on, would not be a ting, man. Not be a ting, nah. No. Right, anyway, are we out of the woods just yet? Not totally, not totally. So anyway, keep heading straight for the time being. Uh, uh, wow, we've got a little Prince Andrew situation going on here, right here. Oh, <laughs> your person. Sorry, shouldn't have said that. <laughs> Who are you? We got lost. We're leaving. Just let the boy go. You hear that, Remy? Are you with the thieves? No, we just arrived. Listen, it's our fault if he was late. You have no right to be here. Remy, you handle it. And don't disappoint me. But the boy, he's the right age to learn. You shouldn't have come. You don't want to do this, believe me. You talk too much. Stop! So, after Douchebag tried to Prince Andrew us, sorry, sorry, just, I've got to stop saying that. Uh, Hugo starts going nuts and actually doesn't do anything, he just faints. Cheers, Maka, appreciate your help. Jesus, you think you would have learned from the first game, wouldn't you, Hugo, huh? So, after skipping the cutscene then, this is the Dreaming of Elsewhere chapter within the chapter. And there is literally nothing else to do, nothing to grab, nothing else to do apart from just walk pretty much in a straight path. There's no hidden turns or anything like that. Hugo's just, you know, got a migraine from being a little annoying barstool. <laughs> nah, just joking, he's a cutie. But still, just walk in a straight line. Nice. 
killed you. What? You're so noisy. Alright, I'm coming. Is this dying? I don't want to die. And with that one done, now we move on to the lies chapter within a chapter. And again, for the next couple of minutes, there is not a lot to do. We are basically back at the beginning. If you remember the very end of the first Plague Tale Innocence, well, this uh, the, the, this is it. They're still, they're still going. It was all just a bad dream. <laughs> now everyone's happy. Everyone can live their life. And that's it. Game over. 1,000 Gs. Congrats, everyone. Uh, but in fact, of course, it's not game over. we got a hell of a lot to get through yet. Hell of a lot. You back and you fell asleep. It's probably just a lack of salt in your blood. But Amicia, it's been a long trip, Hugo. We're all exhausted. But the Red City's at hand. We'll get you checked there. You know we're going to meet a great alchemist there, from the Order. They know the macula very well. They've been studying it for centuries. Yet they didn't come to help us in Guienne before we had to flee. They didn't know the Inquisition would come after us. They are ready to welcome us now. Let's hope they'll make up for it then. They will. The macula's not just in Hugo's blood. It concerns everybody. And it can change everything. What's that? I don't know. Be careful. Let's see. Hello there! Hello. What's going on? Right, so, after being caught by the, uh, well, not being caught by the thieves, who, for some reason, of course, if you watch the cutscene, they had beehives on their face for some reason. It's like they literally just went, oh, that's a good idea, let's take a beehive on our face. Yeah. Anyway, uh, you can just uh, crouchily walk up for the moment. You can see what I meant by the fade on the screen uh, from where the enemies actually are. It means they can't see you. Only when they've got a diamond on their head will they uh, come to investigate. So when they nip off down there, then keep crouching for now. Um, if you, we're just going to keep going straight. I think if you get caught, um, that's fine. You may have to fight them, or you can pretty much just run to the end. So it really doesn't matter, actually. Uh, but we're going to be doing a lot more running in just a moment. So head to the right here. Obviously, just wait for El Broski to start nipping off. We are going to throw a rock. Don't think it'll be... Oh, in fact, we do reach... I did reach it, uh, so <laughs> wait for Elbrosco to go over to the left, though. Uh, we can pretty much just keep going. Don't stop for anything while he is distracted. Nice goat. Nice goat butt. It looks delicious. Not not the butt. The butt doesn't look delicious. The goat does. Sorry. <laughs> just, so just keep going. Don't stop for anyone. There is a guy in front of us there. He should already be walking to the left, so that should be fine. Now, what... Well, you can, sometimes you'll get caught, sometimes you won't. I do get caught, but that's fine, because when we jump down here, another cutscene's going to happen, and basically the whole wheat field, the old Theresa May field of wheat, is going to be on fire, and we're going to have to make a sprint for it. So, go, go, go! So that's what we're going to be doing. Keep going straight. Obviously, avoid the fire. That is pretty much... I shouldn't need to tell you that. Climb through the window. There we go. And... Oh, oh no, now what are we going to do? Give me it. <laughs> oh, that's an unlucky way to die, isn't it? Hilarious, though, if you're being chased and stuff with axes and that. Climb up. Anyway, head underneath again. Press the B button, of course, to crouch. And then just jump down again. Woohoo, that was unlucky. Now, there is going to be a little bit of a fight scene. Now, of course, if you go... Now, this is another bit of tutorial here where you can press the... Um, It'll be the X button to slice, but you can press the right trigger. If an enemy is close on you, you can uh, press the right trigger, I believe. 
in order to slice them a couple of times and then the button prompt there with the X button will appear so you can slice and dice them. Um, otherwise, if enemy enemies are far away, it's the normal slingshot, so left trigger and right trigger. Now, of course, if you've got invincible mode on, you can actually just run to the end. You're not trying to hide from anyone. You can literally just run to the end. Uh, but just keep heading straight anyway. Uh, keep heading straight and you're going to see a little pot just on the rock beside us right there. Literally, the exit is pretty much straight on. So, again, if you want to kill all the guys, you can do that. More than welcome to do that. But if you're on invincible mode, uh, we are going to just fly through it. Now, I'm just showing you this uh, sort of first scene with everyone dying, etc. Um, but from now on, if there are, when there are moments like this, what I'll end up doing is pretty much just go, um, jumping straight through the end. Um, yes. So that is what I'll be doing next time. So slice up this guy as well. Again, that's something you can do if you do sneak up on enemies. You can just kill them dead like this, which is... I mean, Amicia has got goddamn brutal um, after a, <laughs> since the last game. And then what we need to do then, we need to kill the guy who is choking out our mother. And no, not choking our mother in the good way. Not for the mother, anyway. So aim for the head, slice him down, bomb. Job done. And that is... The first chapter complete, so we will get the um, Under a New Sun achievement, and we will start chapter two called New C -c -c Come Bags. Uh, newcomers, sorry. <laughs> it's my eyes, it's my autocorrect in the voice as well. Sorry! I can't believe we made it. Are the people nice here? Nobody will attack us here, Hugo. Where do we start? And here we are. We made it. We're happy. Every Everybody are happy, huh? So, there is not a lot to do. You're just having a little look at your surroundings. Um, and I'm not sure if you actually have to do all these things to progress the story. I do it anyway, because um, it's always fun. A uh, nice bit of meat, nice bit of beef in your teeth. You can't beat it, except that's not beef, that's actually pork sausage, but still, the, the joke stands. So, we're just going to head straight through. And, again, like I said, all we're doing then is just having a little look at things. We are going to be coming up to um, a collectible called a souvenir as well. There are 21 souvenirs to collect in the game, and we will be coming up to the first one shortly. But for now, we're just heading up and straight. They're smiling. <laughs> It's true. Oh, look up there. The house with the weather vane. That's ours. Oh, right above the market. Yes. Brushes the view will be amazing. Firenze. Try them. My lady, why not change your hairstyle? Thank you, but I like it like this. Oh, huh? good for you. Bruh. Nobody messes with the dew. Didn't you ever watch... Uh, no, you probably didn't watch Ace Ventura, did you? Because this was supposed to be set in the 1800s or so. Uh, but still, nobody messes with the dew. Right, so from here, what we are going to do after the little conversation, we're going to head to the right. Again, I don't think there's anywhere else that you can possibly go. You're going to speak to someone who looks suspiciously like Lady Dimitrescu from Resident Evil, except not as tall and not as... Um, how can we put this? Uh, not as well endowed as our Resident Evil <laughs> antagonist. You know you're a barium. Only flowers. My mummy taught me. We kept them in a book at home. Do you want to buy flowers then? Thank you, but we like to pick them in the wild. It's our thing. Thank you, Lady Not Demetrescu. So, from here we're going to head to the left. We are now going to get the first souvenir. We're going to turn to the right. And we're basically going to play a nice little mini game. Now, literally, all you've got to do, um, you need to press the Y button to start up the mini game. And then all you need to do is pick up the pot with the uh, Y button, press uh, press the left trigger to aim, press the right trigger to throw. Basically, you need to get many as many of the cubes down as you can um, behind Broski. Um, <laughs> behind our little, it kind of looks like Lee Mack a little bit for some reason, a hilarious British comedian. So the easiest way to do this then is just to aim basically square in the middle of all of the cubes. And um, yeah, I'm pretty sure after three out of four anyway, he basically says congratulations. And that is how we get our first souvenir. You're 
great! That was close. I did. What did you expect? You're our best player today. And you didn't even use your sling. I think we have to get going. And there she blows, buddy. It's a souvenir. 121 best player. Top job. So from there, we can turn around and basically keep going straight now. And what we're actually going to be doing is watching a little music festival. It's a very happy place, which you can't beat. It's just grand. Oh, in fact, we got the fire broski first. So fire breathing king on, well... I mean, he just blows fire. He doesn't breathe fire, does he? Otherwise, he would be a dragon, which would need to be slayed. Not laid, but slayed. So as we continue up, we are going to see a little music festival. This is going to take around another minute or two to get through and enjoy. Just just enjoy the scenery before you get your eyeballs chewed up by Rathmuses. Hey, you know what? I'll put you up on my shoulders, all right? Oh, yes, please. Here we go. You're feeling all right up there? Yes, I can see everything. Amicia had a very serious face then, didn't she? Get your head, get your hands on my eyeballs, kid. I can't see where I'm going. So, oh, uh, okay, we'll just leave that guy alone. Uh, he looked like a bit of a broken man there, like his dog just chewed up his last conundrum while he was trying to get it on with Lady Not Dimitrescu. He looked not, <laughs> didn't look that happy. So we are just heading up. We are going to put Hugo down because, dude, Goddamn heavy, bro. And of course, you got the whole mental scarring thing going on, and I, I don't want to catch the ick. Even though you are my brother, of course. So, we're almost there now, so as we get up here, we're going to see little Pucus, L Lucas the Pucus. Uh, no offense if your name is Lucas, it's not a bad thing or anything, I'm just, uh, it's just, just a little, uh, just a little name. Especially if you do puke like Lukey. There he is on the right, so have a little look. It's a beautiful, it's, again, to be fair to the game, it's the scenery is absolutely stunning once again. Uh, Asobo really have hit it out of the park with this one. Yes, home. I haven't said that word in a while. I'm glad we came. <sighs> and I think someone needs to take a nap. I'm not tired. <laughs> sure, let's go see inside. This is our door. So we are going inside now, and I am actually with Hugo Boss there. I am constantly knackered as well, but except you know, I haven't had to fight off a bunch of rats. I mean, there are a bunch of rats around um, <laughs> around the country I do live, but that's for a whole different story. Uh, you need to press the Y button here to go in. Sometimes it can be a bit, little bit finicky, uh, so that's all good. But that's it. Cutscene begins. We can now skip this cutscene and continue on. So basically, uh, well, I'm not going to spoil it for you. I won't spoil it, but basically, Hugo isn't well. He didn't have a very good night's sleep, as it turns out. So we're going to have to go and save him once again. Saving his kid's ass more time than a kid's ass needs saving. So for now, all we're doing then is just following little uh, Lukey the Pukey. Sorry, I will stop saying that after the next time. Why hasn't Vodan shown up already? I think he's just being discreet. The order works like this. Someone must know about him. Let's ask around. Mm -hmm. 
Here, a town guard. I'll ask him. Uh, hello? Excuse me. Would you know the whereabouts of Magister Vaudin? Uh, I've heard of a Sir Vaudin, not a Magister. Try the marketplace. There's a couple of florists there. I think they deal with him from time to time. Thank you. Good. That's a start. I should have known. So next up then, we're going to go ahead and speak to Lady Not Dimitrescu, who, as we go down here, we're going to turn to the right. And of course, she will be still by her flower stall, plotting Ethan's... plotting revenge on Ethan. Or maybe she's just nuts and it was all just a frag fragment of her imagination. He's one of your clients. He's my husband's client. He's the one who deals in medicinal herbs. Oh. But Morton should be right by the fountain. Just tell him I sent you. He's wearing a brown tunic. Brown tunic. So after LND stops talking, we're going to keep going sort of basically straight. Heading to the right here. And you're going to see a guy in brown scraping up some leaves. Past the horse and everything, and there he is, directly in front of us. Me, so, speak to <laughs> the guy who dresses like a literal turd, by the way. Um, I'm just going to do some uh, uh, Misia twerking, squatting, whatever you want to call it. Listen, my brother is very sick. We need him immediately. Oh, all right, all right. I don't know precisely where. But I think he lives close to the arena, down there. Don't tell him I sent you. Absolute head-banging queen as she was just there. So let's head down the steps now to the left. And keep going. Now this is where it's going to start getting a bit, little bit more stealthy and a little a bit more um, ratty. A little more plague taily. It's a slum. The order's not poor, so what would a magister be doing here? Probably hiding. Probably. Amicia, that symbol on the wall. The order? Yes, he's in here. No one gets in. The arena is off limits. Why is that? Because the Count of Provence said so. Get going, please. Listen, I really need to pass. It's all right. Come. We'll go around the arena. <sighs> Now's not the time to argue with soldiers. Let's look around. Yeah, mate, you've only just moved in. No time to argue with soldiers. So head up to the right, up the steps here. Again, we are pretty much just following Lucas for a second. We need to press the Y button. Ready to break the law? I'm, I'm always ready. I was born ready. Maybe she was born with it. Maybe it's Maybelline. Maybe. maybe. I believe they left them to rot here. These people look poor. They must be from the slum outside. How come nobody noticed their disappearance? Maybe nobody cares. Maybe. Here. So we're going to have to do a little bit of puzzle solving here. So what we're going to do is um, go through the door. It's the, the start of some slight puzzles. So what we need to do, head into the right room here, grab this box, now, the way to um, angle it, I thought you were supposed to angle it with the left stick, but you're supposed to move the camera with the right stick and just press up or down on the left stick. And that is how you move it from sort of left to right, rather than pushing it left and pushing it right. You have to move the camera around with the right stick. So just in case you were wondering what's going on, that is how you do it. And it can get confusing sometimes, as you will see a little bit later on. So, pushing it up against here, we can now climb up. And keep heading down. No enemies just yet, but we are starting to... We are going to get close to them. Oh, in fact, here we go. <laughs> we were very close, as it turns out. I don't know him! I swear! You piece of... Not good. He has a helmet. I can't do anything. What do we do? So, this time then, um, any one you see with a helmet, the slingshot does not work. So, keep that one in mind. The sling does not work against enemies' helmets. So, we're going to crouch here to the left. We are going to drop down into El Bushos. And just keep going straight, and you're going to see, like, this little um, wooden bit. So, a little bit of an edit there, because I did mess up. Make sure to press the right bumper and put it over to the 
Not the pot, you can't reach it with the pot. <laughs> so press the right bumper to go into your sort of inventory and make sure to choose the hand option. Then of course the left trigger and right trigger to shoot. Wait until the guard here goes over to the left. And that's our cue to exit, baby. And there we go. Like I said, if you're playing on invincible mode, you can pretty much just kill everyone and keep going to the exit. Uh, but I'm not going to show you that. I'm going to be good. I'm going to be a good guide maker today. Heading to the left. Head to the left again to find a pot. Of course, materials and things, if you need it, there is a pot there. Materials and things won't be available for a few chapters yet. Um, so you can um, sort of mash. You can sprint if you want. But remember, there are guards in the room to the right who are now actually interested in me because they've heard me sprinting which is very silly so he's going to come through the door here otherwise the guards would be just going to the left so what you need to do is distract them right there like that one so i almost messed that one up there but you need to just distract them by throwing the rock there at the set of pots head straight up the stairs and straight through the door <sighs> Oh, it stinks. Who wants to take a guess what the smell is? I know, it's not my own butt. Trust me, I do shower every uh, once every couple of weeks or so. It's a bunch of dead bodies and pigs. No, I do shower often, more often than not. Ah, oh, look at those. Those guys are cute. Having a little oh, having a little kiss and a cuddle before they um, got slaughtered. Um, yeah, that's right. So, make sure to get your slingshot out here. Smash the cart down from the top right in front of us. Now, you're going to need to go to the other side and push it rather than pull it. It just makes life a whole lot easier. But yes, so you're one happy home. I don't know what the hell I was doing here. So I decided to turn it basically on its side and then go the other side where I have to do the same amount of work anyway. So good going me, good job. What you're supposed to do is just get it from the other side and push it straight. Go to the left and then straight. That's it. Um, old pig bag right there is having a hell of a feast. He'll probably be dead soon, but judging by the amount of flies and stuff. But look, everyone's in nice sleepy positions. Very dead sleepy position. Oh, that guy's got brown on his pants. Probably crapped his pants when he died. Now, that's what happens, right? That's not me making a joke. That's what happens when people die. Don't the, the bowels release? I learned that off South Park. Because <laughs> that's where I get all my facts and findings from. Cartoons. So as we climb up anyway, we're just going to be heading up the steps, of course. More enemies will appear. Now, we are going to grab this knife. Make sure, highly important, basically there's going to be secret chest collectibles you can only open with knives. And for now, we can only carry one knife on us. You can use knives on enemies as well, but I highly advise to not do that. Uh, we won't get a secret chest for a while. But it's always worth just keeping at least one knife on you anyway, just in case. So do not use any knives on enemies. I will, I do make that mistake in just a bit. Uh, so as we head up here to the left, we can go straight through to the door. And we are back on the outside. So obviously our main objective is trying to get to a tower where the, uh, the mage guy or manji guy, whatever the hell he's called. So we need to crouch. There are a bunch of enemies that are going to be appearing here. But we can jump straight down. So nay, buddy, nay, worries about that. Just go to the left and ignore everyone for now. Just don't worry about going to the right or anything. We're just going to keep going up. Keep going straight and up. There we go. And then, of course, hiding up the stairs. Again, they may... Um, it, it does take, especially if you're on the easiest difficulty, it does take a while for them to realize, even though they've just spotted you going, you know, up and down and all around and everything. Right, stand here. Do not drop down just yet. It depends how quick you are. As you can see, the guard comes around the corner. If you're fast enough, you can jump down and hide under the table and wait until he comes, starts walking towards or sort of past you under the table and then move on up the stairs straight in front of us. If not, and you are here, that's fine. What you can do is just wait until he starts walking away. Drop down. And I was going to hide under the table, but I thought I'd uh, risk it anyway. But apparently... If you're on the easiest difficulty, as soon as he gets to the table, you can actually just walk straight past, even though he can probably literally see you climbing up. That's fine, just fine. Grab the pot there if you need one. If you don't, then life's all good. Right, so keep heading up. Um, we are going to put the pot open. Pot belly, pig belly. 
Uh, not, don't head to the right for the time being. We're just going to keep going straight and just go through this wooden archway of Dornus. Now, what you can do is... Actually, I tried throwing a pot outside to distract them, but I couldn't reach. So what you can do is actually just press the A button here to jump straight out. They, apparently, the guards will not see you. And then just throw a pot right directly behind the guard here. As soon as he turns around, turn your camera directly to the left. And you can see another door that we are going to head through. So, lots of going on. Uh, lots of bob the boobies, eh? Yes. Together we made it. With the backs up against the wall. But of course, we are not out of the woods. That is what the whole game is about. But we, he does start talking to us then about uh, Amicia's skills. So if you press the select button, which is the left button, the, the two windows, whatever the hell you want to call it. Uh, these are your skills and this is where you will see your skill upgrades and your weapon upgrades and everything else that we need a little bit later on. Um, so again, don't worry about this for now. We will play more around with the skill upgrades and everything a little bit later. They used to live here. No wonder they all fell ill. <sighs> I can't get used to it. So when little Lukey starts to pukey, what you're going to do, head of the steps, and then we're going to head to the right. So make sure to head to the right. I accidentally start going to the left, but it was the right that we need to go to. Excuse me. And this is for souvenir 2 out of 21. So when we head up to the right, there we go. What you're going to see then is a whole bunch of dead stuffs, a bunch of dead bodies being ratted up. There is one more alive person here, so press the Y button here. She thinks you're Alice. Uh, bro, you could have taken a quick bath before you died, you know, at least be less smelly. <laughs> Sorry, you'd probably be eaten by rats, haven't you? That's, that's, that's not dirt, that's blood. Nice. I will be at peace. You did well. I did nothing. Let's go. But that is souvenir 2 out of 21. Be at peace. Can we stop it, Lucas? Because I wonder if death is actually better than just running away from rats all day every day. It's, man, that crap's going to be exhausting. And I am... <laughs> I'm an unfit man. I can lift weights, but I am a very unfit man. So this will just knacker the crap out of me, to be honest. Right, so now we can head to the place that we were originally going to go. So keep going up the steps. And we are coming into this sort of library-looking area. Well, it, it kind of reminds me of a library. Heading out the door. And keep going straight. We are now going to be underground. This is where Ratmuses McDormus is. That's a Latin phrase I just made up. We will begin. Live in a high tower, no? Let's just get there. Right, so after this cutscene then, what you need to do is get ready to run towards the screen. So, for now, I would put your right trigger and your left stick down immediately. Because we're going to start running right now. So just keep going. Uh, it's, it's not too bad. You're pretty much going in a straight path. A little bit of right, a little bit of left here. Um, but we are basically just running straight. If you take too long to start running, the rats will catch you and eat you. So, invincible mode, by the way, I forgot to mention earlier. You don't get harmed by enemies. Uh, human enemies, but you can still die from rats and fire, etc, etc. So all environmental stuff can still kill you. It's just the human enemies that can't. So pick up the torch here from the right. Again, remember that rats cannot get to you in the light. So just keep going straight. Of course, we are crapping our little panty holes right now. Because the guys over... Uh, the devs basically said there's going to be a lot more rats this time around. Around 300,000 rats we're expecting. So... And that, that's a lot of rats with their own rats out right there. Uh, as we get to this torch, turn to the left and we can light this boy up. And then we can lighten up this uh, brazier. This brazier. Oh, bra. Oh, yeah. Uh, just keep going straight. Remember, no rat can hurt you. So if you know any human rats in real life, just shine a torch in the face and eventually they'll sort of scurry away. Oh, that, that, that's... Life advice there from the Welsh Hunter. Again, unbelievable, huh? So here on the wall directly in front of us, we can put the torch down and then climb up there with the A button. Of course, you're probably well aware of that by now, since it tells you on screen. 
So, El Rato's are still about. We need to grab a stick, press the Y button to burn it. Remember, sticks only burn for a short time, as it literally just said on the screen right there. So you need to be as quick as you can. Keep going straight. No need to take... No time to take a detour, even. And then press the Y button here to lighten up this bit. Grab another stick from behind you, and then light it up again. Light this up. Oh, look. It's everybody's ex, because, you know, for some reason, even though you were well attracted to your ex-partner, anytime you split up, they're immediately a rat, which I don't believe, but still. If that's the case, just, again, shine something shiny in their face, they'll go away. Straight in front of us, job done. Stick automatically goes away. Grab another stick here from the right, light it up again, and then this time what you're going to do is head to the right and throw it. So, le again, left trigger, right trigger to aim. And then make sure to get your sling out. You're going to need your sling this time. Sling it, girl. Sling it, girl. Bam. That's going to light that down and help us get to El Ladero. Because, of course, if you try going through the rats, they are going to eat your rat's ass like a rat's ass. Daddy. Right. Game save here. So that's all good. Pretty fast. Okay. <laughs> no, I sound like a bit of a douchebag there. So I'll just breathe slower. Thank you. <laughs> right, so there is going to be a beam, and you know exactly what's going to happen here. Because two people can never go across one weak beam. Never happens in games. All right, just don't rush. Ah! Lucas! I knew it. Are you all right? No. <laughs> Who's a silly sausage? Lucas is. He's a silly sausage. Right. Grab a stick from the wall here. Put it against the flame, of course, again with the Y button. And, obviously, we're just going to be walking straight. Stay calm. Stay calm. <laughs> Do not crappy pants. Rats like crappy pants. A apparently, according to science somewhere. Put it on the brazier here in front of us. Or the bowl or whatever you want to call it. Grab another stick. And, once again, what you need to do is light the stick on fire and then immediately throw it over to Lucas on the other side. So that is what we're going to do. So throw it... Oh, well, not quite Lucas the other side yet. Now we're going to be doing that. Grab a stick, and then you're just going to throw this one to Lucas. Of course, if <laughs> you're not going to throw a fire stick to Lucas, are you? Because that would probably mean Bernie death, death, unlucky times for Lucas. Let's not do that. So Lucas is all good. Now we can just climb up the ladder. The cold sweat. I'd rather the meat sweat. I'd rather the rat sweats, to be honest, when they're all dead. But 300,000 of them... Don't take a while. Straight through into the door we go. I can't wait to hear Dan's plan about this. It better be a damn good plan. It will be. Oh no. We're going down again? We are. It's a joke. Going downstairs. It's a yoke. It's a yoke, man. Oh, but now we are actually going to be coming up to a pretty. The first sort of decently big puzzle that we've got to do of the game. Um, we've had little sort of introductions of pulling cards and stuff, but for now, we're going to be doing quite a bit more. So, again, try to ignore the smellingness and the dead bodiness of disgusting, smelly... You know, it's a dead body, bro. It's, <laughs> they stink. Um, <laughs> what is that? Oh, it looks like a vending machine. The goddamn elephant, bruh. From Africa, Romans used them during circus games. It's enormous. Look at its teeth. This is surreal. Yes. There's enough bones around. Let's get out of here. Right, so heading up now to the right. Obviously, we're going to be going up the obvious set of stairs right here. So uh, keep it nipping through. And this is where the first puzzle begins. So what we are going to need to do here is we need Lucas on the other side as well. So you can just press the Y button there. Lucas will automatically do it. You'll have to go backwards and rotate the left stick around, going counterclockwise, I believe. And if I'm wrong, then may God strike me down. <gasps> oh, thank God for that. Right, I'm still going. So, a bunch of rats are coming, but it has opened up a new set of doors for us to examine and have a little look in. So we need to be getting some Alchemy Frawl. So head to the left first. We need some booze. If we're going to die, we might as well get drunk while doing it. 
Uh, head to the right, you're obviously going to be crossing the beam as soon as we get our sling out and get rid of old pig bags right here. Again, that is the same mechanic from the first game as well. Rats like meat. Well, luckily there's a couple of hanging, <laughs> hanging, disgusting, dirty pigs right there for the rats to chow down on. Lovely. It's going to be another one here on the left as well. So, kablamo Marge. Smash that down. Rats will automatically climb the wall somehow. That's good enough for us to climb down and then climb up the ladder straight away. So you should be good. There's no time limit or anything on this. Uh, grab, go straight in front of us here. Open up the chest with the wide button and grab every bit of booze that you can. One for you. One for me. One for you. One for me. That's how it normally works, right? So head down the ladder then. We've got the alcohol for the first bit. Head up the ladder to the right. And that is the first bit done. So now we need to head from here, go to the left, go straight past the old cranky dank, and head into the room once again here on our left. So uh, there's sulfur in this room is what we need. So we need to climb the ladder here. Now, apparently Amicia, even though she's strong as hell, she's apparently not strong enough to move this crank on her own. So as you'll be able to see, uh, yeah, my arms are too weak apparently. Even though she's probably stronger than me. She's not that hard in all fairness. So again, hold the left bumper and press the white bumper there to get Lukey on that one. Elevator's going to come up. And then we can just go across. So again, what we need to do then, you just need to pull or push the cart on to the, um, onto the little elevator or the lift or whatever you want to call it. Probably just the lift, that'll do. And this is what I mean, for some reason, pushing carts like this has just confused the crap out of me for some reason. Going right and left with the right stick is, uh, it's confusing to me. Anyway, what you do is press the left bumper and then press the Y button again there in order to get Lucas to stop. That'll put us back down. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then what you just need to do then is push your cart pretty much straight forward. Once you get off the lift here, um, where Lucas is standing, straight in front of us. We can push it there and climb up. And then when we do, have a look at the chest here on our left, and we're going to find sulfur. I'm just getting my slip knot on right there. So we've got some sulfur. We can now jump down as soon as Lukey stops talking. Right, and now this is where we can start crafting the Ignifer, uh, which is basically just fire. So, fire sling, but basically, as soon as you go over to the Ignifer, everything else becomes Ignifer, as in pots, uh, stones, and slingshots. So, scroll over, press the right bumper, right on the D-pad, and then press the A button as many times as you can. Obviously, we'll be, choosing, we'll be grabbing a lot of alcohol and sulfur on the way, so you might as well just keep this topped up as you can, and collect everything that you can, keep it all topped up. Make sure you've uh, chosen the sling option, as long as it's on the Ignifer one. That will get us, uh, that will get that bit going. And then we can start heading to the, to, sort of to the left there where the room with the alcohol was in. So, climb down the ladder. Now remember, if it's on Ignifer, if you need to swap and you want something else, remember to change it back to the rocks and to the Ignifer whenever you need it. So, through this room, Interact with this first brazier and then grab the uh, pot or the yeah the pot from the left and then on the right there's going to be another little chest for us to grab. That's going to have a few alcohols in it and a pot as well and another sulfur as well. On the top right hand corner there, smash it open, boom. And there is still a little bit left. Now what we can do, um, like I said, as long as you're on the ignifer option in your inventory, you can then use it with the pot. So you don't have to do anything a, a different with it. So chuck it in the middle of there. That'll throw it. And then you can just run straight past. Couple of rats still there. So I wouldn't, I highly advise not running into them. Uh, what you can do is um, go over to your rock. So go to your normal sling, throw the pigs down in front of you. And that will get rid of the last remaining bit of ratmuses. So head to the right. And you're going to see a little shiny chest there. And again, that's going to have a few bits of alcohol and sulfur in it. I won't uh, keep seeing that every time we pick up sulfur, by the way. So head up, uh, head up to the stairs now. 
and you think we're done, but we're not quite done yet. So you can have a look on the left here if you need a pot. There is another pot to the left. That's pretty much, there is another pot to the right as well if you need it. So we're going to press the Y button here to interact with it. Natural. Lucas uh, is too weak, bruh. The steroid's not working today for some reason. Right. Don't know what that could be about. But we have to go ahead and find another one. So that's nice. So we need to ignifer it up again. Again, we should have enough alcohol and everything. So make sure to upgrade it to six or so that you've got six, or crafting, sorry, that's what I'm trying to say, crafting until you've got six. Jump down, keep going straight past the old elephant bonuses. <laughs> Bonerific. <clears throat> and then what we're doing is, again, make sure that it is on Ignifer, and straight in front of us there, using your sling, light up the way. Light up the way, light up the way. To the left is going to be another chest with some more Alchemathrol bits and some Sulfurian bits. Now she blows. And there's one on the right as well. So literally every chest that we see, we are just going to grab absolutely everything. Have a look at the top and we can light that up. Then we're going to need to put it over to our normal sling. So again, left on the D-pad when you're in your inventory. Slam that down and the rat simply disappear. Oh, super easy. Right, now we're going to go back onto our Ignifer. Again, keep upgrading it if you want. It's always worth just trying to keep everything topped up and upgraded because we, we end up uh, finding a lot of alcohol and a lot, a lot of sulfur. Use the pot to light up the way with Ignifer, of course, and then climb up the ladder. Very easy. I don't know why you miss just crapping her panties for. It's easy stuff. But we have made it. There is a chest, another chest on the left, which, again, highly advise just having a little look in. Why, why, why? And now you can just put it simply, well, there is something here on the right as well. Uh, another pot, always worth doing. And now just press and hold the Y button. And it's going to be, it's going to be timed, but it's very, very easy. It's not too bad. So just keep hold of the Y button. And then eventually the, as you can see straight in front of us there, the big litter brazier will be straight down. Then as soon as you press the B button to stop, make a break for it and go straight until you are onto the lift. Go, go, go! A button! Run, run, run as fast as you can! You can't catch me! I'm the Hugo Boss man who keeps being ill and all fudged up and stuff. How did we do this? With exceptional skills and resilience. <laughs> it's starting again. Do you realize what that means? I do. But we've been through this before. You saw how they charged us? The way they move? They're faster, more agile, more intelligent. But we made it. Barely. Let's find Magister Verdun. With the Order by our side, we won't have to face this alone anymore. I really hope that you're right. Please tell me we didn't stray from it. <laughs> yes, the tower! Swept the stairs and far away, Teletubbies ain't coming to play. They've been eaten by rats, I'm afraid. Right, so we are going to be coming up to a few more enemies uh, in the not-too-distant future. In fact, very close, pretty much just around the corner. Not this corner, though. In a few corners' time, as it were. So for now, just keep heading straight. There is a way that we will be able to go to the right now. So head to the right, and this is actually where we're going to be getting our first flower. So right by this sort of bucket and everything, right just to the right of where the stairs are going to the left, is going to be our first out of five collectible flowers. So make sure to be grabbing this. Again, you can, st if you do miss anything, you, we, you you can do chapter select, start new game plus and that anyway. Uh, as we head down the stairs anyway, turn directly back on yourself to find another chest. So yeah, like I said, there's a new game plus, which we will probably have to start anyway. Um, because of the, we won't be able to probably get all skills and upgrades in this um, first playthrough, and there is chapter select as well. So head to the left, going up rather than down, and then again turn yourself back around, start heading up the ladder. Which doesn't prevent those mercenaries from wandering around. And we thought the place was safe. Now we're going to head left over the bridge, and we find another chest. Like I said, we are going to see a lot of alcohol and a lot of sulfur. So, you might, again, you might as well keep your regular for totally upgraded and keep your alcohol and sulfur levels tapped up, topped up. Knife. There is a knife there. 
that'll come in handy if you accidentally have used your knife on an enemy. But like I said, try not to use any knives on any enemies. They are specifically for secret chests. So as we head down, now we can start heading down. So basically the, the way we came, we're going to head through a little gap. Tell you what, lucky we haven't uh, eaten too many rat sandwiches. <laughs> Otherwise, it would be a little bit trickier to get through these gaps. Rat out. Get your rat out for the sandwich boys. Thanks, Lucas. You big butt. You big legend. Right, so what we can do, head down the stairs here to the right. And then if we stay on the right, there's nothing of interest to the, to the left. We are going to start crouching in the grass. Now, this is where I accidentally use one of my knives which is a bit of a pain in the butt to be honest but again don't worry if you accidentally do we will come across more before we get the secret chest and leave this bloody place we wait for arno it's an order all right you're cool he really is in the tower after i'll stop it. so when they stop talking then go into your inventory we're gonna get our slingshot out now because we are going to actually kill we're gonna we're gonna go on a killing rampage and directly in front of us will be an, uh, a bow and arrow enemy, an archer enemy. There he is. So get out, slap him square in the nugget head. Oh, -ho, that looked like it hurt, man. Now there are a couple of enemies again, so we're gonna kill this guy as well. Should be sort of directly in front of us. And this is where I kind of messed it up. Um, again, this is a, an enemy with a helmet, by the way. So you can't sling him to death, which is why I end up panicking. And I ended up using my knife, <laughs> annoyingly. So straight in front of us anyway, in the hut, is another pot if you need it. Um, what I was trying to do was hide, but I ended up messing up because... Now, you will obviously be able to fight. You'll obviously, obviously be able to see if your sling doesn't automatically lock on. That means that he cannot be hurt by a sling. So this is where I messed up again. I counted him, and that was all good. And then for some reason, I decided to use my knife. I just, yeah. Didn't need to do that, did we? So again, try to do a lot better than I did there. You can sneak around him, and you can hurt him without actually uh, stabbing him and losing your knife. So just be careful with that one there. Um, so if we head sort of to the right into this little uh, alleyway, basic, I do get a little bit confused here, sorry about that. Um, but behind us is a bunch of stairs that we can fly up. And the only reason we're going up these stairs again is for a few more items and things. So we head to the um, right into this little house. That is exactly where we're trying to go. So there it is. So into the house, there is the little treasure chest. So again, apologies about the little, sort of little act of confusion right there. Um... To be honest, I'm still, I'm still annoyed that um, my knife disappeared. So if you can't grab any alcohol, make sure that your ignifer is all topped up with six for now. And then uh, grab what you can, make sure everything again is all topped up and we're all ready to go. Fully topped up, top, 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 tip, top. Because for some reason I kept saying topped up. So into the next house then. Uh, nothing of note there. I think there was a pot. No, it was just the guy's helmet. Never mind. Now we'll head to the right. There are a bunch of rats that are going to appear, and they're going to appear basically in front of us as well. So you should be able to sneak past here on the left, just up the stairs. So there was no need to look at the guards like I just did. Um, now into the house. Don't start running around just yet. There is an enemy up here. And where he's going to be, he's going to appear in front of us, just over the sort of banister right here. So there he is. So make sure that you've got your sling ready. Make sure it's the normal rock one. Get up and slap him square in the nugget hard. Head, not hard. Not the hard nugget, but the hard head. So that's broski done. Now, again, this is where humans and rats really, you know, really get annoyed with each other. Straight in front of us here, there is going to be um, another enemy with a whole bunch of rats. But he is going to have a torch, but we can kill him. So... Again, I tried the stealthy approach, and the stealthy approach, as it turns out, didn't end up working. <laughs> because again, depending on how quick or slow that you were, he may be just going over to this brazier here that we just threw over. I threw a bit of ignifer over. Head to the right, and there's going to be a little pot. Another pot that we can throw a ignifer pot into. Kind of can be hard to see, but the yellow should uh, make it appear, and there we go. 
Now, again, depending on... I think it could be random. He could walk the way he's going now towards the right, or he could walk straight in front of us. If he goes straight to the brazier, basically straight in front of us, we can drop down, head to the right, and go through the door and end it. Um, or use a pot and then end it. But again, like I said, he went through the right, and he is going to see me right about now. And there's nothing we can do about it because there's no hiding places. So, buddy, I think it's time to take a little death. Aha, uh -huh, you missed. You stink, loser! Right, so you'd think that I would have just messed that up because there's no torture around now. But nah, it is fine. So what we're going to do then, we are going to get the Ignifer. And we are going to throw... Uh, a, a, somehow we've got a flaming rock in our hand. Throw that over. And then what we're going to do is, uh, again, chuck up some more Ignifers if you need it. Uh, keep the keep it all upgraded. And then we're going to throw a pot directly in the middle and then go straight through the door. Job, tidy man. We're here. I think we're safe now. You did... Right then, so after the whole dialogue option ends, we've got a little bit of a puzzle to do. Um, it, Lucas basically tells us the answers anyway, so what you need to do... You can see just probably on the left-hand side, they look like they look like bells or something. Or whatever, these sort of um, things with patterns on them. Lucas is basically going to say, so what we need to do is get our normal slingshot out, and Lucas is eventually going to say... Um, from left to right, you need this particular symbol. One looks like a snake head, one looks like a circle with an arrow going down. So it is very easy. You can't really get it wrong. Because when you get the correct one, Lucas will say, Oh, that's the one. Ah, oh, yippee, it's -a me, Chris Pratt as a Mario. No, I meant Chris Pratt as Mario. So what we're going to do then for the first one, we're going to hit it once, twice, Three times a lady. So it looks like a number three. So for the next one, doesn't matter uh, which order you do it in. You can hit it right or left. Really doesn't matter. But this is what he is. He explains what it looks like to you. So hit it twice, three times again. And there we go. That's like an O with a line through it. So go over to the right. Shaped like a necklace. Not a pearl necklace. I know what some of you are like. You disgust me. <laughs> That's my fault. So hit it once, twice, there we go. And then for the last one then, it cut, he says it kind of looks like two snakes intertwined. So hit it once, twice, there it is, bro. Kind of looks like a doctor stethoscope, to be honest. Right, the wall opens up. Jobs are good, then. Find the Magister. Magister Vodar, I'm Amicia de Rune. The daughter. That explains why those brutes downstairs are so quiet. And that be the end of chapter two. So, chapter three, uh, chapter two is down. We're on to chapter three now, A Burden of Blood. That will get us the newcomer's achievement as well. And, well, we go again. Right after Hugo gets a sort of exorcism, and you know, his head starts turning. Like in the film The Exorcist. He's having a seizure. What? Mother! You must stop this! We don't know this man! Amicia, this sort of thing was always likely. Okay, since it's Halloween, I am able to say this chapter in such a Halloween-y vibe. A burden of blood. You know, like the guy from the cinema who's very dramatic in every scene for every trailer? A burden of blood. But, uh, yes, this is a burden of blood. And for now, we are just going to follow little Pucahontas. Conducting tests. But he knows what he's doing. He's the most competent in this domain. Oh, enough of that. He's been treating my brother like an animal. No. We need another solution. Like this island Hugo dreams of. 
A dream. What can we do with a dream, Amicia? Just keep caring about him, please. I care. But it's not enough anymore. Everybody's gone. I think it's through here. I, can, I can't believe they blocked the way to the arena. What's happened down All right. there? Alright. Our gate should be over there. There's that smell. Oh, that stinks. Well, that means we're on the right path. There it is. All right. You ready? Yes. Let's go. Now, this, the next scene is basically going to be just a big argument about meat eaters versus vegans, i.e. vegans will go... See, this is absolutely disgusting, that's why you're not supposed to eat meat, and then meat eaters will go, Oh, but let me get this burger and eat in front of you, and the vegans will be like, Stop eating meat! You're a murderer! And, well, we all know how the arguments go online. Because it's not a day without a good argument online with a random stranger, huh? But this is the Butcher's District. Um, very disgusting. <laughs> Smells very funny, but the meat looks, I mean, the meat looks off, doesn't it? The meat looks like it would give you some incredible rat poison diarrhea for a few days. From here, what we're going to do, we're going to head to the left before we head to the right. There is a little item that we can pick up, uh, a couple of pieces. So just head to the left, there you go, into the back corner here, and just grab five pieces. Of course, like I said, they'll come in mega handy for the uh, slight cheese method of the upgrading of all the weapons later on. So for now, we're just heading down. Again, we're still in the district, so nice and slow, taking your time. Oh, there's a live fresh chicken there. Now that you can eat. N not live, that's a bit inhumane, you know. Give it a give it a decent burial in a good frying pan first. Not frying pan, you know what I mean. Whatever you cook chickens in and stuff. The, the chicken mabobber. No, Hugo can't wait. There might be another way in. Tell us what's happening! My children are in there! Wait, no! But there is no way for us through this time, so head slightly back, and we're going to have a look down this alleyway right here. You see the, um, the, the three hanging pigs right here, and the ones, uh, ribs, uh, well, the ones bones are just flying at us. That, <laughs> well, if that's not enough to not make vegans go back to meat, I don't know what will. Uh, right, so, going towards this cart then, mmm, delicious entrails as well, lovely bit of protein for us there. Luke is going to get that out of the way, and we can snip on through. Uh, we're going to go to the right, of course, because there's no other way to go at the minute. <laughs> so past all the delicious smelling pigs. Unfortunately, this is yet another sickening part. Hilarious, because I'm not actually in it, uh, but it is quite sickening. You've got to go through all the blood, guts, and the butcher's disgustingness. Go on, gal, get in there. Mmm... Good for your skin, what you're talking about. It's like mud. Ish. Don't tell me. Yes. I got something in my mouth. I said hold your breath. I panicked. Oh, Lucas. All the living things that must be born from this. Why in the world would you think about that? It stops me from losing my mind. But it takes me closer to losing mine. Just think of it as matter being transformed oh lord did you have a good little look around as well yes that was delicious wasn't it uh grab the pot right in front of you now i must say if you are playing on a normal mode as we skip through here if you're playing on normal rather than easy those pots that will actually turn into one pieces just in case you haven't noticed by now um but playing on easy difficulty i think there are more knives than there would be on normal difficulty i believe anyway could be wrong but i think that is the point so I think you get more pieces on normal difficulty and more knives on easy difficulty, I do believe. Anyway, after this, well, it's time to get your rat out once again. Not in a good way because a bunch of them, look at that, that is actually, uh, <laughs> that's actually fantastic, fantastically scary. So get out your ignifer, hand throwing or sling shooting, it doesn't matter, you're going to have to use three of these anyway to light the bra. You like the broski up, the brazier, and there we go. Right, so from here we are going to head to the left. Oof, look at that thing on the floor. That's looking disgusting. 
Uh, light up the way over to the left here as well. Next to L Piggies. And now what we are going to have to use as well. We're going to craft a couple more. Hopefully you should have way more than enough of your inventory. Light up a pot. Slam it out the way. Move on through. Again, somehow you don't burn yourself when you walk straight through fire. But there we go. Right. That's, um... Hmm. Smells a bit off. But you know what? I've eaten worse. Um... <laughs> For those people that uh, lick genitalia and then don't like a bit bad of meat, you um, <laughs> you need a word with yourself. Right, what we're going to do then is get your normal slung out, get this <laughs> get this pig down. Sorry, I've I seen that in a meme once, very funny. Whap out this bag here and the rats are now going to be loving it. Um, salt Peter. Go around and there is another cart. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I was trying to do my best Lois Griffin impression there. Right, go around, bring the cart, don't worry about the rats, they are golden as nuggety balls for now. And they won't, there is a pot slash one piece to the right if you wanted that, no worries though, because there are literally plenty in the game. Uh, keep pushing this around here until we get sort of to the end, right next to the fire. There we go, so there's one. Head back slightly on yourself and you are going to see, directly in front of us, a pig to slap down, kablamo. So, sling it out. Sling it out, rat it out with your slinger out. Yeah, that can be interpreted as something. Get rid of the other one as well, down by the fire, and then hit the salt peter. And then the rats are gonna enjoy that one as well. That is a lot of rats. I hate rats, not a big fan. Climbing up the ladder, there was one in my bin once and it squeaked at me and I, I, I was a scared. So, <laughs> climbing up the ladder, head around, sort of back on yourself into the next area or next room to find this little chest of goodies. Again, make sure that your inventory and everything's always topped up. And then try and keep uh, your inventory stock levels topped up as well. So into this blood room as well. To the right hand side, there are there is one knife. This is the first knife of the level. Uh, so make sure to grab that sticking out of the pig's head then before we go. Because of course we're going to need knives for secret chests. And of course, remember not to stick knives in enemies. Right, we are going to have to kill the town's soldiers now. So as soon as he starts attacking... Uh, you should have your slingshot ready. Just whap him square in the nugget. Oh, Lord. That was so close. You just killed the soldier of the army of Provence. I know. Why did he attack us? Look. They're killing townsfolk. They're, they're purging the districts now. Hey! Come back here, you bastard! Be careful. No! Oh. You won't go farther. Goddamn fighters kill faster than us. He'll execute us on sight. It's us or them now. Hugo, go on. Wait. We need that nightshade boss. I guess you're right. Listen. You can use that salt Peter against them. Take this to craft some extinguish. It should be enough to put out that. So, now we can craft some extinguish. So, basically, extinguish. Just without the age, of course. So... Again, obviously, right bumper, make sure you should have uh, enough uh, in your inventory there to build a couple. So, obviously, what you're going to do is just make sure it's on extinguish, and then press the left trigger, and then throw it into the fire. That will, of course, extinguish the fire. That makes obvious sense, especially since uh, little Luca Hontas, Lucas Hontas there, just explained it to us as well. So, that is going to come in handy for later on. Grab this chest here before we move on for a couple more items. Bit of booze, because this is a stressful time. You need to get as pissed as he can really go through all the rats and of course there is going to be another enemy here so make sure you got your extinguish out and then now i was trying to actually aim it at the torch but you can hit it straight at the enemy and that is going to slap him down and get eaten alive oh i tell you what that actually that makes me nuts go funny actually Ooh, imagine being eaten alive by a rat right so from here what there's obviously no way through at the minute so we're going to turn directly to our left uh, don't worry about um, Broski on the right, he won't even see you. Grab a stick from the left, a couple of items we're going to grab as well. Head through the open door. Straight in front of us is a chest with some delicious looking items. More booze. Again, if you want that whiskey, gin, whatever it is you drink, there's plenty about. More alcohol there on the chair. Now, grab this stick with fire on it, or put fire on the stick. Immediately go out and then we're going to immediately turn to the right. And the reason that we're doing that is for a couple more pieces. And it's, for some reason, the rats are hoarding that, like a big hoard bag in a bunch of hoard bags. 
And there we go, that bit's all done. So we'll just go back inside now. Uh, what we're going to do is get our normal sling out now. Again, try and get like, uh, you know, like I always say, try and keep your inventory topped up and full of stock. Hit this bag of salt peter. There we go, that's going to cause a little distraction. The enemy is going to start walking down the stairs, so what we can do is head back out. Back to the fireplace. He may see us. If that's the case, that's fine. We want him to come down. We need him to come down. Uh, because if he's too far away and not in the middle of the rats, yeah, then you're basically stuck. So he won't come any further. So as soon as he gets quite close to you, extinguish it. Again, with the sling or with your hand, that's fine. Dude's going to get eaten to death. And life will be one handy ma 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 Right. Uh, soldiers running away. Let's grab this chest here by the fireplace first. Again, for some more sulfur and some peter. Uh, again, obviously, top it all up. You should be all good. And then what we're going to do then from here, we're just going to explode the brazier. Well, not explode it, but we're going to light a fire in it. That lights the way slightly for us. And then if we keep going straight ahead up the steps, you can see the obvious looking chest straight in front of us. Let's see what's inside. Oh, it's delicious. It's no money because everyone's dead, so you don't need money. But there's tools, another tool, some more pieces, etc., etc. So you should be good there. So now what we're going to do is wait for two enemies to come out. And now we can actually use a pot with the extinguish to uh, get rid of the two um, bits of flammable flam bags. So make sure that you've chosen the pot option, throw it in the middle, and that is, uh, well, that's another eerie way to go. Uh, so on the same level here, you can find another couple of pots. Again, remember, if you're playing on normal difficulty, they will turn into pieces, which, of course, will come in handy. But we're doing the cheese method anyway. Hopefully, they don't patch that. Uh, head to the right anyway. There's no way through at the minute. We're just going to go up some steps. Oh, I'm already knackered watching Amicia go up the steps, by the way. Jesus Christ. Right, we are going to need a little Lukia Hontas. So get to the other side, pal. Use their muscly beef bag arms. Hold on to the Y button, uh, but we are going to have to run down because, of course, these little things are on a timer. And this door is no exception. So as soon as it gets to the very top, when you're ready, press the B button to release the crank. Immediately run down the stairs. Go, go, Power Rangers! Whatever the theme tune was, I forgot. Immediately turn to the right. Immediately turn to the right again. And you should have plenty of time. And there we go. So they stopped at the city walls. <laughs> they don't care about walls. They care about food. I don't see any soldiers either. Hey. I've just remembered. In Bodan's laboratory, th there was a fresco with an island on it. I saw it, Lucas. What about that? Vodan must know about it. All right, all right. I'll try to ask. Thank you. Now, Mother said the herbalist lives at the edge of a forest. We should be close. It's so quiet. It feels off. There were people here not too long ago. No blood. So heading straight, we are going to go ahead and get our third souvenir right here. You're going to see a gate directly in front of us, which you can't get through. So what we're going to do, whip out your normal string. <laughs> your normal, uh, <laughs> not a G string, more like an F string. Uh, go, uh, head around and you can see the lock quite clearly on the gate. So again, Amicia, who, um, uh, we're going to open the gate anyway. We're going to nip through and then interact with the grave. So that'll be souvenir 3 out of 21. And I was going to say, Amicia in this game, she's gone from... Okay, I'll be home by 9 p.m. to bitch, I'm staying out all weekend. That 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 kind of she's uh, really um got a hell of a lot stronger in this game, and I am all up for that. Right from the gate, head to the right anyway. Uh, we are looking for the Herbie Herbie Herb's house, Mr. Herbivore's house. But in this little area, there is a little chest on the left that we can already see. I know what awaits us: rats, death. And apparently Amicia's on the, uh, she's on the booze all weekend. She is off it. So, um, obviously, again, personally, I'm not going to do anything. Now, um, what I'm going to say, though, for the third instrument, basically, if you upgrade all your instruments up to the third one, you don't actually have to have any tools. So the tool upgrade will be zero. 
So, um, which will come in handy uh, for later on. So if they end up um, no. patching, that's what I was looking for. If they end up patching the whole cheese method, just get, just uh, fully upgrade all the instruments and you don't have to bother looking for tools then. It would just be pieces that you need. So uh, just to let you know with that one. Um, and in terms of knives, by the way, as we just climbed down here, um, as for knives, there is always one knife, at least one knife, before we get to a secret chest. So if you're worrying about if you ain't going to be able to get any more knives, honestly, you will be absolutely fine. So don't panic. As long as you don't use your knives on any enemies, you'll be absolutely fine. There's always at least one or two, maybe even three, before we get to the next secret chest. So, outside, we are going to extinct... Uh, what's the opposite of extinguish? Uh, not incognito. We're going to light the way. <laughs> My words are jumbling up. We're going to climb up here. There is going to be an enemy. So immediately get out your rock string. Uh, your rock sling even. And slap him square between the eyes. Again, a very painful way to go. <laughs> Jesus. It's either rats or stones between the eyes. Um, now there's a pot there with some pieces as well. Again, if you're playing on normal difficulty. I won't keep saying normal difficulty. I'll just tell you. I'll just I'll keep going to these locations. Um, and obviously you know exactly why. So we just picked up some items off uh, Dead Broski right there. We're going to pick up a stick. We are going to light the way. Light my fire! And we're going to get the hell out of Dodge. Get away, get away. Try and eat my butt another day. Actually, no, don't do that. I wouldn't trust it. And here we go. So we're going to come up to a certain couple of enemies here. Now, obviously, playing Invincible mode, you could pretty much just run straight past them. But I'm doing it as if I'm not playing on Invincible mode, because I'm nice. But what we are going to do, we're going to extinguish all three of them so they all get eaten, just to make it a lot easier later on. So head through here. Sometimes he will be walking towards you. Sometimes he'll be walking away. Um, again, it's a bit random uh, what the enemy sort of patterns are. Depends whether you get there quick enough or slow enough. Um, we're just going to do the same here with the other two enemies. So as soon as they start walking towards you, extinguish them both so that they are as dead as rat deadness. They're onto us. <laughs> well done, Amicia. Well done, you guys. You're awesome. Right, head to the left enemy, past the, um, past the big protein meal of pig and blood and sweat and AIDS, probably. Uh, light up the way there, just next to the door, and that uh, enables that will enable us to sneak in and get ahead in. Right, there is a pot slash piece right on the table there if you want to grab that, but it's straight in front of us as well is another chest. So, again, make sure to grab all the items that you can. Upgrade, make sure everything's stocked up to the best that you can. Um, by the way, this this next little tiny bit is me getting confused. Um, because I thought there was just a bunch of pieces on the floor rather than it being the pot, if you know what I mean. Um, but what we do need to do, we just need to actually head out. Outside, get your extinguisher out. Get Make sure that it is a pot as well. Make sure that it's a pot of extinguishers. Smash those up, and death! Death! And, well, if you want, you can grab the pot anyway. <laughs> so it comes. It did come in handy later on as well. Right, we are going to obviously light up the way again, because we prefer not to die. I mean, it's up to you, but my preference is to not be eaten alive by stinking-ass rats. We are going to go to the right, though, and start heading downhill. Again, as you can see, just topping, topping up the tings. Even in the next couple of chapters, we are going to start getting a lot more uh, things to play with, which is awesome. Uh, we smash down the pig. That'll get rid of the rats. And we are going to head sort of to the left. So just the left of the rats. Another pot there if you need it, straight in front of us. And then what we're going to do is, when we're into this little area, make sure to get the sling out. With a ig Ignito, or Ignito, I can't even remember what it's bloody called now. Light up the way, the brazier, straight in front of us, and then we can start heading back. So head around the left here, past El Ratos, past the fire, grab a stick, and of course we're going to light that, light that bitch up. Light it! Fire! So, start heading through to the rats. 
keep going straight in front of us and you can see something that needs burning, the little uh, campfire song song. C-A-M-P-F-I-R-E-S-O-N-G song. Uh, light up the way and we're all good. Now we can actually head through into this little building right here. No enemies to worry about, so do not worry. There is another pot slash pieces right there, just next to the dead enemy. And then what we're going to do, head into the next area, head to the right, and you can see a chest. Now there's a little bit of a weird edit here, but basically what we're going to do from this chest, we're going to turn directly around and go out that way. So it's a bit of a weird edit because I start heading towards the soldier right here, but I was literally just by the soldier. So where we are, the chest is now directly behind us. So if you just turn directly around, you will see this little area with the rats and the post that we can put the ignite, Ignito on, or whatever the hell it's called. So apologies about that weird, crappy bit of editing there. <laughs> Sorry. So a couple more, couple more brosies are going to come down. Again, all you're going to do if we just sneak forward into the box, don't worry about the chests for now, we are just going to extinguish them when they get close enough. Look at them if it upsets you. This is not the rats doing. You did it. You killed them all. I want to see my wife. Uh, who's dead? Uh, you dead. Uh, who's dead? Uh, you dead. All right, I slinged them to death rather than potted, but still the result is the same. We are free to explore, but don't obviously wander off too much. Right, just behind you then is another chest of goodies to pick up. Couple of bits of sulfur and stuff. I don't know why they're whispering, by the way. Nobody's about. You can sing, you can scream, you can sing, shout. Ah. So we're going to go directly in front of us again. Just watch out for the rats. We are going to need to whip out another incognito. Ignite us, MIG fight us. And that just lights up the way for us here. Um, a bit of a silly sausage I was. So basically, straight in front of us there, you can see another chest, which is fine. This obviously, these these ones obviously will always contain a tool and a couple of pieces and stuff. So that again comes in mega handy. Um, we are going to pick up a stick. There's nothing else of note in this room, by the way. <laughs> Excuse me. So we are just going to pick up a stick. Now, what I did was, I mean, I wasn't so silly um, just in the fact that it took me about, you know, like... An extra 20 seconds when I pretty much didn't really need to. So if we just head to the right here. Again, stay in the light. The rats are not going to hurt you. Into the right. And then we're going to finally grab this chest. So grab everything that you can. Now, uh, for whatever reason, I decide to drop the stick. Um, see what needs to be crafted. And then try to pick it up again. But for some reason, my stick disappeared. Or you can't just pick it up again for whatever particular reason. So I grab the alcohol. But now I'm like... Eh, I need my glasses. I'm blind! Right, which is... So, yeah, so it's a bit annoying. So, so I do apologise. It's about 10 or 20 seconds out. So we just need to grab another stick from the left-hand side shack, building, whatever this is called. So just go ahead and grab that. And now we can finally finish this area. So, uh, yeah, let's just head. We're going to jump straight over the wall. And then what we're going to do, we're going to go past this... No, in fact, no, this is the fire that we are going to grab first. So grab this fire, which is directly on the sort of main looking path. Go straight in front of you. La la la. And there we go. Lovely stuff. Now we've got through to the other side. Very much like the rat on the road. The chicken on the road. Right, check it off. Grab another stick. Stick that square on the fire. Sadly, there is no marshmallows ever in this game, which is annoying. And then head for the exit slash entrance or something. It looks like an exit slash entrance is the big door. But we're not actually going that way either. So make sure to put the uh, torch in so that it's lighting up the way so we're not going to die. But we are actually going to jump over now this log and head through. So there's going to be a little gap for us to climb through as well. And as we do, we are actually now going to be coming up to the second out of five flowers as well. So not too bad, only five flowers to collect throughout the entire game. And the second one is on this level. So when we start here, then we're going to turn basically to the left now. 
I will do that eventually. So we go to the left, past this basket of green. Looks like one big broccoli case. And then if we have a look just up in the tree directly in front of us now, that is where the second or the fifth flower is going to be. But you can't get it from here. Uh, you actually just need to walk around ever so slightly. I mean ever so slightly. And eventually you're going to see the lock. And it's going to... It will get there eventually. There we go. So smash it down. Some For some reason there's just one flower grown in a tree just by itself hanging. Although it did look nice. But anyway, that is the second out of five flowers now. So job done. Right. What we're going to do then is we're going to have a look on the right hand side and... Oh my god! It is Lady Not Dimitrescu. She died a horrid death. Rats ate her throat and then the guards probably teabagged her. Because if they've been... Well, if they were playing uh, Halo like back in the day, you teabagged everyone you killed. Um, no, I'm just joking. But she's dead anyway. So what we need to do is just have a look around this little hut. Um, have a look at some flowers. It's pretty obvious where you've got to go because the, the next sort of button prompt will appear. Focus. Focus. Hey, we're here now. It's all right. No, oh, that's not it. Ah, there's nothing here, Lucas. I know. Let's check the house. Yes, it has to be there. Gardening tools. Oh, you must be joking. It's all junk. Oh, this is going no way. Now I'm not even there for him. How will we even get back? Oh, hands are sweaty. Look for anybody hiding. Amicia, come look. Just you should see for yourself. We don't have much time, so let's make it count. You stay here and patrol. Report if you see one bloody rat. Attention! We just caught a looter over there. Oh, Lucas, you so city man. You should be a comedian. God damn. Unfortunately, I am. Hiding, <laughs> hiding my face behind the tears of a clown. Right, so go straight in front of us. When the guard is starting to walk that away, basically away from us there, let's head through the bush. We now have to wreck you, Pukahontas. And just wait. He may start coming into the bushes, which is fine. If that does happen, you can just back up a little bit. But uh, nine times out of ten, he will start wandering around as soon as he does that. Keep going straight, hugging the right-hand side wall. Don't climb up anything just yet until we get here. Now, this is where you are going to climb up. Again, sticking with the bushes. Just make sure that the, there is a guard on the right-hand side that uh, may be having a look. So if we go to the left here on the tree, uh, just around the tree, you can see the guard on the right. Now, I do try, I am, I do get sneaky, and I do end up interacting with this chest, which almost gets me caught. So if you want to grab things in this chest, that's fine. It's just a couple of pieces and stuff. Um, but also do so at your own risk. You can grab it if you want. Uh, otherwise, we're just heading straight to where, towards where that enemy is looking. Wait until he turns around, and then we're going to climb up. Incredibly, no one else has seen us so far, amazingly. Um, head around to the left, and we're just go we are going to go into the first uh, the sort of first bit of flowers. Again, there is an enemy right in front of us now, so just be more aware of him. Wait for the moment he is going to come towards us and go to the right. There he goes. So as soon as he does that, we can now head on. Wait until he starts walking away from us further, and then just keep going straight. Again, he may start almost catching us, but don't worry about that. You just need to go straight all the way through to the door and make sure that you have your rock sling ready. Just just the rock on the sling, because as soon as you do that, we're going to need to shoot Lucas's captor. Very much like when our mama was getting strangled. I don't know why mama likes getting strangled, but not like that. Too rough. Um, so, <laughs> smash this guy. Should have plenty of time to smash him. Man. I tell you what, that's like a hell of a tennis serve with that sling rock. Jesus Christ. Anyway, that's Lucas the Puka Hunter saved. Now, this is where... Um, this is basically like an ambush now. So, a whole bunch of enemies are going to start attacking us. And this is where, like I said earlier, Amicia goes from... Okay, mommy, I'll be home by 8.30. The bitch, I'll twist your nutsack. I'm staying out all weekend. She gets real angry. Um... Again, if you're playing in Invincible mode, that's fine. But basically, these enemies are going to start coming down uh, sort of two or three at a time. Any helmeted ones, there are bags of saltpeter that you need to hit. 
and then that will blind them, and then you can kill them. Uh, basically, a couple of shielded enemies around. So there's a, two chests in here as well. Uh, she's going to start getting real angry. And like, there's a couple of pots as well, so uh, which you can use for pieces, again, on normal difficulty. Here is the, thir the first shield enemy, so just wait until he gets close to the bag of Peter, and then kill him dead. And then that's all you're doing. So, again, if you're not playing on Invincible mode, I highly recommend just going up to the door. And I'll tell you which door now. Uh, basically where Lucas is standing. Uh, and then they will only come sort of towards you. So, yep. If you stand in this area here, you shouldn't have any problems. And, uh, yeah, kill him dead. And get ready for the Amicia strong-ass stuff. Try fearing to them. Yes, follow me. Good dog. Stop her. She's dead. No. I am a grown -up. Yeah, just the kid that's killing you. Patience. It'll be your turn soon. In there. Yeah. Oh, in that place. Yes, come. Come try. Look, this is how it works now. I set the rules. Enough. Yeah. He's on his head off. No! It's in fight now! You're dead! You're gonna have dead! Oh, mama, that's us getting choked out to death. But isn't it funny how, in video games, guards will always kill other people, but when it's your main character, they're like, get in prison and stuff. Yeah. And I tell you what, we must be doing something right. So anyway, how to get out of the prison? Oh, Lucas Pugas just crapped his panty wanties. Uh, which, which I would, to be fair, as well. So basically, uh, Lucas has this ability called Stupid Face, or Stupefaccio. Um, I assume that's... Is, is that Italian or something? Anyway, you're going to press the left bumper, press the white button, and then Lucas will use it, and then you need to run away straight up the stairs. Um, this isn't a chase section. This is kind of st uh, just stealth. N nothing actually does chase you. And there's nothing else of note to collect or anything like that. So, uh, heading up and heading through the door. Incredibly, she locks the door all the time without turning around. So imagine if there was an enemy there... You just locked the door, bro. You just messed it up. Straight through the window. And then we just need to very sneakily uh, climb our way around. So to the left, to the right there. Oh, wow. This is really not safe at all. Shh, calm down. Come. I think it's the only way out of here. Are you joking? No, just stick to the wall. Oh, please, please, please. You can do it. Sorry to put you through this. This is my fault. I honestly don't care right now. There's another roof. Almost there. Oh, I did it. Oh. Let's get up this roof. Please. So, when we get up here, there is going to be an enemy that we are going to sneak around. So, near nah, panic and bother and panicking about that. So, crouchy crouch, get in and jump straight through the window. The path is pretty much very linear. A um, couple of things to do, but there's no way you can get lost at all. As uh, so you can have a look there at the bottom, that's fine, just fine. We're not going to... Uh, we're not going to concern ourselves just yet. So, let's climb down the ladder. And then, once we turn around... There we go. And there is going to be another enemy here, and again, we're going to use Lucas's stupid face. The stupid fat, yo, ah, ba ba da boob. Um, we are going to use it to uh, get rid of the fire. So again, press the left bumper, and then the white bumper. And Lucas's stupid face will get straight on there. That'll probably burn a little bit, and then we can, <laughs> we're all free, free to leave. Right, heading into this next little area. Again, like I said, there is nothing of note to collect, so it's no worries about that. We are just literally getting through two to end. You go is somewhere down there. Um, and we're actually going to end up in a warehouse in just a bit. So we can drop down here. Now, this looks like an obvious place where there will be a bunch of guards. But lucky for us, the guards are walking the other way. 
So we can go straight and then head, uh, just jump straight down. And then we can just go through the window. And now we are into the warehouse. Uh, oh, in fact, no, we're almost into the warehouse. Climb under the table. Sorry, almost forgot about this bit. And then the guard here is going to walk uh, through to the right. So all you got to do is just wait for his dirty little boots to uh, scrub off to the right there. You can already see he's walking past. As soon as he's past, get out and somehow he doesn't hear anything. No whispering, no tapping of the wood. He doesn't turn around, he doesn't smell anyone. Impressively bad guard. So to the right, through the door. And ta-da! You are doing it. And it's not bad, we're only three chapters in at a 16. The adventures you've been on already, man. Right, we should be safe now at this point. So for now, we're just going to keep on heading down. The warehouse will be uh, with us in a minute. And in fact, here it is. So let's drop down in through this little gap. And here we are. So in this area, there is the first secret chest that we're going to grab, plus the fourth souvenir as well. So we can just um, eventually, when they stop talking, when they stop talking, there's no one in here, bro. Uh, we're going to climb down the ladder. There's nothing to note of on the left-hand side. In fact, we are going to just get our weapon back first. Now, you should have a knife. Um, you can have a look in this box, but it actually doesn't contain anything. It's swords and knives, which for some reason, uh, Misia does not take. I'm not being funny. I would be taking a couple of them. Uh, Lucas can stick stuff in his inventory from somewhere, so he can do it, damn it. So climb down the ladder, and then all we're doing then is heading to the very, very opposite side of the room. Heading to the left, and that is where our things are. And then we can turn directly around and grab the secret chest. Maybe with a knife? Yes. So, as long as you do have the secret chest, you will get this one. By the way, like I said, if there is something that you cannot grab for whatever particular reason, you can always just choose chapter select, because of course, we're doing the levels within the chapter. Here's the secret chest, by the way. So this is how we open it with a knife. It breaks, but it's open. And normally you'll get a couple of goodies, like maybe a tool, um, 10, 20, maybe 30 pieces. And a pot as well, sometimes. And then in the middle there is just the workbench. Which, like I said, for now, as you can see at the bottom, we're going to need six tools on the left and 175 pieces on the right. Which, uh, providing you follow along with the guide here, you will get that before... Well, you'll get that around chapter five. But we're not going to do anything until chapter six because we need the crossbow, which you can only get at the end of chapter five. Get it? Goddamn good. Right, um, so yeah, as I mentioned earlier, with the instruments, if they do end up patching it, you can just upgrade your all instruments, which means you will require no tools in order to upgrade. The gear, if you wanted to upgrade the gear um, to carry additional live, uh, knives, you would need to upgrade the gear all the way to the end as well. But like I said, you will always have, you will always find one or two knives before getting to the next secret chest, so don't worry about that. Honestly, do not worry. Right, so what we can do from here, head to the right, go past Lucas and head left. There's a little gap in between here on the left, which we are going to look at as well. We're actually going now, like I said, for the last souvenir of the chapter. So, directly in front of us, smash open that. That's like a little walkway bridge thing that we can grab. Um, ignore the ladder for now, keep going straight and then right. And just on this little barrel, chilling by itself. No mama, no papa, there are five pieces all alone. There's no one here beside me. <sighs> and then we can head up the ladder. There we go. Right, so basically this is the start-ish of the area. But for now we go into the left instead of coming down from the right. And if we interact with the map in front of us, that is the next souvenir here. I know this. Lucas, they have a map of Guyenne. Really? What's it doing here? I don't know. Here's the ocean. The lake. Home was... It was around here, yes. <laughs> hey, don't... torture yourself with this right now. Yes. It's... All in the this is our home! It's our home! <gasps> oh, so it says right there. But anyway, that is souvenir 4 out of 21. 
Uh, we're coming up close to the very end of the chapter now. Um, just a couple more things left to do. So now what we're going to do is drop down and we're going to go and see Lucas right there at the front door. And then we're just going to have a little walk around, a little chat with him. And, well, we're going to start getting the hell out of here. So, how long before we go? Don't know, don't care. You don't want to go out there, believe me. Damn, the gate is right there. They're too many. We can't sneak past them. And we can't stay either. Oh, we need a plan. I don't know. This place is full of things. Let's take a look around. Of course. You see what I see? What? Up there. The ballista. Listen, I've gathered enough materials here to make a large quantity of stupefaccio. So we stick the paste to the tip of the bolt, shoot it, and hopefully the friction from the impact will light it up. And we'll get enough smoke to blind them all. If it works. We don't have any better ideas. Let's get that ballista down. There's a crank up there. How can we climb up? I don't see anything. There has to be something. Hey, go fetch more men! We're doubling the headcount on patrols! We must hurry. There'll be even more soon. Well, I don't know. This place is a mess. There could be... There! I found a cart. Yes, well done. Let's get that in place. So when Lucas has finally finished blah blah blahing, he's pushed the cart out of the way. We can now grab the little platform lift thing. <laughs> now remember, it can be a little bit uh, awkward. Remember to use the right stick to move left or right, and then the left stick up and down to move up and down. Yeah. So head to the right anyway, because that is where we need to put it. When you get it right anyway, they'll eventually sort of automatically pop it in for you. So up you get, up you get, mate. Uh, you can obviously see the obvious looking crank since there's nothing else up here. Make sure to get Lucas to do that again. Left bumper on the Y button. And then what's going to happen eventually there's going to be a chain that we can break as it flies down, 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 down. Okay, there it is. It got there a little quicker than I thought. Again, somehow the guards are not hearing any of this at all, which is just incredible really. And there's not one of them that, that's actually guarding the warehouse. So, unbelievable. Anyway, what we're going to do is push this bazooka, baluka, bazaka, bazooka to the front door. And that's pretty much going to end the chapter. And then we'll go on to chapter four. Protector's duty. Duty. Crazy, Lucas. I think we're past that point. <sighs> All right. It's set. I think the crank on the side arms it. I'm on it. So... When do you open the doors? I won't. Shoot through it. We need friction to get the reaction. What? But we don't even know if it will go through. Too late for that. Get ready. I am. I know it's hard, but it has to be done. It's been two days. How can you stand there and do nothing? Amicia is fayoming! <laughs> Sorry about that though, bro. But for now, like I said, we're back at the house, so we are just going to follow little Pugahontas once again for the start of chapter four. I can't. Ugh, let's just keep going. Fine. dare purge a whole city, would they? I don't know. We need that boat quickly. There is no need to panic. The army of Provence has the situation under control. Yes. Now tell them what your control means. Look, that 
that watchtower at the back. It leads to the harbor. Get ready, men. We'll move our load to the docks soon. The docks? That's where we're going, isn't it? Those cages on their cart, I think. Their bodies from the arena. So this is where they take them. Alicia, when we're there, you'll hold your sling, all right? We don't need another barn situation. Yes. No more killing soldiers. Don't worry. I heard you the first time. I'll find other ways. asked me to ask Magister Vodan about the island. The fresco in his lodge. What did he say? He said it's just a symbol. A two-peak symbol, just as in Hugo's dream. I know. The island, the macula waking up, the order. It's too much. Glad to hear you say it. It helps me not to feel alone in this. You're not. I'm here. So begins the little subchapter called Night Work. Now, I tried doing Night Work once, but uh, I was told I had to pay them. Which is very depressing. Anyway, <laughs> um, no, I'm just joking. That was definitely not a uh, prosy artusian joke. Any anyway, as we head down, we're going to head to the right. We're going to be grabbing the third flower. So keep going, keep going, and then eventually we'll get to the end where there is going to be the flower there. And this one is called Gelatin. Galatio Magnum. Oh, Gentian, or whatever that is. Uh, head on to this little walkboard here, just to the right, to grab another couple of pieces. And yes, that was the third out of five flowers. And there's nothing else by the boat or anything, but there will be on the left-hand side of us a little chest that we can open up. And it's going to be just past this boat here. So turn to the left, you can probably already see it, it's pretty much automatic. But that is what we need to do in this chapter. We All we're doing is grabbing a lift. We're grabbing a ride. Grabbing a lift. Grabbing a ride. But of course, what stands between us and that lift is a whole bunch of crap with a bunch of crap guys trying to kill us all the crap in town. Right, so once you've grabbed that then, again, you should be on the third flower there and a chest and a little piece. We can now climb up, basically straight in front of us. Um, again... Bit of a linear path coming up, um, obviously just make sure to keep quiet, but for now just keep following Lucas. So, it's mad that actually an AI in a game is actually helpful instead of an absolute hindrance. We should just leave this place. I heard it left nothing but mass graves when it happened in Guyen. This lockdown is gonna get them all killed. Yes, it's going to be terrible. A real rat's carnival. Alright, open the gate! So when we get up here then, we're going to head to the left, so don't go to the right just yet, turn back, sorry, go to the left, you can basically go and back on yourself into this area, just to grab another little chest. Yes. Again, obviously a couple more items in there, some sulfur, and some alcohol if you need it. Again, making obviously always making sure that you're all topped up with everything, if that's the case, then we're all good to go. So just keep heading down the boardwalk. And eventually, we are going to head to the left, into this little area, and there is something that we can crouch under and go through, rather than go through the cards, of course, because wouldn't that be a literal pain in the rat's ass? Um, make sure to grab this little cart right here, then. And obviously, we're going to be, we can't push that, which I tried to do somehow. Um, what I end up doing here is just turning it completely around, just to make it easier for yourself, and put it straight. There we go, lovely. Hell of a three-point turn that was. Well done, guys, well done. We're making it. Up here, then, is the next souvenir anyway. This is souvenir five out of 21. Lucas, look. Real silk. It probably came from China. I've never seen so much. There's a fortune here. Someone made this on the other side of the world. Do you think it's the same in China? Do you think they have... The rats too. Maybe not. Not yet. We have to stop this. 
Silk Treasure just reminded me of Silk Road. And if you haven't heard the story of Silk Road on the dark web, I urge you to give that a watch or give that a listen. It's on loads of podcasts, but it is awesome. So straight in front of us anyway is, after we get the uh, last souvenir, is going to be this little place that we can drop down, this little hatch or whatever that we can drop down into. Again, saves us from going through the guards. Uh, <laughs> well, saves us ish. So we're actually going to have to start going through the guards in a minute. Uh, past the old fish barrels here. On to the left, there is another little treasure chest for us to grab. Lots of treasure. Lo well, lots of booze to grab. So keep going then. There is another pot slash piece right there if needing. And if we keep going straight from here, just behind here, oh, just behind these little fences, you can see a knife. So that is one knife that, of course, is what we will need for a secret chest uh, a lot later on. So through the left, through the gap here, a little bit later on anyway, we're not too far from the secret chest, actually. But make sure that you have grabbed that knife beforehand or you've got at least one in your inventory. Um, so what we're doing is just sneaking around to the right and climbing up, which is good. Somehow, again, they're not <laughs> watching us, which, well, you know, makes life grande for us, doesn't it? So sneak around, and then what we're doing straight in front of us, there is something we could just crawl under, nip through. <laughs> and if you've been sort of following along, uh, you will get your first sort of skill. Um... Uh, the light footstep, which basically means Amicia just is a little bit quieter when she is um, tiptoeing. So, again, if you don't get that just yet, don't worry, you'll probably get that in just a little bit as well. That's fine. So as we climb down the ladder here, little Pocahontas is going to keep going. We don't mind. Uh-oh. Wow! Rats are on the way. So as soon as we start uh, going a little bit more forward... Holy crap, holy! What a set of bloody rapid Jesus Christ, they're coming down like bloody little bullets or something then. But it's incredible how they don't actually go through the light anyway. As soon as you see a bit of light, they're like, eh, yeah, I don't like light. Like toddlers, tr trying to give toddlers a bath, that is. So <laughs> they just don't want it. Right, so we need to start making our way through. No enemies, which is all good, but it is just rats. So there's a little uh, brazier right in front of us that we're going to use. And, in fact, it's not that we're going to use. We're going to use the tar. So, there's a chest to the left as well. Make sure, obviously, to grab whatever you can in there, if needed. I did, because I need stuff. So, that burns the way. Of course, try not to go through the fire. That will mean potential, pretty much, death. And then we can just carry on walking around. You can see the, the chest here. This is going to have a couple more items in it. But we are, like I say, coming up to the secret chest. In just a moment. A couple of pieces there for us as well. Yes. So what you need to do then. There is this little cart thing right here. With the brazier on it. That's what we're going to do. And you can probably see as well. There is a ladder. Pretty much just in front of us. Uh, but that is where we are going to pick. Uh, that is where we're going to push the cart first. Uh, after you've grabbed everything. And everything's all good. Oh no Marseille. Is Marseille different or... Does Marseille currently look like the plague rat tails of the 1800s? Right, so turn it around then to the left and just push it towards the ladder in the background to get the next secret chest. Put a couple more pieces and all of that. what it has. So we are getting there with tools and pieces, so you should 
As long as you've been following along, you should have exactly the same amount of tools anyway. We only need six to do the cheese method anyway. Again, unless the cheese method's gone off, and then, you know, you can ignore exactly what I'm talking about. Um, <laughs> but since it is available, um, we only need six tools for the cheese method and 175 pieces as well. If not, um, and it is patched, of course, you will have to just start a new game plus and go through a couple of these levels again. Right, there will be, I believe if you're only playing on normal difficulty, right where I just was, will be some pieces. Um, it'll just be five, so five pieces I think you'll get there if you're playing on a difficulty harder than easy. And then what we're going to do then is just push it around, so push it to the left. Don't take it back, no y'all. No hops this time. Just keep pushing. Boom. Just keep pushing. Every rat, why aren't you dead? Clap, 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 clap. And that's about as far as it goes. Well, that, again, comes in handy for us. So we can just head straight through. Directly in front of us is another chest to grab. So, why, 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 why? Amicia's really quick at grabbing stuff as well, especially when she's in a rush. Da, 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 da. Oh, man, more. We are going to be coming up to the tar workshop now as well. And that is going to be another thing for us to blend up. So for now, smash open the big massive pig directly in front of us. Again, very nicely hanging pigs for us. And then what you need to do then is get the extinguish and extinguish the fire. With that, off pops the rats and the pigs all yours. Well, the pigs all theirs. Uh, but the chest is all ours here on the right. So again, slam, 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 slam. Slam whatever you want inside yourself, Amicia. Except for the rats. And dear rat boy. Right, so once we've got everything that we can on that little dock, head directly back and straight through the door. And this is the tar workshop. Now, if you're wondering what it is, it's not cold, cold, unwashed sweat nades. It is just tar that we are walking through right now. And of course, as usual, a whole, be a whole bunch of um, dead bodies in half for whatever particular reason. Right, so the rats will appear in just a moment after another little chat. They must use it to seal boat hulls. These mechanisms are still intact. It smells different here. Resin. This is a mixing pool. That barrel up there must be the diluent. We should move on. Oh no! Here they come to wreck the day! So, since they are wrecking the day and they're going to do that for quite a few more hours left of the game yet. Um, have a look at the door behind you here, smash it open, uh, head back through the sort of way we came, and now we can actually go through the unlocked door. Now instead of slowly going in tire, you'd sort of just jump for it, wouldn't you? Unless you'd fall and then you'd swallow tire and you'd probably die, but then, yeah, it's a bit tricky then, isn't it? Uh, so have a look at this chest here on the left, Amicia doing the tiptoe when there's nobody about. And then we can just simply go ahead and get Lucas to... Oh, in fact, no, we're going to do this ourselves. Sorry, Lucas is at the top. So, smash it down. Hold the Y button, of course. And then Lucas is going to jump on. Obviously, wait until Lucas jumps on there at the top. Yeah, cheers, mate. I appreciate it. And when he's on, he'll say, I am ready. I am ready. Very SpongeBob-ish. And away he goes. So, press the B button to drop it. Climb up the ladder here. And there's going to be another couple of pieces in Tkjörna. In Tkjörna? Oh, it is alcohol, of course. Everyone's a booze hound. They might as well be if there's the risk of dying from rats every single day. You might as well get drunk so it doesn't feel as painful. Apart from all the tearing of the flesh and eating of the bones and stuff. Or eating of the uh, organs. <laughs> right, so. What you have to do, you need. we actually need to wait until Lucas... Pause the tar in. Don't... I made a mistake here and just uh, try to ignite nothingness. So there we go. So Lucas finally tips the tar in. And then what you can do with your hand, get your ignito out. And that flies that bit away. Interesting stuff, huh? Right. So all you need to do, you need to try and get sort of as close to Lucas. Lucas is just at the top. So you need to get a little bit closer until the Y button prompt um, appears. So if it doesn't appear, um, just walk forward a little bit more as soon as he sorts himself out. There he is. Go. 
And the reason it was taking me so long is because I wasn't close enough to him. So you press the Y button, we can now make tar. So again, obviously right bumper in your inventory and make, you should only have enough for two tars. But you need to use the pot. So don't make the mistake I did here. You need to use the pot. Um, if you do end up running out of tar, just quickly restart the little section here and you should start restart either at the first, uh, pretty much I think at the first one. But make sure that you use a pot of tar. That is the important thing there. Uh, don't worry if you do run out though, we'll get some more later. And then of course, ignite that schniz, baby. Fire! And then I am doing the fire motion with my hand, but you can't obviously see it. Um, <laughs> so I'm just looking like an absolute tool. So, fire up that pit. We should now be good for the time being. Lucas is going to climb down. Hello, buddy. You're very helpful in this game. You were a bit uh, useless in the first game, if I remember. I think. Uh, we're going to climb up the ladder now. And just keep going straight. And then we're going to go on onto the right. Past the barrel, and you can already see the glimmering, the shininess. That is the deliciousness of a chest. Tools and pieces galore in here. And then just go back the way you came, down the ladder, and then straight up the steps. Our boat should be straight ahead, right? Don't be too sure about that. Listen, Amicia. About Hugo. I, I was stuck between Manchester Vaudan and your mother, and I have no excuse. I was wrong. It's just... I wasn't prepared. So, when we get outside, again, if you need it, just uh, try and um, make your inventory and stock as full as you can. When we cross this little bridge or whatever, turn to the left, and there's going to be another couple of pieces just sitting on its own, waiting, just waiting for someone to pick it up. Right, we're going for the next souvenir now as well. So what we need to do is, you should see that lock directly in front of you as you turned away from the souvenir, from the piece. We can now go down the ladder, interact with the little button prompt here on the dock, and that will get a little grain of sand conversation between the two pair. Dying right now, but it's so silent. We never should have come. You keep thinking you have control over this, but we're merely grains of sand in the Maculous Path. I'm not a grain of sand, Lucas. I'm just saying, you need to stop feeling guilty. Maybe. I didn't really need to say the two pair, since two is a pair, a pair is two. But, you know, du du <laughs> double checking, isn't it? Anyway, that is the that should be the sixth out of 21 souvenirs you got now, a grain of sand. So, straight up the stairs, you can see this little bit that we need to get through, um, get through the little gap. I tell you what, genuinely now, I would not be able to fit through these gaps with the size of the ass that I've got. No, 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 no. <laughs> it would be a lot more difficult. It's plump, squat plumpy, as it were. So, heading up, and then we are heading through to the door. Um, it's going to start getting a little more interesting here. Now, uh, what we need to do, see the um, uh, the walkway that was up just in front of us. There's a chest directly in front of us right there. Uh, but if we turn to the right from where I am, sorry, I'm getting a little bit confused. There should be a little lock that we can smash open. There it is. That gets rid of the walkway. That puts that down. Lovely stuff. Right. So now we are going to help out this guard. And we are going to be coming up to a missable achievement called Mercy for not killing the guard on the dock. So I'll obviously let you know when we probably get there. But it is very simple anyway. It's just a case of checking some tar at him and he's all good. Right, so for now, we eventually, when they do stop talking... We're all scared, mate. It's about 300,000 rats trying to, eat, <laughs> trying to eat the hell out of my nostrils all day. So the guard's doing that one automatically then. Now it's up f up to us. So a little bit of help and a little bit of puzzling going on here. So what you need to do then, um, obviously interact with this one first, and that will uh, get rid of the tar. Chuck it out down the bottom. Lovely. And then obviously we can need to get out our 
Ignito, Ignito, Shona Paul. Use your hand. And then just throw it in. And that'll be the first pack done. There's three that we need. Uh, three little pits, if you wish, to fill them with tar. Right. So if you want to keep moving, press the left bumper next to Lucas and press the Y button. He will get us going. Now, you can only tell him to stop as soon as the boat lands behind you. So I made the mistake of telling him uh, when the boat still hadn't dropped. So I went all the way back to the beginning, which is a pain in the ass. So as soon as you see the boat drop now, now you can press the left bumper and the Y to get him to stop. Right. Uh, there is a chest on here as well. It was probably worth actually just doing the tar first and then coming back to the secret chest. But, you know, like, whatever. Just having a quick look. Don't think there was anything else there. Pretty sure there is not. So, tar it up, baby. Oh, I kept doing this. I kept pressing the white button once and then she'd stumble as if she'd been slapped in the face by a paranormal ghost or something. <sighs> Apparently, that's the noise you make when you get... When you start stumbling backwards. <laughs> right, so now that one's full of tar. Make sure you've got your Ignito hand ready. Which, account, of course, it doesn't burn your hand, which is mega, mega handy. And then that'll be the second part done. Right, try and get out what you can. Again, you should have enough uh, sort of items there to upgrade everything. Or, you know, fully stock everything, as it were. Now... Um... Sorry, yeah, so tell Lucas to crack on then, and then what we need to do is push up the boat ourselves. Sorry, I, for some reason I got really confused with that. So just keep it there until it is all the way to the left. And then once it is, you can actually now just uh, press the B button to stop. That will get the boat down. So now you can do it. Now! Alright, there we go. Sorry, don't know why that took me so long. Now we can press uh, tell Lucas to stop. That'll go back and that will come in mega handy for us to just smash open the tower with. Smash a bit of flame in. And yes. And done. Right, so the way's clear, but it's not totally clear yet. So I'm not actually going to go down the steps. Uh, sorry, just feeling like SpongeBob at the minute in that first episode. Water! I need water! Uh, so have a look at the um, sort of in between the two pits. And as you can see there, it's not looking good. So we are going to tar up the first pit. That should be enough to scurry the um, rats away. That should be enough for Lucas to nip on through. And then, of course, you need to press the Y button here. Hold the Y button so that the boats can nip up. The boat behind Lucas should already be down. That's why his butt's not getting bitten to death. And we are almost there. And Lucas is good. Now, this is where the Mercy Trophy is going to come in. Remember, we have to not kill the dock on the guards. So, open up the chest. Get a couple of things. Make sure everything's as full as you can. And now... Oh, in fact, I think we've just got one more thing to do. Yeah, so we've just got to get the one walkway down first. So get your normal G-string out. Uh, your normal regular string, sorry. Pop that down, and the guard's going to be like, Oh, thank God you just the break the law tonight. Yeah. I, I, I mean, that's not exactly uh, how his accent went. But this is where the mercy is. So make sure that you've got the hand option with the tar. So make sure it is the tar option that you have available. Because we, we are trying to not kill the guard. So if you use the extinguish, that's going to kill the guard. That's going to avoid the achievement. And of course, we can't do anything with his torch since it's already on fire. So what the tar's going to do, as soon as he gets... As soon as he stops walking about here in the middle, now make a break for it when he's blinded by the light. R up the right to the steps, to the right again, and head all the way down the dock. Now, the only reason we're doing this is there is a nice fat treasure chest with yummy, delicious things in it. Sadly, no food, since uh, we really haven't seen our protagonist here eating at all. Uh, so just grab what you can, head back towards the dock. Now, again, the guard will be moving around, but what you need to do is make sure that he is sort of around the stairs, around this area. Throw the tar back at him. 
Uh, luckily, we were able to fly straight past him. Uh, but you've got to make sure that he's in this area. Otherwise, the rats will eat you and you'll die. Go through the door anyway, straight in front of us. And that is... Mercy, oh, mercy me. For whatever particular reason, I don't know why I just said that. But that is the achievement done. So that's very, very easy. Can't beat it. Again, if you want to upgrade, of course, I'm not saying you can't. But um, we are 25 pieces and one tool away from cheesing it up. Um, and again, like I said, if if it's already been patched, I highly recommend just upgrading all the instruments first so you don't have to worry about tools later on. As I've said about 60,000 times in the guide by now. You should have left when you still could. You could have left if you could, yes, yeah, screw you. Right, this is kind of a long section and I was making a bit of a boo-boo, uh, to be honest. It got to a point where um, I was just sucking. So I end up not trying to do... Don't worry about the guards here. They will get shot to death, by the way, which is nice. Um, but what it is, it's supposed to be a, a one just whole sneaky bit. Kill the guards as you're going along, and that's all good. But it, I, I wasn't getting the memo, so I end up using the invincibility mode to my advantage. Uh, but for now, what we're doing then... From this area, we are going to head um, basically to the right. You can see where the little bridge is right there on our right. There's just a little item for us to grab. I do believe it's just a pot, um, but obviously it comes in handy if you need it. So grab the pot there. Uh, do sneak because guards will and can still f uh, see you. Although I think our friend on the boat will kill them dead with the incredible arrow. Uh, but go straight in front of us. That's just tar, so don't worry about that. That's nothing you can collect. But straight in front of us again is another chest. So, hey, guys, it's Blippi. Chest it. Uh, Blippi. Anyone with, anyone with young kids will know who Blippi is. Annoying but very rich son of a gun. Anyway, that's not him. That's me. I'm me. So we're going to go back to the sort of main. This is the main middle area. Heading through, we're going to light up the way so the rats can bagger off. There will be a couple of guards in this next area, but it should be fine. You can literally just walk towards them again. And our friend Joseph and his rainbow-colored seven arrows will uh, kill them deader than the dead thing in Dead Man's Land. So you don't actually have to sneak here. <laughs> Joseph's not just an alchemist. He is badass, bro. 100%. King dogs. Right. Rats are all over them, even though the rats on top are just eating the butts of their other counterpart rats. Weirdly. Um, so what we can do, we can head to the... There's a few ways to go. But what we're going to do is head to the right. So past the two sort of swamps right here. And then on the left-hand side, what you're going to see is this little fire. But there is going to be another chest at the end. This part can be slightly confusing. Because um, it's so easy to sort of get lost for about five, five ten minutes or so. Uh, there is going to be a guard here that will require a slingshot to the nugget. There he is. So if we sort of, it's like we just sort of went back on ourselves almost. So slap him, square in El Nagato. Good job, O. And then we can just keep on sneaking on by. Grab, of course, if you do need anything, make sure to grab whatever it is that he dropped. And there's another chest in this little room as well. Uh, so, yeah, this next section does take about 13 to 15 minutes anyway. Uh, it is a bit of a long boy, but let's go. So, obviously, what we need to do, make sure you've got your regular G-string out. And then slap down that fish like you've never slapped down a fish with a G-string before. Which I bet you didn't expect that sentence. Unless you have slapped a fish with a G-string. I'm not, I'm not uh, judging. Anyway, directly in front of us you can see the fire. But just to the left of us there is a set of logs. And to the left of these logs is a knife in a tree stump. There it is. So make sure that you're grabbing that knife again, of course, for a secret chest later on. So you always got to make sure that you've got the knife. Don't stab any enemies with it, etc, etc. Right. So straight in front of us now. Uh, keep crouching down. This is the part which does take a while. Um... Now, there are a couple of chests and things that we can grab as we kill the first guy right in front of us there. There's a couple of items that you can grab, but if you want, the exit is basically... If you're on invincibility mode and you just want to end it, you, you've just got to go straight in front of us into a little dark area and um, just go straight through to the boat, pretty much. 
But again, I'm trying to be as sort of sneaky as I can, and it ends up with me thinking, ah, screw this, and just completing it anyway. So a bit bit naughtier, this one. But like I said, I've got to give it out to the developers, because anyone who does put in an invincibility mode or something like that, so people can enjoy the game, well, I'll tell you what, you, you honestly can't beat it. Yes, a lot of people have a challenge, but a lot of people don't have the stress or time to constantly die on the same part all the time. So anyway, head to the right. This is another area where guards may be in completely different locations for you, okay? Uh, I was waiting for two guards on the other side to come to me, which they never appeared. Now, if you want to kill guards sneakily, um, well, that guard's fine, obviously, but the guards with the helmets, if you want to kill them sneakily, what you need to do is pop your head up, wait until they start coming to you in the wheat grass, and then throw the fireball at them. That, that is how they will die. If you just throw a fireball at them, like I just did, he'll just somehow, amazingly, put himself out. So that's uh, just one way to do it there. So make sure that he is in the wheat grass, <laughs> trees of May style, and then set him alight. And that is how he will die a pretty torturous death. So anyway, straight underneath the cart here, um, we're going to go straight in front of us. For me, there was a couple of guards that are w annoyingly uh, going to appear. One can sort of see me on the left, that's fine, you can just hide behind here and they'll go, I'm sure that was a person, and then actually think, Metal Gear Solid wise, nah, it was nothing. Unbelievably. Uh, have a look at the top right hand corner. And the guy just dies anyway, so you don't actually need to do anything. Um, unfortunately, Joseph doesn't help us with the rest of the enemies here by the big bonfire. So, I was just waiting. So, one guard's actually walking up, and then there's going to be another guard to my left, which does get annoying. So, I do just wait here for a mo. And then I decide to just throw a cheeky fireball. I'm done with waiting. I've had enough of waiting, damn it. So, try and pat yourself out there. There we go. So, then we can sneak on by into the wheat grass. Now, the guy is going to see me here, so he hasn't got a helmet on, luckily, for us, so we can just smash out, uh, smash this guy. Now, the reason that I'm going in this particular area rather than going for the exit is because there are a lot of chests with a couple of, with quite a few tool pieces and, um, uh, pieces and tools in it. So that's why I'm just showing you exactly the locations where they are. There will be a guard that I got very sloppy. Again, I get very sloppy in this part of the area. It started just doing my head in. So again, I do chuck a fireball at him to chill out. If somebody does manage to catch you, what you can do is just smash this at him, and he'll be like, oh, I'm on fire. This guard for me, uh, luckily, again, don't stab him, of course. Don't do that. Um, there may be two guards up in this area as well. So again, you've just got to be very careful because it can be sort of randomized. Now, I thought he was going to pop up here. I was actually waiting for a hiding place, but all he does is decided to go up the stairs... But it is the stairs, where, where the guard's just about to go, is where the chest is. Is what I am trying to grab. Um, so again, like I said, that's why we're not going f uh, straight for the exit. I'm just showing you exactly where a couple of chests are. So, and again, luckily for me, the guard seems to jump down. So he doesn't actually go back to his little hidey hole location, first of all. There we go, you could just see him drop down there. So, assuming it's safe... That's where we're going, straight up the stairs to grab another chest. They think they can do worse than the Inquisition. They always can. The count has been right, so now we're going to drop down. Um, now, basically, when we get in the, the f wheat field, the exit, if you wish, is uh, to the right, in this sort of darker area with a bunch of pig carcasses and stuff in it. Um, but I'm going to the left. There's a chest which I pretty much missed earlier when I was hiding in this area. So we grab that. And what we can do now, as soon as, well, as soon as we've grabbed everything and there's nothing else for us to grab, we're going to just head to the opposite side of the bonfire. Now, there is a reason, again, that, we, that I was going to do this. So basically, um, if we just sit in this little field of wheat... Go over to the next one as well, and hide behind this cart. Now, in this sort of tower-looking thing, straight in front of us, the guard's coming down now. There will be a little item there, some alcohol or some sulfur, something like that. 
um, which I did try to get, but I ended up not grabbing it. So when we go up to the stairs here, again, if there's easy enough to kill guards, kill them. Um, if there are a few guards, don't worry, because literally, it's to the steps. You can see the stairs now, so if we headed up the steps, you would be able to find the one bottle of it, like I said, either alcohol or sulfur. Um, but for now, what we're doing is just heading sort of to the left. This is the path. This is the right direction where the exit is. But I am just going to go ahead and grab one more chest for us. So, ignore Guardski right there. So, like I said, now we're in the area where all the sort of pig carcasses are and stuff. Is where the exit is. Um, I thought there was rats. There are no rats. That's why, <laughs> that's why that didn't work. But we're going through this little bit of hidey hole. There's a pot slash pieces on the floor. But what we're going to need is this stick. Now, this is the point. I thought, screw this. Because, again, it was taking me like an, an extra five or ten minutes to do all that. So head to the right anyway. When, when you've grabbed the stick, I'll just show you where it is and then it'll be up to you how you do it. Grab this torch. Uh, make sure to torch, light the torch at the end. Turn directly around and straight in front of us right there is where the chest is. So again, I do apologize, I did get very sloppy with this bit, and I just thought, screw it, I can't be asked waiting around, but that's what Invincible Mode's for. Once we've got the tool and the pieces and everything, head straight back out, and now we should be good to go. Now, if you want to, oh, I almost got death by rats. So now let us head for the exit. So to the left, and there's no, honestly, I tried sneaking because I thought I could get past everyone, but everyone knows where I am now, so it makes not but a difference. So if we keep heading and sort of hugging the left-hand side of this area, we are going to find another three chests. So the first one is going to be just around these uh, little bits of fences or little uh, posts or whatever. So grab that. As I said, we are now heading towards the exit. You can't get over that way. And now I'm just like, ah, oh, right, you see me. Ah, oh, screw it. Head into this little barn on the left or the shack. That is yet another chest with some more items in it. And again, luckily, they're just saying, excuse me, before you try and ask me in the back, can I just um, upgrade, uh, can I just uh, do some of my tools? Oh, thanks. So keep heading to the left. Head to the left, and we can climb up again. And then what we are going to see is the third and final chest. Again, there is no point. In this area, the guards are going to be in random locations. For me, obviously, one was directly straight in front of me, which was a bit of a pain. But for you, uh, they may be elsewhere, especially if, obviously... The more you kill guards, the obviously less they will be, and they will try and find you in other locations. So, this is the end. There is nothing else to do here. So, just go across the drawbridge, go to the door on the right. And then, <laughs> thank God that bit's over with. So, um, yeah, again, apologies. My, I, uh, pff, I got to a point where I was just like, oh, man, I'm bored of sneaking around. Let's just go nuts. Right, so we do have enough tools, we do almost have enough pieces now, but again, like I said, we are going to wait to get the crossbow, which we will get at the very end of the next chapter. So there we go. Head straight through, and this will be the end of the chapter after you speak to Joseph. So we are done. Whoa! Thanks for not letting us down. And for the helping hand. Well, you did your part. Now, where is the rest of the group? In town, getting ready to leave. Except we're not done, and we've got to run away from a whole bunch of crap rats. So it's not the end of the chapter. This is the last part of the chapter now, where Hugo's basically having a mega dream, nightmare, whole bunch of rats are destroying the city, so let's sprint. So immediately sprint. Uh, obviously, linear path, but head to the right. As soon as we can, we're going to jump over straight in front of us as here. Obviously, a nice bit of white paint tells us where to go. Now we're going to start running backwards. So we'll let hit down. Don't press the B button to crouch. That was silly of me. Just keep going. You're going to have to press the A button as well to jump over something in a little bit, I believe. No, we're not. It's not quite, not quite that far yet. So keep going. No time to rest. Keep heading down. Don't die. Don't die. That's fantastic advice, Amicia. I will take that literally. Straight through out of the window. I can do it. No! No, 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 no! That's a hell of a lot of rats. Still, let's keep running forward to the right. And keep on going down to the left. Well, of course, you're not going straight on, are you? 
Just keep going, just keep going. Go to the left now, of course. There's no other way, to be honest. There's a lot of powerful rats. Jesus Christ. Keep on heading, keep on heading forward, ignoring the dead lady, who's already going to be dead. Well, keep going back. And head to where dead lady was. Straight down the stairs. Straight down the stairs. <laughs> Bloody hell, that is crap pantingly stuff. Uh, squeeze through, keep squeezing through, keep squeezing through. And then just head on to the rooftops. Eventually there's going to be a part, uh, we're almost at the house, but there is going to be a part now where we're going to fall straight through the decking. Uh, make a jump for it here. And this is where we're actually going to fall through. This is the last part now of the last chapter, I'm not lying to you this time. Uh, but you've got to be careful on the rooftops. They will come from the right and left, so don't stray too far left or too far right. So just keep into the middle as much as you can. And this is the end of chapter 4. On to chapter 5, where everything's a little less, a little more chilled out for another bit. Ah, the protector, finally! He won't calm down, I don't know what to do. Let me... Amicia. I should carry him. I'll do it. The city is gone. All of it. We have to leave. This is unprecedented. These people. It's too late. Keep going. Who is that? Try to sleep, you can't. God damn it, you're a heavy little schnit snack. I Old rat boy, know. since I, uh, since, of course, he does have the uh, possession to. Um, the rats. What's the word I'm trying to say? Since he has the ability to possess rats, that's what I'm trying to say. We're now going to call Hugo. Not Hugo Boss anymore. We're going to call him Rat Boy. Which is very unfortunate. He's very sad, angry, and upset right now. But, bruh, don't be such a rat boy, bruh. That's life advice again. Anyway, let's just keep walking till the very end, and then it's the end of chapter four. Sorry, I've literally liked you twice in this walkthrough. My bad. stop, Amicia. It will. In Marseille, they'll help you. It's not true. You keep saying that, but you're lying, lying. Hugo, please calm down. You have the right to be sad and angry, but I won't let you down. You know it. We'll find a way. We will. Are you all right? I thought you were... We're all unharmed, Lucas. Come aboard, quick! It's only us. Magister Vodan. I see. Let's not waste time then. I heard the same thing happened in Guyenne. Chapter V in our Vic. Well, let's do this, shall we? Right, jump off the boat, and then uh, this is going to just be a little scene where the boat starts nipping off by itself, nipping off by its own. Well, isn't that just? Isn't that just a damn annoying? What? Come on, let's find a way around. Well, I hope Joseph will find a way to stop. 
So, let's go then. Going in the complete opposite direction for now, but don't worry, we'll catch up with the boat later on. So, heading through, we're auto well, we're gonna pretty much be coming up to the seventh souvenir pretty much straight away now. Um, it's going to start, it's, it, well, it looks like a linear path, but it's going to start getting a bit confusing as we are in the woods and in the forest. So just head straight for now and eventually, just over this log here, is going to be one way we can go left and one way we can go right. This is where we can go right now, so just click next to the rocks, go right into this area here with a little chest. Yeah, and a couple of items in here to grab. And then if we go left and then straight up, what you're gonna what you're gonna hear and see is, <laughs> basically, you're gonna watch some d uh, deer porn. That's what's happening. Even though rats are all around, everyone's dying mercilessly and stuff like that. Well, there's no way <laughs> you can't get in the way of all deer banging, can you? Nature won't change its ways. The chaos we face is part of it, somehow. Except they are courting. While we are trying not to die. True. Incredibly, Amicia and Lucas decided to keep watching the deer porn, which, uh, sounds a bit weird, that, but that's okay. So, heading up, so we head sort of to the right, backwards, and to the right where we came up, we can actually just jump down instead of going through the other way. Um, but yeah, that is souvenir 7 out of 21. So, head, and i tell you what I am looking for. Just in front of us is going to be a sort of pile of rocks. There it is, the piece is just on the floor there can be kind of uh, easy to get confused with this, but it's right in between the rocks. Then we can head straight and go through the little gap. Here's the river. There they are. Goodness. It's even worse from above. That smell, it... What's that? No, no, no. What the hell? It's them! <laughs> and of course, because you can never just go through one level where something's not trying to eat your ass or kill you. Not in the good way in both either. So, more rats to contend with. No enemies just yet, but there are a bunch, another bunch of rats to contend with. So we're gonna need to uh, put the hand in the, in the fire, throw it over, job done. That'll get rid of these first sets. So go straight on, obviously, and climb up. Oh, see, scary stuff. There is a chest on the right, which again, you can grab as well. That's all it is, that's all I keep saying in this bloody game is there's a chest on the right, there's a chest on the left, grab some stuff, tools, pieces, try not to die. Anyway, another chest there if you need it as well. Making sure, of course, everything's topped up. Well, you put Lucas in charge of that, so obviously if you haven't done that, make sure that Lucas is in charge of that. And then we can throw the fire over to the big, big Nito. Then we can put a bit of tar on it as well to light that bad biatch up. Oh yeah. Right, head over to the next set of steps. The obviously try not to get too far into the rats. Um grab this next uh, chest as well, full of delicious booze and some pieces. I'll just take the booze to be honest. Right, now we are going to have to start doing this. So press and just hold the Y button and then it's going to come all the way around the bag of fiery things. And Hugo doesn't believe in it anymore. Yes. I can understand why he'd feel that way. I'm there! Hold it there! I am! Here I come! Let's keep moving! Amicia! We're on our way, Hugo! Lucas incredibly using his stupid face here over there to um, get across. So obviously it's on a mechanism, so it's going to swing all the way back around, which is fine. So what we need to do is get Lucas to interact with that. Again, left bumper and then the Y button until it swings all the way back around. Make it sh again, just make sure everything's topped up. I always do. Always worth doing, because you don't want to get into a situation where you've got to rush something, and then uh, only to realize you've got nout prepared. So, as soon as it hits all the way over to the left here, give it a throw, now we're going to have to walk with it. So, head underneath it, and then what we can do is tell Lucas to stop it, and then walk with it. So, you'll have to look at him, pretty much. 
tell him to go, and then we can just go along with it. So, to the right, straight up, I almost get eaten there. I almost get eaten here as well. Uh, but he does give us a thing. A pyromaniac's dream, apparently. Because it is called a pyrite. Which stands for pyromaniac's dream. Uh, basically like one of those sparkling, crackling fireworks you get on Halloween you give to the kids. So they don't burn their wee little fingers off, you know. Anyway. So, <laughs> over to this next bit there. Again, grabbing a few items once more. <laughs> no problem. Why is Lucas hiding all these things from us until we need it? Tell me all now. Noved? Uh, just joking. Uh, right, so, we got once again, we're just going to get this next one. Eventually, when I when I hold the Y button, we are going to get this next hanging ting all the way around. Right, so this is one we're going to have to run with it. So make sure that you've got the fire and the hand ready. As soon as you let go with the B button, throw it. That's going to light it up lovely. And now you can just go along with it until, obviously, until we are able to climb up. Which is going to be right in front of us now. There it is. Made it! Right, grab a stick from directly in front of you. I'm going to toss that over to old Lucas the Pucahontas. There he is. Oh. You get that, mate. Then we're just going to go up, grab a chest here from the right. Um, and we are actually going to be coming up to souvenir number eight as well in just a little bit. But for now, grab the bag, smash the bag open as well, drop down, immediately go to the left. And we're going to grab this chest. But you need to be quick here because you need to turn around and then light the bag on fire again. So as soon as you grab everything, turn directly around, put it on fire again. And then we can go on to the next platform. See? I wouldn't lie to you. I've only done it twice so far. <laughs> right. So what we can do now is there is a piece of uh, piece of pieces on the wall. Um, but we are going to use the rock sling to have a look over the other side. That will get Lucas down. If you need to, uh, light it on fire again. Which we did actually just need to. So almost messed that one up there. So make sure to light it on fire there. Lucas is up the other side. We've got some pyrite, sorry, not pieces. And job done. So you can drop down. There is a workbench there if you need it. Uh, we're just heading down to the end here to grab some more pieces. And there's a stick as well. But if you need it, again, you can have a look at the workbench if you just need a two-minute little rest. So we should, like I said, we've got enough tools now. As I'll say for cheese method, we've got enough tools, we've got enough pieces. But we're going to get the crossbow first and do it in chapter six. So for now, let's go for the next souvenir. Here it is. So have a look at the ladder. And we're going to smash it down. And then we're going to climb up. That's what you'd normally do with ladders. Unless you sort of just, I don't know, chew on it for a while. Uh, climb up again. There is another, I think there's another item or two up here to grab as well. So, uh, well, it's very conveniently placed just for someone who's on an adventure, huh? So if we go down, there is a knife if you need it. Obviously, if you've been upgrading your instruments or something as well, or your gear, and you can carry more knives if you want, but there is a knife if you want it in preparation for the next secret chest. If you've been following along and you haven't stabbed any enemies, you wouldn't need that knife. But anyway, talk to Lucas, and this is the souvenir. Well, you can shout pretty loudly when you want to. Depends on what's trying to kill me. So, together? Yes. On one, two, three. Wait for it. Amicia! Lucas! He's seen us. Let's go. So this one is called Hugo, when it should have actually been called Rat Boy. No offense, he's only a little kid. I feel bad for calling a little kid Rat Boy. Uh, maybe we'll just stick with Hugo, just in case uh, people hate me for calling a kid Rat Boy. So <laughs> anyway, uh, for whatever reason, I thought my game had crashed here. So hopefully this won't happen to you. But for about five or six seconds, um, I did, uh, the old pantaloons went a bit squishy for a sec. So I thought it was going to crash. But it didn't. And we're all good. We can drop down, like I said, we're going to grab the stick now. There's the workbench, which we don't obviously need. The fire here on the left. And then what we're going to do, as soon as you light it, we're going to start heading down the stairs and then heading to the left. Towards the next fire. 
pretty much that's all we got to do for now. So it's all good. So head to the left as soon as we get down. And you should have plenty of fire. Plenty of fire in your belly. There we go. Delicious. And you don't actually have to do anything. We can just go straight ahead now. Make it back. I told him as much. And still, it's good to see you both safe. Sorry to interrupt, but we should move on. And there's a damn chain blocking us. We'll take care of it. Lucas, can you handle it? Very well. It controls a ferry. We don't need a ferry. We need that chain loose. There's nothing on our side. So you're thinking this is a kind of an easy chapter, nice and chilled. It's easy, but it's it's. It does still take about half hour or so to do this one. So, uh, going back on ourselves there, climbing underneath, we're going to get Lucas to pull the cart away for us. Of course. Remember, obviously, left bumper and Y. I'll never say that again. I'll just tell you what to do. And then we can climb straight under, straight into the pure... This is like the butcher's face again. There's a dead body just chilling right there. Deadly. Um, yeah, this is like the butcher's bit. Hello, just a floating head. There's a dead guy with his hand the wrong way round. Hmm. Damn. So obviously all we're heading then is straight. Having a little look at the uh, bits of protein that the flies are feasting on. And honestly, Amicia, you actually don't have to say sorry. I don't think he's going to hear you, to be honest. And I don't think he's going to feel you dragging him out. So uh, he'd probably be happy up in his heavenly ghost state. So no need to apologize. Right. So what's going to happen then, um, after we've done this bit, we're going to see a, a platform floating towards us. There it is now. So just wait here for just a sec. Lovely jabbly. Right, jump on, and then when you can, tell Lucas to stop, and that'll flap you over to the other side. It won't flap you over, but you know, you know what I mean. You'll get to the other side. Tell me when you're ready. You can let go now. No. I'm sorry, Amicia. I'm scared. Don't be. It's not your fault. You'll be all right in Marseille, Hugo. I don't want to go to the Order! Magister Vaudin was not a nice man, I know. But this will be different. His island, Mother! Not now, Amicia. Fine. Right, so a couple of things over here. Chests, there's another knife, there's a secret chest and a flower as well. So as we get over, we're gonna head straight down. And grab this chest, interact with this chest first. There we go, for a bit of alcohol and a bit of sulfur. Use your normal rock G string to get rid of the bell from underneath here. There should be a little lock. And die to the yum. And that is not yum. That was just damn. So, no, we're not hurt. So what we're going to do when we get out of this area, we can walk forward and then head to the left. You're going to see like a little uh, a bunch of rocks, kind of like a rocky beach. There it is. So to the left, lovely. And again, in front of us, what you're going to see is a rock, is a cart full of rocks to the left of us. Yeah, cheers, mate. So there is the cart there on the left. So we're just going to go past that. We're actually going for the next secret chest now. So head through the gap. The gap in the teeth. Jump up. And this is where the secret chest is. Calm down. Focus. What do we have here? All right, let's get to work. Top bananas, brother. Right. Let's get out of here now. Again, you can have a look around. You can have a look at the skills as well. See how far and close you're getting until the next one. Otherwise, we can just drop straight back down from the way we came. And to crack on with finishing this chapter. We've got about 10 minutes or so left of the chapter. So go around where the carts were and go underneath this time. And the only thing that is on the other side is a yet another chest. And that's all I'm saying throughout the entirety of the game here is there's another chest there, there's another chest. You're probably already getting sick of my voice. 
Well, don't worry, you've only got about, I don't know, like seven hours or something left, probably. <laughs> Eight hours? Yay. Yeah, you'd be right. Right, so heading back out there after you've got everything from there, there's another knife that we're going to grab now. So straight in front of us, you can see like this sort of pile of logs. There is the knife sticking out, so make sure to grab that one. And you know, again, you should always have an, a knife in your inventory. Grab this next chest as well. A couple more things in here. And keep going straight. We're going to be grabbing the fourth out of five flowers. So the flowers are coming basically at us ticking fast. Ticking faster. Nice and ticking fast and ticking fast. Right, the flower. If we grab our G-string rock, I'm calling it a G-string rock now. Have a look at the top left as much as you can. That will get uh, the walkway down. Go straight underneath, now we can start climbing up. Oh, wait, in fact, we've got to grab the cart first. So, yeah, so grab the cart first. For whatever particular reason, I'm having, I was having mega problems with this. So we need to grab it around and then push it exactly to, to our right. Uh, but for some reason, I don't even know what I was doing. So just get, get, get the cart all lined up so you can climb on it. Told you we'd get there eventually. Uh, before heading up, go turn directly around, and there's going to be another piece for us to pick up. Not on this side of the barrels, but the right side of the barrels. There it is. So that was just another few pieces for us to grab. Now we can begin to climb up the long descent up. So climb, climb, climb. Now basically, all we're doing is going straight, go to the left at the end, climb up, and then at the very end, that is where the fourth flower is. Look at you, stranded here. I'm sorry I'm gonna need you. Anything that can cheer him up. Let's finish this. Right, now we drop down, we've just got one more puzzle after we grab the anumanamanamani flower. Anumanamanam, anumanamanam, nom 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 Why? So push it, push it, keep pushing it, and we basically keep pushing in it straight for the time being. Like I said, we've got this one little more puzzle to do before we can start killing some dudes and running away as well. So climb up, uh, head around. And we can just drop down onto the other side. And then right here. Oh, look. we got little Hugo Boss. we got little dear rat boy. I'll be there in a minute, man. Jesus. Oh, I've got to do everything for you suckers. Right, push this over to the other side, as you can see. And then what we got to do is go across to the other side. So smash open, as you can see in the gap there, there was a, a little easier way for us to get through rather than climbing back up and doing all that pain in the butt. A uh, little gap again for us to crawl through. Then we can go ahead and grab the cart. So if you turn back around on yourself, grab the part cart and just push it onto the um, push it onto the platform and then go to the other side and just swing it back around. Very, very simple. You must be enjoying this. I know you are. That should work. Let's go. Ah, good. Find an island. Ugh, how are you going to do that? Maybe ask Joseph. Discreetly. Okay, now what seems like forever, I think it seemed like forever, we're actually finishing now. So we can just drag it behind us, turn it around. Come in. Come on, Amicia, you goddamn right head. Oosh. Oh, yeah, look at that. There it is. So, you're going to climb up, and then cutscene's going to start, and then we are going to be sailing along with the crossbow, and we're going to start actually killing people. What 
We're not actually sailing just yet, but we are going to kill some people. So, immediately what we're going to do, you'll be behind the crossbow immediately. Press the left trigger to aim and shoot it at the first enemy there with Lucas. And then shoot it at the second enemy as well. So that's job done. Now what's going to happen is... You think he's going to jump straight into rats? No, 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 no. So we're only able to put the Ignifier on it. Or the Ignifier or, or Igniter. Ignifer, sorry, that's what it's been called. So now we can put the Ignifer on it. So right bumper, go with the Ignifer. And then put one in each of the three boxes. So the one straight in front of us, just to the right as well. And the one, again, just slightly off to the left of that. If he's not coming down, you can, as you can see, there's a, still a few more rats in the way. Don't worry about ammo, you've got plenty of it. So just make sure to stick it in a box. And then he can pop on by. But we're not quite done with this. So this um, area is, obviously it's on rails because we're going on boats. Joseph's, Joseph's going and we are shooting. So obviously invincibility mode is fine, but I'm going to tell you exactly where they are. So the first two are going to appear directly in front of us. So just left bump, uh, left, left trigger and then right trigger to kill him dead. The next couple are going to appear on the left hand side. Well, after we crashed the boat a couple of times as well, because that's what you always do. So the next two there are on the left. So there they are. Make sure to kill this broski and that broski. Uh, another two are going to appear on the left, there it is, and then on the right hand side, there we go, so have a look on the right, there's two, ah, damn, okay, straight in front of us, basically one again on the right hand side, um, but they're going to block the way, so what you need to do is get your Ignifer out, so press the right bumper, get your Ignifer out, and then shoot the boat that is in front of us, that basically, it's all covered in tiles, so you just need to wait for a few seconds, <gasps> few more dudes to kill, and again, Amicia's getting her strong, you know, her strong I'm going out all the weekend voice on. And when those three are dead and the path is clear, that's all good. Now we can start shooting some fire barrels. So on the right hand side, top right hand corner, we can now start shooting some barrels, which makes your life just a touch easier. It'll be some on the left as well. So there's another guy on the left. And then on the right hand side again, that you can find some barrels to destroy with your... Again, obviously, making sure that you've got your igniter, your ignifer. Another guy on the left there. And then, then there's going to be basically a few straight in front of us on the right-hand side again. Another couple. Blow them dead, buddy. Blow them dead. And I will give you eight pounds. And straight in front of us on top of the bridge is going to be another bunch of people. But again, you can just burn them dead as well. So slap them down, buddy. And then we've just got... One more little thing to do, and that is for killing a bunch of dudes. We're out of the gorge. Current's getting stronger. Focus on the bar and leave them to me. You're doing good, lady. That crossbow was made for you. No! What's going on? Joseph's dead. Get back inside. God. Damn it, Joseph. Still not as uh, depressing as Roderick's death from the first game. Uh, spoilers, by the way. So, of course, this is... I mean, we're in invincible mode, which is fine. Uh, so, what we're doing is just killing a bunch of people for the time being. There is a knife stuck in here. So, you can use the knife to stab an enemy if you so wish, which I end up doing. But make sure to come, come back and grab this knife a little bit later on. But for now, kill everyone. Now, what you're supposed to do with this guy, there is a bottle of oil. You're supposed to lure him into the bottle of oil that is behind him, or the bottle of tar. Shoot the tar, and then um, stick him with fire. I honestly don't get the difference between throwing your own tar and oil at him. It doesn't seem to make too much of a difference. But that's what you're supposed to do with this guy. So, you can just see behind him the bottle of tar. So, shoot that, and then hit him with the igniter hand. Um, otherwise, you're just wasting precious ammo like I'm doing right here. So that's, but that is how you kill that guy. Or you can kill him with a crossbow as well if you want to. They will obviously kill him dead. I ended up, of course, using the knife very stupidly, but luckily there is, as I said, the one right in the tree trunk here. So if you do end up using the knife at any point at all, make sure to come back and grab that knife. And if you end up using any more crossbow ammo, there is another bolt in there as well. Oh, square in the nards. Jesus Christ, that. My own nuts just went inside himself then. Nice. Yes, come 
see what happens. So there was a little bag full of pieces somewhere, but uh, I do apologize, I do forget where they were, but that's fine, it's no worries, uh, but there is one around that area before climbing up here. What are we going to do now? Um, big broski, Arno the pig, as uh, Amicia hilariously calls him, is going to start chasing us. So now we're going to press the A button to jump over as well as running. So keep sprinting, keep sprinting, we're going to need to press the Y button in just a bit now. So press the Y button to get through, and now we're going to start going up. To be fair, he can sprint with a lot of armor on him. I'll give him that. So just keep sprinting, press the A button and jump over again, and slide down, lovely. Excuse me. Keep moving. Now, to be fair, he does actually have a point. It is only fair. You kill about, you know, 100 of my men, it's only fair to be. Kill or be killed, I think that's actually fair from Arno the Pig. Um, there, but they, you know, you make you make that what you wish. So keep going straight for the time being. Anyway, we're going to get to a point where we're going to have to start doing a little bit of sneaking. Whoop! Go to the left. <laughs> Sorry, he just appears out of nowhere like the pig that he is. Apparently, head through into this little cave area. Drop down. Bury yourself. Yeah, no, I will give him. I will give him that. So we're gonna we're gonna go underneath this little uh, cave area, but there's gonna be another two guards, little two guys that are gonna start coming. So we're not gonna rush out straight away as we head through the right. So we're not gonna rush out. We are going to have to crawl. There are two guys, of course. If you're on invincible mode, you can literally just run past them, head to the right, and then job done. Um, but obviously, I'm well. You know why I'm playing it? Playing it the way it was meant to be played. Just I can't die. <laughs> So there are the two guys anyway, so as soon as the one sort of heads to the left and out of view, that's pretty much means he's all good and he's looking in the wrong, wrong, uh, the other direction. Somehow, somehow, they must have gone right, just check the two deaf guards down there, she's not going to go down there because they can't hear, they couldn't hear us for some reason, wading through the water, but what do I know? Uh, so keep sprinting, we are almost to the end now, keep going up to the right. Climb up. Now, there's going to be an edit, but you need to go to the right here, because you can't go straight. So go to the right. So I do apologize. A little bit of an edit again. And when we drop down, this is now the end of the chapter. And now we're on to chapter six. Leaving all behind. Slipnuts now. I'm playing. I'll give you a game. So then, as is the deal with every chapter so far, we're chilled, we're having a nice time, we're getting a nice bit of tannage going on here, Jack Tan and Juicy, although pr pretty much nobody could get Juicy in the 1800s, only the rats could during the plague, apparently, uh, so we're just looking nice and tanned, slightly jacked as well, since Amicia and Hugo are absolute bosses now, 
Or, <laughs> well, Hugo's about to be a lot more bossish. So we're just going down this linear path, and for now, after this bit of conversation, we're just heading towards the big tree in front of us. And if you can't see the tree, go to your doctors, because you, you're going blind. Damn. Hugo. Do they know how to swim? They'll be fine. Promise? Yes. Wait, you see that tree? I'm sure I can reach it faster than you. Now? Why? Because you're a little chicken. I'm not. You are. <laughs> Show me then. Three, two, one. Hey! <laughs> you're going to be a chicken! <laughs> oh, no, don't stop bleeding again. I'm winning! <laughs> <sighs> It'll pass. Now, it's never funny to laugh at a kid who's just fallen, but it is absolutely usually hilarious. <laughs> and it just reminds me of Trevor falling and then losing his crap from GTA series. But yes, never laugh at a falling kid, but it is actually hilarious. So you can afford a little chuckle to yourself sometimes. <laughs> right, this is the first out of seven feathers that we are needing to collect as well. This one is pretty much unmissable, so nay worries about that. In the meantime, I'll make you a bird. Then when the good times are had by all, now looking from, from where we're standing from the tree, look to the left and you can see sort of the main little dirt path, the uh, bricks, the little wall on the left hand side, that's where we're heading, we're heading into the sort of left, left hand side um, part of flowers right here, so uh, have a look in the environment here, passing a little tree on our left, a couple of little rocks to our right, and the reason we're doing this is uh, just for another couple of pieces. So right where this cart is, right tucked away, can be very easily missed, but there's another couple of pieces for us to look at. Um, nothing else of note here. So I'm just going up to this wall for absolutely no reason. So all we're doing is basically heading straight forward for the time being. So still remaining on the grass, but just walking forward. Oh, you hear that? What is it? Chance. It sounds like a mass. There's a church here? We'll see. What is that? A market! No, we're too far from a city. But the chants are coming from there. Maybe they know about the island. Yes. We're going to ask. Hello. Can I do something for you? Hello. Yes. We're trying to find our way. Why are people singing? Oh. Because it's mass time. We're on a pilgrimage. So we pray for the success of our journey. Oh, you're on your way to Rome. Exactly. And you, where are you heading? To an island. We don't know much about it. Hmm. Our leader, Perrault, he knows the region well. He'll help you. You'll find him near the ruins. He's the one leading the mass. Ah, uh, yeah, please let us in. We, uh, we love Jeebus and all that stuff. Praise be to the man upstairs. Uh, he is Lord, 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 Lord. Apparently that was good enough to let us in. So good singing there from Mr. Mrs. Welsh, Amicia Hunter. <laughs> nah, they're all good. You can't beat nice-hearted people, can you? You know, the real, you know, the really religious nut jobs who, you know, sacrifice anyone they want because they caught, caught the masturbating or something. That's a bit much. But anyway, head, start heading to the left here. You can see this guy up against a tree. He's going to say, hello. And we're going to say, Hello. Uh, basically, at the end of here is going to be a swing, and this is going to be souvenir number 9 out of 21. And honestly, the less said about <laughs> religion is probably going to be better for, for me, especially. So let's just leave it there. Nice, have a nice little swing, and then we can go back to the nice, kind-hearted people. But what I will say is, it costs nothing to be nice. So, you know, hashtag be kind and all that. Don't argue with random strangers on Facebook, because that's a stupid. Mm. Can we have a swing in our next home? We'll find one with trees around it. Oh, yes! Apple trees! Hey, I've flown enough, I think. Should we go back? <laughs> yes. Well... Thank you. It was soothing. Can't wait to have our own. 
Ireland first, home next. Will we see the Pope in Rome? <laughs> Maybe, if we're lucky. But there will be thousands and thousands of people there. Hello. Oh, hello. Hello. There's our mass. Is it that Pedro at the back? Shh. Yes. You'll see him after it's finished. Oh, sorry. We'll wait here. Thank you. My lord, I draw nearer to you. Protect these humble pilgrims on their holy journey as they seek mercy in these times of darkness. Now let's just take a little look at Amicia and Hugo. Are we bored or are we taking it all in? in? No, we're looking a little bit bored. Right, so thankfully we came right at the very end. Uh, so obviously just go straight to the end here. Talk to Master Puvard. Or, uh, I've already forgotten his name, sorry. It is half three in the morning here while I'm recording, so... Oh, hello. And welcome. You're new here. So as is the norm with um, this game so far, we can have a nice little relaxo rancho and then the soldiers are going to come looking for us. God damn it. So there's nothing else to do. Um, all we're going to do is follow Master Puviard right now, just for a little bit. We're going to eventually end up hiding under a cart, follow him, and then we'll be on the run again. Man, it must be knackering. You need a Snickers. Well, I hope you'll make amends. I'm trying. We're all judged, eventually. Slowly, there's more of them. Two children, a girl and a small boy. I'm not sure. Th there's so many of us now. Then think. Hey, be careful. Stay back. No problem. Hide under that car before they see you. I'll handle them. I know. Shh. Excuse me. What do you want? Have you checked that group over there? Mm. Some of them joined us recently. Not that they really look like your fugitives, but who knows? It's better than nothing. Let's go and see. You heard him. Be on guard and keep your eyes open. Good idea. Do we go now, Amicia? Not yet. Wait, pay signal. <laughs> hey, you! <laughs> me? How long have you been with this procession? The way's clear. Come. Calmly. Let's go. Oh, I do hope the soldiers leave all these guys alone. But as soon as we can, we are going to hop the fence. We're going to start trying to heading towards the sea. So, we are now going to make a break for it. Uh, hopefully, like I said, the soldiers leave them alone. They are, they are decent people. Leave them alone! You can eat one of the horses if you want. Tesco used to do that years ago, so uh, I see a difference. So just keep heading forward, uh, they are going to find us eventually, and an arrow is nearly going to slap a square in the nugget, there it is. Um, as soon as we try and get under here, Amicia once again is going to be just badass, kick a dude square in the face, and roll down. Oh, but she will bump her head on the way down, so, uh, eek, bit of pain there. Amicia! Uh, uh, my head! You must leave! Yes, yes. I'm dizzy. Your hand. You're bleeding again. I'm telling you, the stuff we're doing to protect our brother... Isn't that supposed to be a mother's job? Not saying I wouldn't protect my younger brother like this if I had one, but... Uh, I mean, he seems a lot of effort. A lot of effort. Just... Just control all the rats and have them kill everyone. Job done. Right, we are now coming up to the cheesy cheese method of upgrading all the upgrades. Um, so there's a workbench to our right. When we go left here, we're just going to be going up at the very end. We're coming up to another chest. If you want um, to grab all the items. Another bunch of items to grab here. So obviously what we are going to do, we're going to do the cheese method. Obviously, if you uh, keep doing the cheese method and you don't come back to the chest, that's what I'm trying to say, you don't come back to the chest, you'll just miss out on a sulfur and a resin and stuff. So... Uh, not, not really much to miss out on, but that's fine. Uh, but just know, every time you restart the section on this little bit, 
you if you don't get that chest you won't miss out that's not you'll miss out so right here's the workbench then so what we have to do now by now we should definitely have all five upgrades plus at least six tools and 175 pieces that's it so what we're going to do we are going to upgrade whatever it is that you want i'm just going from top to bottom just because so you upgrade the first one upgrade the second one and then upgrade the third one but do not back out as soon as the achievement unlocks, just press the start button and restart the section. So if you back out, the game will save and you will uh, pretty much miss out and you'll have to try again. And you'll have to do them a little bit later on. So as soon as you get the achievement, just restart the section. You will start pretty much just at the top of the hill where we started. And then you can just go ahead and do the rest of the achievements. What I will say is I made a bit of a boo-boo. Um... Try, if you can, and leave the gears, the gear upgrades for last. Because if you do the gear upgrades for last, that means you'll have all three upgraded, which will enable you to carry more knives. So I accidentally done it with instruments. I mean, I could have restarted it and then just took the gears, done the gears myself. But, uh, well, that would have taken a little bit more time in the video, etc. Uh, so, yeah, leave the gears, gear upgrades for last. That will enable you to carry more knives, and then you don't have to worry about uh, potentially missing out on any secret chests. Again, do not worry, because there will always be a knife before we get to the next secret chest. One or two secret, uh, knives before we get to the secret, another secret chest. So, if you do what I do and you don't do the gear upgrades now, honestly, that's absolutely fine. There will always be more than enough knives before we get to a secret chest. So just keep slamming through until you've got all five achievements unlocked, and then we can move on. Much better. Just what I needed. at this point i knew i flubbed up so that is all five instruments done like i said hopefully um the developers leave this in the game um you know if they don't then it'll just be a case of having to start a new game plus if you don't manage to get enough materials etc later on uh, but hopefully they do leave it in because that is slicey so into this little cave go to the right here and then what we're going to do we're going to head up well, we're going to get H uh, Hugo Boss to interact with uh, dear, Oh dear, rat boy. He's going to open up a door for us. We're going to go up just for another treasure chest with some yummy, yummy goods in it. Now, the one thing about the tools is... So if, so what I highly recommend is going for either the gears, preferably the gears, or the instruments. Because, like I said earlier, with the instruments, if you get all three upgrades, you don't actually have to have any tools. So you don't have to worry about any tools. I'll still show, I'll still show you where they are. Or where a lot are in the game. Um, just in case, you know, you need them for any particular reason. You know, I'm that kind of guy. And also, a little bit of misinformation that I did say earlier. Um, I thought you could only get the pots and recycle to get more pieces on normal difficulty. 
my bad, I <laughs> did forget. All you have to do is upgrade your first instrument, and then that's how you recycle pots, etc. That's how you get a couple more pieces. So, uh, do apologize about that little bit of misinformation. But anyway, we're all good. You forgive me? Is guide still good? Oh, thank God for that. So, head to the left. There is another little bit of chest right here. Again, obviously, as I always say, make sure everything's topped up, stocked up, beefed up in the teeth. Whatever that means. And then we can just carry on. Now, the next couple of sections would normally require some stealth. Now, again, the best thing about this game, I say, is the fact that you don't have to do specific just stealth on certain parts. You can just run straight through, or you can just kill a bunch of guys. There's a bunch more options than just that. For these next couple of parts, I'm basically just going to run straight through. Um, to do it completely stealthily, is kind of tricky on this part so obviously it's up to you you know obviously if you are playing with invincibility mode off you will know that if you try running past one they'll just knock the guards will knock you down but you can just run straight past them again um, when you get back up so obviously keep that one in mind as well just in case you haven't been knocked down unless you've been that good so far um, so what you what we end up doing here or what I end up doing is we're going to go slightly to the right. We're going to distract one of the guards as soon as the guard to the left is looking away. And then when this one guard comes over, the exit is basically straight in front of us. You can probably see a door just in the distance. There. So there's that guard. Now, I did start making a break for it, and then this guard decided to appear. And then I decided, you know what? You're going to shove your ass where the sun don't shine, buddy. I'm just going to run straight past him. So that's what we do. So run straight past and just go straight through the door. The guards cannot hurt you, which is all good. Which is why I end up just running straight past them. A lot of the times it's easier to do that rather than be stuck for ages in a little stealthy part. Didn't try banging the door. You can't get through me because I, I locked it. The power of locks. And it'll be the same then with this section. So there is a guard to the left. Remember to use Hugo's power by holding down the... Uh, holding down on the d-pad to see where all the enemies are always remember that one so the guard will catch us for some reason he kept catching me there so i decided once again to make a break for it you're pretty much just going straight once again oh that would have pretty much hurt and then we can just go straight for the trap door and again they cannot hurt you at this part so don't worry about that um but yeah like i said a lot of the times if, if you're playing with invincibility mode off they will knock you down, but you can literally just get up and just run straight past them anyway. So, that's what I like about this game. A lot of choice you can do, whether you kill, fight, or simply just run past. That's my preferred option anyway. <laughs> run straight past. Now, once again, in this area, there is going to be another whole bunch of guards. As we will... And it's just basically going to be straight in front of us here, so there's no point running too much. So we're just going to wait. Again, hold down on the D-patch to see where any enemies are close to you. This feature comes megaly in handy. Uh, so head up and sort of to the right. Remember anything you walk past, now you can recycle, providing you got the first instrument. And you're not just playing on normal difficulty. Excuse me, I, I literally forgot about that information earlier, so my bad. Please don't hate me. Okay, thanks. Right, so there's going to be a guard on the left. He is seeing me, but you can hide behind this little rock. Even though he can clearly see two kids, a teenager and a kid, walk in. He's going, oh, I saw something. Mate, you got short-sighted or something. Anyway, wait until this guard starts going around to the left. If he sees you, he will start going around to the left. If he doesn't, he'll start walking off in the opposite direction. But we can just drop down and hide in this Theresa May field of wheat. We're just going to climb up now, but be careful, there is an archer to the left and above that will spot us. So, I again flubbed up here, I didn't take my time with it. The archer will see us, and now the enemies are basically known to our presence. So, just be aware of the archer. For some reason, I'm still sneaking. So, this is another part. Luckily, because it's more open wide, we can basically just make a run for it, since the guard is still chasing us and he is going to start coming up he will start following us so don't think he's just gonna forget about you and it was at this point i realized meh we might as well just run for it so now we would normally go right 
to progress the story, but we are just going to get another treasure pe uh, chest with a bunch of pieces and another tool in it. So go across, keep going up, and then sort of into this little hut area or something. Open up the chest. Now, hilariously, the guards may come behind you, but they won't actually hurt you. So they'll go, oh, no, you just finished taking all our stuff, and then I'll try and kill you. So run past this guy, you know, just in case if you have been caught. Go back, and then, of course, we go into the left this time. There is going to be another chest here as well, so if there's nobody behind you, well, you know, feel free. <laughs> Keep heading down. There is going to be another, there'd normally be another two enemies at this point here. And if you go left to progress the story, and you can go right here to get another treasure chest if you want. Uh, you know, I'm playing on invincibility mode, so we're a bit, I'm a bit cocky about it, to be honest. Uh, so just go straight, and then avoid this guy. Aha, you lose. And then just turn to the right here, and this is the end of it. So go straight through the door. The guards cannot now hurt you. And then we're all good. So... That's what I enjoyed about those couple of sections there. A couple of wide open areas that we could just run straight through. Again, if you do manage to get knocked down, like I said, the checkpoints are pretty good in this game if you end up dying anyway. So, we should have got a knife. So, again, you should have a knife on you for the secret chest in this room. I mean, surely someone's got to have food from bloody somewhere, eh? So, what we need to do then is crawl underneath first this little... Uh, uh, shelf thing whatever and then the secret chest is right here so again there's obviously going to be a couple of pieces and everything to look at and now you can d use the upgrades to if you, if the cheese method is still about of course and you've got all five achievements then you can you know uh, use the upgrades for whatever you want now for me of course i'm going to be going for all three gears since i did make the boo-boo um so obviously all my instruments are maxed out so I am going to be going for the gears, but of course you can do whatever you want. If you prefer a deadlier crossbow, more ammo, or more ammo in your sling, or alchemy, or whatever, it's completely up to you. Like I said, as long as the cheese method still works, and all the achievements have unlocked for you, you do what you want, buddy. Although it is your game, you can still do what you want regardless. You don't have to, you don't have to follow a lowly Welsh man. So after we get that secret chest, trust, we can now head out. And we can go past this wheel, down to the other door. Down, It's the other side of the room. There we go. Uh -huh. And let us get through. Now, a whole bunch of stuff's going to happen here. And this is where Hugo goes from, I don't want a juice box, I'm... <laughs> to, girl, I'm staying up. <laughs> Mom, I'm staying up till 10 p.m. And I'm having three juice boxes. Screw you. You just wait, you just watch what I mean now. What? No, no. They're coming! Amicia! No! Amicia! Wake up! Oh, I hear Amicia! You have to wake up! I saw that racket! With me! Oh no, soldiers! No, no! Amicia, wake up! Uh, rats! They're here too! No! They'll see us! What do I do? Ah! Amicia! So, now we can move the rats. So, with the right stick, you can sort of move them sort of left and right, and then obviously you're moving up with the left stick to go forward. This is how we're going to kill all of the guards. So, all of a sudden, this is what I mean, and he's going to get even more badass later, actually, is old uh, Hugo. So that's uh, three of them done. He starts getting real badass. And this is what I mean. He goes from, I'm scared of the juice box, to, Mom, I'm having three juice boxes. I'm staying up till 11 p.m. and I'm watching South Park. Screw you. And for some reason, my voice has dropped too. My balls are dropped, man. Right, this is what we're going to do again. Couple more cards. And that's the last time I'll talk about Hugo's venture from boy to boy man. No, I can't. Rest, I'll handle them. So, now we can do this again. So what we need to do is hold down on the D-pad. That'll highlight the rats. And then you need to aim at the rats with the right stick until you see, like, the little yellow, um, little yellow dot there in the middle of the screen. But you've actually got to aim it at the rats. There we go. And then you press the right trigger. 
Oh, that's how you create a bond, and that's why you're called Dear Rat Boy. So just go ahead, kill the rest of the guards right here. And when you're done, you can just press the D down the D-pad to stop it. Now remember that the rats will still eat you. So Hugo can't control them to not eat us. So we do still need to get through them. I need to. <clears throat> <sighs> Come on, let's leave. So Amicia, who was basically dead, is now somehow alive or something. Good stuff, that's what I like. These are my two favourite video game characters. So, grab the alcohol and the resin, have a look in the treasure chest as well for a couple more items. And again, upgrade what you can, make sure everything's fully beef stocked. Like a chicken stock, beef stock, hmm. Aye. Anyway, so get your hand ignifer out and throw that at the brazier. And then we're going to need to use some tar as well to clear the rest of the way. So get some hand tar out, stick that squat and the far. Squat and the far. And we can drop down, lovely. All right, good stuff. Right, uh, just nip straight through. Uh, there's nothing else here of any note for the time being. I right, get a hand ignifer out again. There should be a torch there on the right hand side. And then we can pick that up there using the Y button. So, remember that the rats can still eat you, so they're not your friends. They're still scum of the plague world. Go straight, and we can just grab a couple of pieces here that is just chilling out by this rock. Or this tar pit, or whatever you want to call it. And then we can just head back and then head straight up the stairs. I mean, if you were Hugo, you'd think, well, I'll just control him just to... Put them all into the sea or something, you know, kill them all off. But apparently we're not that good just yet. So remember the horde of rats up here? They're not our friends. They will still kill us, as I said. So what you can do, though, is just use it to go into the horde of rats and pick up every item that... Oh, god damn. They picked, <laughs> they picked the bones off that chicken quite quickly, didn't they? Jeemus. So that's what we're going to do. Just go through every little enemy, pick up every item before heading... Before putting our torch down and then heading through the door. Okay, it's souvenir 10 out of 21 time. We're gonna climb up the ladder. There is another workbench there if you need it, uh, just before climbing up the ladder. But we're not gonna bother with that. So we're gonna sort of turn back around on ourselves, go through the little crawl space, and I tell you what, Amicia is, a, <laughs> Amicia, is a, Amicia is a lot stronger than I am. One little wound and I'd be lying there like, ah, I'm dying. Right, here is the room with souvenir 10 out of 21. So before heading through the door, make sure to interact here with these headbands. Uh, I'm not sure, I think, oh no, you can miss it, you can miss it. Uh, so interact with it, that'll give us a new headband. We're going to look smoking, and that's going to be souvenir 10 out of 21. Sorry, it's over. Thank you. I hope it helps. So, we are going to be controlling some more rats in just a bit. So, for now, we're going to head basically through the left. There's no guards that can see you just yet. So, head into this little house on the left. Uh, interact with the treasure chest. I am going to unlock the alchemy achievement right here. But you may have got this before or you may get this a little bit. You pretty much can't miss this achievement anyway. It's literally just for crafting 100 uh, bits of alchemisties. Yeah. Crafting 100 ammunitions, that's what I was trying to say. Uh, so <laughs> head into the right, and on you can see another pot what we can pick up or recycle if you need it. So, what we're going to do now, we're going to head out the window and we're going to crawl. And now, this is very important. What you need to do is basically stay behind this um, piece of wood that we're behind now, and I'll tell you why. So, we need to extinguish this guy's flame first. <laughs> So extinguish with the slinger, with your slingshot, 
extinguish out his flame when he turns around, of course. But there is an archer that if we come out of our hiding, there is an archer that will see us. And I do make that mistake because I stay around here. Again, remember to hold down on the D-pad, control the rats, and now we can just go on a killing spree. So what I tend to do is go in this path. After killing the first guy, go back on yourself and go around because there's a couple of these guys that can see us as well. But make sure that you are hiding behind the wooden pallet because there's an archer that is currently looking at us and he will catch us. So just kill these guys sort of on the right hand side of the path because that is the main path that we're going to be going towards the exit. So you don't really want to waste your time going to any of these guys on the left. So realistically we're just heading with these guys on the right. There is a couple of guys that have seen us so the rats will automatically stop when we go to get attacked. So uh, yeah, just like I said, before you do this, make sure you're behind the wooden pallet. Again, no worries if not. If you really want to, you can just restart the section and just do this bit again. Um, because, you know, realistically, we want to try and kill as many guys as we can on that right-hand side path. The guy has seen us, so we're going to kill him. Which is bloody annoying, really. Oh, and if you can, try and kill him with a natural rock. Because you ain't going to extinguish his face off you. So yeah, again, a little bit of a boo-boo on my part there, but that's fine. Uh, we can't actually see the archer from here, but that's okay, because there's no other guards around. So we're pretty much golden nuggets. Right, we're going to be coming up to another knife as well, but we're going to need to be fast. So what we need to do is actually sprint, grab the knife, and run past, because there's a bunch of rats that will immediately kill us. So from here then, just go straight, but keep heading off into sort of the right hand side. And then the rats, you can probably hear the rats, there they are, just in that little pit there. They will always be in that little pit. We cannot control them at the minute. So what we're going to do, eventually, <laughs> I'm just uh, having a look at something i don't know what i'm looking at but the knife is directly in front of us it's on this little um it's already sticking in so make sure to run past grab the knife as quick as you can and then keep running up the uh wooden path here if you need to hide in some wheat there it is just in case there are any enemies about but if there's not like i said then you pretty much got a free run and that's exactly why i killed most of the guards on this right hand side path because this is the main path that we're taking to grab the knife to get some more treasure and to get to the exit so a couple of guys up here for me which is fine so what we're going to do then we are going to well we're not going to head in here because that door is locked so what we need to do is just quickly well quickly or slowly just head around to the back of the building again obviously making sure that there are no guards about if there are of course for you then you can deal with them However you like to deal with them so far, I do just want to extinguish this guy's flame. Sorry to <laughs> sorry to burst your bubble, sorry to light out the flame, but uh, we want you dead, bro. So of course the other guards are going to be like, oh no, who did that? What we're going to do is get our normal G-string out again. <laughs> Shows for everyone. Unlock the door, that's what I was trying to say. So shoot the door, unlock the door. Uh, just having a quick look to make sure there's nobody coming, which is not, of course, stay away from the horde of rats right there. And then we can head in and just go and grab the yummies and the goodies from the treasure chest. So, what we're going to do, there's a guard that's already seen us, so we're just going to go keep going straight, just make a big dart for the finish, but there is going to be a little mini boss, which I will tell you exactly how to beat him in mere, in literal seconds. So when we get through the door here, the mini boss is going to appear, now what he's going to do, make sure that you've got your hand tar ready, it's easier if you use it tar with the hand, so what he's going to do, he's going to slam through and make a big fiery flame around him. What you need to do, as soon as he does that, aim your hand tar directly at the fire on the floor. Okay, I was trying to actually aim for his um, mace thing himself, but I've tarred him up. Now, choose your normal G-string with the rock, go behind him, hit the armor, and he will actually flame to death, ending that section. So, very, very easy. If you don't manage to do that, what you still need to get rid of his armor, and then you can crossbow him to death. 
but there will be a couple more guards that will appear, so just keep that one in mind. But that's how you can beat the boss very, very easily. If not, like I said, you need to go behind him, hit his armor off, and then kill him with a crossbow. That is how you would normally do it. I actually, I actually done that boss accidentally, uh, which is always nice. So, um... The only thing we're doing here is just pretty much going in a linear path, straight line, killing all the guards. So any guards you see, go ahead, kill them dead, boy. And again, this is the Hugo that we all know and love that watches South Park and drinks 17 juice boxes in a night while peeing himself on the couch. Or something. Dude, you gotta learn to control that stuff, otherwise you just <laughs> do this all the time. Right, we need to sprint. Now, there is only, again, one linear path that we can take, and it's gonna be up the bunch of steps, and that's pretty much it. So just keep going in a straight line until we get to the end cliff where you're gonna put Hugo up, and that's pretty much it. And that's gonna be the end of the chapter. So on to chapter seven, Felons. I did it again. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I can make it. Oh, get ready. He says he'll bring us to the island. Yeah. What's happening, bro? Well, bloody hell, Aramisia can take a good battering, can she? Jesus Christ. Head wounds and head face wounds and every kind of wound. Uh, but, right, anyway, as is the usual with the beginning of each chapter, we're just going to go for Am's little stroll. The sea's right there. Hugo, it's important. Yeah. <sighs> Give me all your money. I hope you didn't tell him about you your dream. You will never catch me alive. Else. Hugo, come back. I don't want to play. And I don't talk to chickens. Oh, is it that hard for you to be nice, you little... Oh, at least you look better. Amicia, we're here. Hugo, you didn't answer. Let's go. Ah, it's too high. Jump. I'll catch you. Woo. Hey, careful. Thank you. Fine. Can't you wait for me? You're not right. Your sister feeds you well. I love eating. Hey, look down there. Oh, and yes, it was Arno who saved our life. Remember Arno the pig who was chasing us first? In, uh, well, in an earlier chapter? Yes, he's back, and he's happy to help. So, <laughs> that's nice. So, there are two knives in this level. One we're going to grab here. Hopefully, from the last chapter, you have got all of your gear upgraded, uh, like I told you to. Basically, if you've got all of your gear upgraded, we can grab two knives in this level, which will help us for the two chests in chapter 9. If you've only got one knife for chapter 9, you'll basically have to replay about half of chapter 9 to get the final secret chest with chapter select at the end of the game. Uh, so it doesn't matter if you miss it, but uh, we're just going for a little chest here just on the left hand side or a piece of a piece, of piece so a couple of pieces. But I will, uh, like I said, I'm going to show you where this first knife is, but the second knife I actually miss and I do forget, but I'll let you know when and where it is. If you've got your gear upgraded, um, which again, like I said, will help a little bit later on. Uh, but for now, what we're going to do is head into this hut here on the left to grab said knife. And when we jump through the window, we're also going to grab the next feather as well. So, smash open Am's fish. That'll be for a little bit later on for Arno, Arno the pig. 
and uh, d d d Welsh under the pig. Someone lives here. I don't think so. I would live here, right in front of the sea. It has to be a seabird. A seagull? Probably. And now it's yours. Here. I love seagulls. So there we are. That's feather two out of seven. And that is the black headed gull. A black. Doesn't matter if you're black or white. Seagulls get shot at night. Alright, so grab everything that you can in a chest again, and then we're going to head through. This is basically, it's it's a tale of two halves. This one, it's very rat plaguey, and then it gets into trying not to die by human plaguey. So if we head towards the end of the beach, what you're going to see, I thought there was uh, some pieces here, but there is actually no collectibles or anything of note in this little area. But what we're going to do, as you can see, just on the left, as I just seen, Arno's eventually going to start talking and go, ah... <laughs> and he gets all his Boris Johnson out, <laughs> this boat. So what we're going to do is have a look at this pole here. And this is going to be a, a, a very key mechanic now for the rest of the game. So press the Y button here. Now, <laughs> if I mean, if Amicia wants to, she's got a pretty bit of bad head damage. So just go ahead and hold Y to pull the rope towards you. And then eventually... That's going to happen and a bunch of rats are going to come steaming out. Jesus Christ, they are feeling this. They are feeling this, boy. <laughs> and it's funny when a big man craps his pants like that. So, hold down on the D-pad, of course. Control the rats with the right trigger and get them going. Obviously, we can't go outside, so we're going to get them smashing Alm Fischl. Which is a damn shame. Although Arno's beard is quite majestically fantastic. So now we can head in where the rats came from. So obviously you're going to have to crouch. That's, uh, I mean, Hugo can make it, but Amicia, you'd probably get more head injuries. So let's try not to do that. So just keep on heading through for now. Which means less soldiers. And we have the boy, no? Lord, I don't like this. Uh-oh. What? There are millions. Happy now? We're crossing anyway. Great. Don't be scared. Really? So, after picking up some treasure then, we are going to obviously top everything up as usual, and as you can see, there's a whole bunch of rats, and it's not going to go entirely well. So, what we're going to do, we're going to get a slingshot and throw a ig ignifer right uh, in front of us there for the torch. And then obviously to jump down, what we're going to need is the crossbow with an ignifer. Ignif. So, sniff the nif, shoot that, and then we can just drop down. Absolutely lovely. And of course, then what we're going to need is you to use a hand tar as well. And we're going to obviously throw that with the torch directly in front of us and run straight forward. Lovely job. Straight up. Sure. Over there. That's our path. So that's a shortcut to you. And yes, there's more stuff going on. So we're going to be grabbing a stick here. And again, we can recycle whatever it is that we can. And when we grab the stick, we can now jump down. Obviously, we're going to need this. So let's drop down. Let us press Y here by the torch. And then we're just going to go straight uh, to the right. So you can get the treasure chest there on the left if you want, but we're not going to bother. We're just going to keep going to the right. Don't worry about the rats. They can <laughs> they can ratatouille themselves. Straighten a bowl and straighten a stew. And there we are, right at this next torch. Delicious. Now look at that. Still not dead. How good are we? So we can just keep running down. Nice bit of light here. A little, little chest there on the right to grab some more things. Oh, a rat's nest. Jesus Christ. I tell you what, the devs really went overboard with the rats in this one, didn't they? So again, press and hold the Y button here to get this torch going. Or this brazier thing, this cart. 
That's what it's more commonly known as. And of course, what we're going to do is obviously use a hand or a sling, and we're going to light this bad boy up. Light it louder. Right, press the white button and keep pushing forward. Full of Amicia. Come on, even the boy's scared. You're sure about this? I'm sure there's no other way. The cart's light will cover us. I'm not ready for this. The stench. What is that thing? It makes my skin crawl. We're not going to go all the way forward though. If we look to our left, we're going to see a little chest with a tool and some other pieces inside. So if we take a look to our left, there's the gap, again, which can be very easily missed. Um, but we're going to let go. And then what we're going to do is throw a bonfire, some fire, the ignifer onto the fire. Stay to the left, of course, there were rats on the right. And then just go ahead, grab the tools, grab what you can. Looks like some oranges in there as well, which you can't beat. I mean, if you're constantly getting kicked in and shot at and head injuries and shoulder injuries, then, you know, sometimes it's good to just, you know, have a little piece of eatery. Um, but anyway, that's all there is in this area was just a tool so you can go to the cart and continue on the old push forward. I never like this. See, man, what are we worrying about? Everyone could survive a rat plague. Ha, I'd probably be the first to uh, die, to be honest, because I, I do something stupid, like accidentally turn my light off because I'm too tired, and then I get eaten to death. Yeah, that's me. So as we <laughs> stroll across anyway, uh, what's going to happen? We need to be quite quick here, actually. I was taking my time, but we need to quickly shoot an, a fiery ignifer slingshot where Arno is standing at the torch in front of us. So the rats don't obviously uh, chew his nutsacks off. <laughs> there's only one way. There's only one way that that's good. Do not recycle the rest of these bolts just yet. Of course, if you still only got uh, enough ammo to carry two bolts, we're obviously going to need to try and keep that topped up because uh, we're going to need to shoot one right now. So get your for crossbow out, and eventually we're going to say to Arno to grab some crystal stuff behind him. All right, fine. Amicia, look, the yellow crystals. Is that Miss Angus? Right, it's back. Oh no! Ah, finally! There are yellow crystals near you. Break one off and throw it to me. All right, I'm ready. On your go! Perfect! And now we can craft some odorous. So basically, it's some. Smelly, just some smelly stuff. It's um, basically fart in a jar, which we can use to lure the rats away. So that's exactly what we're going to do. So odorous then, so smelly fart in a jar. Throw it sort of, um, sort of just to the left bottom of Arno there. Basically just enough so that he's all distracted and then he can head off to the left. There he goes, he's all good. Now Arno is basically going to appear just to the left. There You could prob probably just have seen him there. Um... Um, I just went to see if there was any other collectibles around the other side. There's not. Again, do not recycle the bolts if you can. Because uh, it's always worth if you're going to use a bolt. Which we are going to do now. So there he is then, straight in the middle. So this time what we're going to do is use the crossbow as I said. Press left bumper and Y to get Arno on the steering wheel. On the uh, levers or whatever. And then of course this is where we're going to get the crossbow ready. Make sure that it is just a normal uh, fiery crossbow, sorry. The Ignifer crossbow, shoot the board, and then you can tell Arno to release. And there we go, that opens up the way, and that's why we can... Now we can recycle that one if you want for a cheeky little piecey piece, and job done. Arno finally scoops his way through, and then we're only going to grab... For the next part then, all we're doing now is we are going to shoot Arno's shield, and you're basically just going to keep going straight, and incredibly you're going to get out of the rat's nest. Ratata, raticate. Nah, no good. No good for match for Austrian Amicia. That's what I assume she'd sound like if she was Austrian. 
Yes. Yes. Feeling alive? I've been in a hundred battles. Looked death in the eye about as many times. But these little turds, they make me feel like a fresh recruit. Now you're trained. You're the patron saint of optimism. So, do you have any tricks left to keep us going? No. I don't see anything to shoot at. And I have nothing that would last long enough. No, no, we're getting out of here. Wait! I know! Shoot one of your flaming bolts at my shield. What? But it will burn! <laughs> Does it look like it cares? Ah! I felt that. Good. But when you're ready, quick, please! Let's go! Oh, we're doing this. Mark my words. Out of the way! Yes! Shoo! Look at the cowards crawling back to their holes! Ah! That's it! Fall back before the might of the wall! See? You're getting used to them. <laughs> yes! They're scared of you now! Bloody hell! My arm feels like it's aflame, though. But you're the wall! And this wall has taken enough blows, Shorty. My body is as battered as my shield. Ew! That's war for you. We're nearly there. Hold on a bit longer. Oh, I'll hold. That's what I do. All right, enough. Ah. Did you get burned? I wouldn't say that. Just a good sweat. Let's keep going. Get down then. Understood. Right then, since we're out of everybody's X's caves, we are now going to grab the next souvenir, which is going to be souvenir number 11 out of 21. Again, have a look at your, um, your upgrades if you want. Of course, like I said earlier, I went to go for the gear ones by accident and ended up going for the instruments, which is very silly of me. So, head to the left here, just past the boat. You can interact with the boat here if you want to grab another couple of pieces. But, more importantly, just to the right of the boat, we are going to be heading up. And then straight in front of us, we're going to interact with this piece of the boat for souvenir number 11. A lot, a lot of souvenirs people are leaving us. And you can guarantee it's not going to be a happy ending either. Look, its name was here. We can't read it. Yes, this hull has kissed a lot of sand and rocks on its travels. Imagine, to lose your name. Well, rename it. Can I? Sure. Why not? I think it deserves it. I name it... The Survivor. <laughs> it looks like one, yes. Well, nothing's totally dead till it's completely buried. Let it rest then. It's earned it. Come. I'm a survivor. I keep on running. That's number 11. Ten more to go, bruh. I thought that was pretty good. Anybody? No? Okay, well, I'll shut my damn mouth. So, we're going straight ahead and we're going for some more rat stuff now. Delicious! You can't beat rats when they're skewered and in your mouth. Not alive and plagueful of mind. So, what we're going to do then, we are going to grab... So, search straight in front of us so you can see the treasure chest with an already lit fire. So, we are going to use the Odorus. Hand or sling, it doesn't matter, but uh, just slam them over to the right-hand side. I'll give you a nice free passage there to go straight ahead to grab this little crystal for some more Odorus. Oh, Nadine Doris. She loves Boris Johnson, but he sucks bows. So grab the um, everything on here as well. Grab what you can. And then we're going to use the hand ignifer on the right-hand side, just to where the sticks were, and then one straight in front of us. Now, this is hay, so just be careful. So we're going to run, we're going to run straight to the back here to grab the chest, and then as soon as we grab that, we are going to turn around and, oh, apparently we're going to grab this next chest, uh, next crystal thing, and then we're going to put some more fire on the hay, incredibly, and then grab another two bit of crystal here on the left, or asparagus. That'll do, I'll call them crystals for to make life easier. So what we're going to do, we're going to use a tar now to uh, hit the bonfire with over there, and that'll light up the way. And we can just crack on. Grab a stick. Light, light that schneers up, man. 
And then we are going to this time head into the boat. There are rats chilling, killing, and... Well, they're not illing, they are just killing. Aha. Uh -huh. And there are enemies that are going to appear as well. So, what we're going to do, we can just leave this torch go there by pressing the B button to drop it. Pick up the torch. And now we can begin. So, we're going to go back on ourselves. And as we can see, we can uh, there's a couple of pieces that we can recycle, and there's another little chest for us to grab. Lots of very lovely, conveniently placed chests, which you can't really beat in video games. You can here beat it. All right, so keep heading forward for the time being. Then uh, what we're actually going to do is start heading up the boat. There are a couple of enemies we're going to uh, appear. So we put the torch down, and then we can climb up. And we're going to climb up again. Somewhere, there it is. <laughs> so just to the left of us there. So, for me, there was only one enemy here. Um, but there may just be two enemies for you. So, again, just be aware of that. So, <clears throat> and again, it all depends where the other guard is actually is actually going. If he's close enough and he heal and he will hear something, he'll obviously come and investigate. But if he's too far away, he won't come and investigate. So, you need to unsling that. That's going to get him uh, chowed down like... King dogs. And then we can just move back on ourselves. Again, depends on the enemy. You might have you might have to deal with a second enemy there as well. But if not, we'll deal with him in just a little bit. So into the next area. Grab a chest. I do actually end up going to just take a little look here to see if the enemy appeared, which he does not. So we can just basically keep going straight ahead now and off the boat. Like I said, there is going to be one guard directly across the way. Now, again, you sort of have to time it where he is in line, not with the light. So if we uh, get our extinguish out, well, we're going to uh, light up a fire first here on the floor. And apparently miss. Come on, Amicia, your head wound isn't that bad. Surely not. So we're going to use that one. And then we are going to use a crossbow here for the box. So hit the box. Of course, you can only hit it when there is some white on it. And that's good. Now we can drop down. Again, ignoring the guard. He's not going to bother us too much for the time being. We are going to open up this chest again. Somehow, I've got rats nibbling my little butt bags right there. But <laughs> apparently didn't feel... You can't feel the uh, nibble on your nuts, apparently. Again, well, that'll come in handy for us, wouldn't it? So, head over to the uh, bonfire here. Now, what I would do, where the guard is directly in front of us, now we will get your extinguish out. Because where he is at the minute is in the dark. So, we are going to extinguish where he is now. And that's going to get him dead. Because if he goes over to the left where the fire is, he, he will obviously see you because we need to go up that way. And you're going to be in for a bit of an awkward fight. So, open up this. Uh, open up the way there by dragging the box down. And it can be a bit tricky. All the rats are following you. So, you're obviously, what we're going to need to do then is... Um, we are going to use a bit of tar here. Tar the way up. Blind yourselves incredibly well. And, well, you just make a break for it. I do almost die. But again, if you've got one of those, you know, firework sparkler things that we've got from... Uh, what's his name? From old Lucas. Then it comes in handy. We're all good. Right, now we can climb up. Like I said, hopefully you actually get the guard in the dark so the rats have killed him completely dead. And then what we'll do then is we're going to use the Odorus. Slap that over to the left a little bit. Light. <laughs> Come on, baby, light my path, yeah. Come on, baby, light my fire. I really got to stop singing. People are going to hate me. And they're going to say, ah, stop talking, just talk about the guide instead. Which is fair enough. Right, use the tar anyway on the next <laughs> on the next flame. And that gets us the exit. Almost the exit, because we're actually going for a secret chest right now. So instead of heading straight, uh, as it looked like towards the exit, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, open up this box, or we're going to shoot a crossbow fire into the box. We are then going to... Uh, basically, we're going to start heading down and to the left. So you need to tar the way here to get rid of the rats. Head down to the left. There will be a couple of rats there, but they should disintegrate. They should just bagger off, which they did. 
So we're dropping down. And then what we're going to do, we're going to head to the right. We're going to go underneath, crouch down, and then this is where the secret chest is. So, like I said, we've got this secret chest from the knife that we found earlier. In the next section, which is called the combat according to Arno, it's going to be rainy, there's going to be guards about and stuff. But on the rocky, rainy beach, that is where the next knife is, and that is where I actually forget. But again, I'll let you know in just a bit. So... Grab everything that you can, recycle what you want, recycle what you can. Because all the vegans love it. Oh, love recycling. They love eating leg cheers. Uh, I'm just joking. I'm just, I'm just joking. There's some real, generally some real nice vegan stuff. And meat eaters are going to go, <laughs> that's preposterous. But I tell you what, vegans can make a pretty goddamn nice meal. Either that or it's just two bowls of chips in every restaurant. Um, so anyway, again, uh, you can obviously have a look, see what you can upgrade and what you can't upgrade. It's obviously whatever you do. Like I said, hopefully the cheese method is still about. So you don't have to worry about the achievements. And again, like I said, we'll have to, we'll have to uh, do a second playthrough anyway, or at least half a second playthrough to get these skills, every skill-related achievement. So it doesn't really matter too much. But once we've got the secret chest anyway, let's get out of here. So now what we're going to do is head to the right where this torch is and we're just going to head through to and we basically are now going to start the next section. The combat according to Arno and it's not it's not overly difficult or anything like that. Uh, in fact Arno comes in quite the mega handy for us. The hideout is just at the end. No, no, I'm scared of the waves. Oh come on, it's just seawater, look. She's right. But it's Hugo, please. deep. I'm tired. Just think of your island. But there are waves. We're almost there. Can't you argue later? Don't you start to. I'll take your hand. Enough. Scared. I'll carry you all the way and that's it. All right. Good. There you go. Lord. Is that high enough for you? Look, you're not even touching the water. Yes. Well... Every day can't be easy when you're that small. Depends on the day. Are you still scared? No. Now you know why they call me the wall. Because you're like a fort? Exactly. Nothing gets past me. And your shield looks like a wall too. How's it going back there? It's all fine. Now that he's calmed down. Ah, uh, don't worry about me, pig nose. I'm just a... Skinny girl just taking blows here, there, and everywhere, just drowning. It's no problem. <laughs> Screw you, pig face. I know you like to lead, but I'd better pass first. Well, be my guest. Yes, must be a heat storm. You see the light? It's the lighthouse from the fisherman's village. Sophia's boat is there. Are we really going to sail in this weather? Hey, who are you? Don't look. Here. Stay here. What are you doing? Hey, stop! Ah. Now we've done it. There's another one coming. So the combat does start then. Now, if there is a guy that is on his own, what you can do is obviously press the left bumper and the Y button and Arno will help us fight him. If there are sort of two, uh, you know, even two guards, it may get a little bit tricky for Arno. So just make sure that it is only one guard that he is able to kill. Otherwise, Big Bear Man will, uh, you know, succumb and he will die. Right, this is where the knife is. So on the beach to the right of us, which I don't even go on, on one of these small rocks by a boat, uh, the boat is completely broken, that is where one of the knives are. So on the, where, we, where I am right now, if you go right, go onto the beach. In fact, we are on, well, in fact, we are going onto the beach. So the boat that you can just see to the right of us, sticking out in the rock just, you know, very, very close to that is where the next knife is. 
So highly recommend grabbing that next knife so it makes it easier for you uh, for the secret chest for number nine because there are two secret chests in uh, level nine. But for now, what we're going to do, we are just going to... And if it, the easiest way I ended up killing these enemies in the end was basically uh, getting them into long grass and then using the hand ignifer and that will burn them dead. That just makes that just made it a bit easier if you don't have Arno to completely destroy and kill. So there was a chest right there. In fact, I don't know if I'm actually going to run straight past that knife. <laughs> we'll have a soon see. So yes, directly in front of us there, you can see the boat. And to the right is where, on a to the right, on a little rock is where the knife is. So I do run past it. In fact, it's right there. It's right to the right of us, right now. When I just killed the guy, I can you can see the knife. Oh, what a dopey son of a monkey nutbags. So you can clearly see the knife, so you can make sure to pick it up. There we go, so I won't say any more about it. Now it's as clear as day. But we can just go straight ahead. Oh man, the button prompt come up and everything then. Oh well, I guess I'll just go back to my life of stupidity. And making guides for a laugh. Right, so there are going to be a couple of guards here. Uh, the first guard will uh, succumb to his injuries with a big fat pebble to the face. Again, it depends on where the guard is. Now again, he may have heard him, so he may come down. Basically, he's to the left of us on the rocky outcrop up there. So he may come down and investigate and you can kill him. But if anything like me, he doesn't hear a thing and he's just going to go about in his merry way. Not realising that his buddy old Ted is currently being devoured by a bunch of rat plagues. But there is another enemy here to the right. Again, no helmet, so you know you can stick a pebble square in the ear bag. And there's no way we're getting through. So, we're going to use our no... We're going to smash this. These two enemies are armoured up to the teeth. <laughs> and apparently grass pisses me off as well. Trying to throw a pebble in grass or something. Um, either that. So either the long grass and hand ignifer method is one is a good one. Or you can just use a pot ignifer as well. And that will also kill armoured enemies very easily. So into this middle island here. What you're going to do is just hold the Y button. The enemies have spotted me. And again, it obviously depends. The enemies may be in a completely different place to you. So what you're going to do, you're going to get Arno onto the one guy. And we are going to smash open the other guy. So Arno, stick your sword where his sun don't shine. Where he pro Stick your pork sword in, mate. And <laughs> now I've got this guy's attention. In fact, we're just going to get Arno onto him as well. So, I mean, you might as well. If there's only one, like I said, you can get Arno onto him while you're free to explore. And that's what we're going to do. So we are going to interact with the chest on the boat that we just pulled over. Oh, that's... Oh, that's some delicious stuff right there. Delicious stuff. And Arno is pretty much sliced and dead. Well done, you big man-bear pig. Oh, yeah, he does look like a man-bear pig, doesn't he? So what we can do is just keep going, <laughs> keep going straight anyway. Uh, we are going to use Hugo's power. Remember, it's down on the D-pad and then right, uh, right trigger to... Uh, knob him up. I think knob him up. Um, get him going. So just keep going straight. Obviously, you don't want to let the uh, meter run all the way to the right. That's Hugo's stress levels. Uh, so we are going to kill Broski 1 and Broski 2. Yeah, they never see me coming. Head to the right, and you can see another guard. Now, a lot of them later on, it'll be harder to kill with the rats since they will have lights. Since they'll know exactly what they're doing. Otherwise, these four are... Pretty much, pretty much fit enough to die. And there we go. So, let's just move on forward, shall we? In a couple of minutes, we'll be coming up to another souvenir. But, for now, we're just going to keep on going straight. And we're going to interact with this pole again, just to grab the boat over once more. Come on, Amicia. Use those Trenbolone sandwich arms. Good job, kid. Good job. So, that gets rid of the boat. Uh, you could have literally just climbed over the boat. Um, you know, that would have made life easier, really, wouldn't it? But, you know, what do I know? I don't have trembolone sandwiches for breakfast. So, we interact with the pot, interact with the chest there. Like Amicia seems to. She's strong as hell, man. And then what we're going to do is head back on ourselves now. Past the cave on the right. We're not going to go in that part of the cave. But there may be another one or two enemies. So, as usual, either get... You can get Arno to fight one, and then we will kill the other one. 
Um, again, grass seems to be pissing me off for some reason because I'm trying to kill grass. Okay. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I will show you. I'll show you now, and this is exactly what I do for the majority of the game then. I get them into the long grass, get them to see you, get them in the long grass, and then they burn like an absolute piece of beautiful bacon, sausage, and eggness. Could sure go for some bacon, sausage, and egg right now, damn it. Hmm. Anyway, we're going to interact with the chest, and we are actually going to start heading into El Caverino in just a moment, Marino. Hello, my name's Dan Marino. I was on Ace Ventura Roni. So, as we do head into the cave, there may be two enemies here. If there are two enemies here, I highly advise using the, using the Ignifer pot to kill them both dead. If there's only one guy, you can just use Arno to slice him and dice him like a piece of chicken, like a piece of KFC, the one that gives you the epic uh, diarrhea and food poisoning. Well, I've had it once. In fact, I've had it more than once from KFC. But it still tastes amazing, so uh, I'm not going to complain. You take the good with the bad, don't you, on some stuff. Right, we're going to head up. There are going to be another couple of enemies here. Literally a couple, just two. One's going to be an armored big boy. An armored big boy, not an armored. There he is. So we're going to get our Arno to fight the armored big boy. And we're going to try and take care of little broski. There we go. So, uh, what? in fact, what I ended up doing here was just uh, pelting him with ignifers. Until a big armored guy died, and then got Arno to kill that guy. Well, it's a simple life, but we like it. Careful with the drop here. Very well. So we're going to drop down, we've obviously already killed these guys, so it's all good, uh, just grab everything that you can off them, basically before heading to the other end of the beach. So we're going to go to another souvenir now, so turn directly behind you, more, more or less, and then climb up. Uh, we do have another skill unlocked, like I said, I'll explain a lot more in a lot more depth and details, because uh, there seems to be a lot of confusion about what you have to do to unlock them, so I will explain that in more detail later on. So all we're going to do is grab a torch, there are no rats or anything, you're just going to head down, there's going to be a bunch of hands on the left, interact with those, and that is going to be souvenir number 12 out of 20 Wown. Wow. Oh, look. What is it? Oh, that's old. Very old. It's a drawing. No, handprints of the first people who lived here, even before the Romans. The first people? We should keep going. Wait, just a bit. It's beautiful. It is. It makes me want to cry. But I don't know why. Just remember it. Come. Yes. So, there are going to be enemies here as well. We are actually going to sneak past them like a sneaky piece of sneak bags. Uh, the two of them are going to start walking away. Yo, bro, you want some fries with that shake? Oh, bow, chicka, bow, bow. Chicka, wow. Uh, so, you can if you want to. Obviously, it's up to you what you can do. You can either kill them all dead or we can just sneak past them. That's exactly what we're going to do. So, as soon as the two start walking away... Keep focusing on the one on the left. There is a guard on the right as well, but he will start walking the other way. As soon as the guard on the left uh, is sort of past 
the rock on the right uh, further enough, then we should be good to go. So he starts walking off to the left. That's good. So we can just keep going straight and sneaking on straight. Or we can get up and walk like the Billy Big Balls that we've got. Those soldiers are a disgrace. Your men are no better. Lawless scum. Nothing to be proud of. That's mercenaries for you. So we're going to head out of the shack here, turn slightly right and then left down the stairs right here. Again, just be careful, there will be an enemy sort of patrolling, he may spot you, so don't worry if he does. Uh, don't head into this shack, we're not going to bother, we're just going to go straight down. And we are almost, and there is a guard patrolling here, so we're going to need to climb up into here. There he is, so the guard almost, uh, almost catching me like the big piece of pig crap that he is. And of course, we're not going to go out here. What we need to do is where the guard is right now, we just need to drop it down there. So, there is something here on the left. A little bow and arrow. Or a little crossbow bolt. So, slap that. Slap that in your Squidward tentacles. There we go. And again, obviously, just make sure that everything is squid away. And we're all topped up and we're all good to go. So, the guard has disappeared the other way. There he is. As soon as he turns the way, or turn to the left, now we can start heading down. And then what we're going to do, there's a big boy across the road as well. We're almost done with this little section, by the way, now. So what we're going to do is just throw a piece of tar at Broski in front of us. And then we're going to make a run for it. So straight up the stairs, no collectibles or anything to grab, don't worry. Straight up and just go straight in the door behind him. Boy, you're onto a winner, Billy Big Balls. Looks safe. You got nowhere to run! And a count doesn't lead to a lot! Are you alright? No. We just met. And I already know you. You don't owe me anything. You don't make the rules. Fine. We can be friends if that helps. Let's try. But you'll end up wanting to kill me too. Well done, Amicia. You are queen, girl. But why Sophia so hot, though? I mean, uh, wow, Sophia, you are badass, bro. Uh, so we get another skill unlocked. Um, yeah, let's not go back with uh, anything I just said. <laughs> right, so have a look at the uh, upgrade. See if there's anything you can upgrade or you want to upgrade. There are the skills. Um, it really depends on your playthrough, by the way. If you're more stealthy, you will get prudence, the prudence achievement, a lot quicker. If you're very aggressive and kill a lot of guards, you will get the aggressive one. The alchemy one, though, is not for killing guards with alchemy. It's basically for killing, like half the guards in an area. So that's uh, just in case you were wondering what the hell's going on. Uh, but again, I really explain it more or less the end of the game because it will be the last three achievements that you pretty much grab. So, uh, right, there's only a little bit left to do now until the end of the level, more or less, or the end of the chapter. Get in the cabin, you little shit. I'll beat you later. I mean, uh, no, you no, I won't because you'll get rats onto me, so... Maybe I won't. <laughs> Maybe I'll do whatever you say. Oh, jeez. Imagine that power in the wrong hands. Jesus Christ. Right. Interact with the anchor, Madanka. It's not light. Ugh. It's an anchor. It's made to anchor. Hey. It's stuck. Sophia, I think they've blocked the anchor. Oh, bastards. Go to that pontoon with the crank. To find out then that it is stuck, which is just... It's just great. Nothing ever goes right, does it? So, on the right side of the boat here, this is where we need to go. But, of course, there are a bunch of rats down. So, we are going to use the Odorus uh, over onto the left-hand side. 
And the rats are going to be like... I mean, rats are pretty stupid. Son of a bitch. I just wasted that one. So the rats are pretty stupid. They'll literally just pretty much be eating themselves. Which uh, normally you think would be a good thing. But this is so stupid. Anyway, climb up to the next ladder. Uh, what we're going to do is in straight in front of us. There is a little couple of pieces that we're going to grab. So obviously we've grabbed them. Head over though to the opposite side. And we're going to get Arno to interact with the... Uh, levers or the switches or the, uh, the the wheels I don't know whatever we're calling that anyway man bear pig is on it and what we're gonna do when the chain comes up we're gonna g normal G string it BAM and that's how you do that jobbish Danish right interact here with the fish that'll uh, drop that one down and then also what we can do then is interact with the lock which is where uh, just by uh, fish face is and then that's going to get the rats over, and then we can climb up the other ladder, back onto the boat. Amicia, are we leaving? Hey, what did I say? Go back inside the cabin. Yes, Captain. Let's finish with this anchor. Did they break the bar? It's a bit skewed. These lamps must have pulled it on sand. Sorry. It's seen worse. So, after speaking to Sophia, the uh, love the love of everyone's life, uh, we're just going to head down the stairs. And now we're going to anchor the Bianca until we no longer look like a what? Anchor. quite done yet we're gonna head up the left up the stairs and eventually we are going to um uh, which one is it starboard starboard side porn side uh no port port one isn't rum the other whiskey i don't know whatever side this is have a look on the right press and hold the y button as you can say as you can see i'm very very good at sailor stuff uh one's port the other's liquor yeah that'll do the liquor side and of course because it's just Double trouble. That's also messed up. So the sale's not happening, so we're going to jump up to the right. And then what we're going to do... Uh, this one's very easy. Though. All we're doing is now heading to the left. Have a look. Get your normal Rocky G-string out. And we are going to fling that square at the uh, sail. That's going to get that going. That's going to start a cutscene. And we're all good, baby. <laughs> Now, the next two chapters are very... They're a lot more chilled, which is always nice. So, it's this one's not too long, only roughly about... I mean, we're looking at... Uh, not even half hour long. No, about half hour... Yeah, rough, roughly about uh, half an hour long, this one. So, what we're going to do, be doing for now, we're just going to be doing a bit of talking. We're going to have a little look around. So we're literally talk, speaking to Arno, we're speaking to Sophia, then we're going in the cabin, docks to have a look at all things, having a look underneath and having a look at some things, and that's pretty much all there is. So just follow what I'm doing on screen, you literally cannot go wrong, there's nothing to grab, there's nothing to do. My boys, it's chilling. Oh, okay, alright, okay, so we do have something to do. So instead of going up this time on the liquor side, which is the right side, apparently... Um, we're again holding the Y button. And then as soon as we're done there, go and get yourself some liquor. You've earned it. Other than that, though, it is now, like I said, very, very chill. So all we're doing is just interacting with some items. Speaking of Sophia, and then eventually we're going to grab Hugo, have a little walk around with him until we get to where we need to go. Hope he didn't break anything. It was so good to sleep. Herbs and unguents. The one she gave to Hugo worked well. I hope he's feeling better. 
Such a nice bed. Our captain has good taste. That smell. Incense. That's amazing. Mm. The Mediterranean Sea. The Kuna should be somewhere here. This one? Or this one? Necklaces, rings, quite the elegant lady. Wow, she certainly has some real treasure down here. Ah oh yes, that's our nose. Can't believe I heard him snore through the storm. Books. Pretty rare. She must have travelled a lot to get all these. And now she'll probably sell them illegally. Sailor, still at your post. Anything to report? An island, maybe? Not yet. But it's so beautiful. The colors keep changing, and I've seen huge fishes, maybe a dolphin. That's great. Mind spending some time with your old sister? <laughs> You're not old. Say, how does Sophia know the way to Lacuna? Tools, probably. There might be some around. Or we can ask her. Yes! Hey! Hey! The terrible siblings of the storm. It looks like someone has a question. How do you know the way to Lacuna? The sea is so big! Easy! Sirens. They know all the routes. What? Where are they? Can I see one? <laughs> They're pretty shy, you know. That's why I also use tools and maps. It's very technical, but I'm clever, so... Oh, yes. Sirens are easier. Do you mind if we take a look at some of your tools, Sophia? No, but don't break them, or I throw you overboard. <laughs> I'm not joking. Hi. It's a grey shield. It does its job. Saved my life often enough. I like the bird on it. It's a griffin. Half lion, half eagle. So you're half right. It was my coat of arms. Courage and cunning, that's me. Our coat of arms is a tree. It's a good crest, too. Strength, stability, wisdom. That's all us. Come on, Hugo. He's funny. He looks like a bear. Smells like one, too. It smells funny. Yes. It's that crossbow saved our life. We wouldn't have made it without Joseph. I'm sure he's happy you have it. Yes. I'll try to prove worthy of it. It's the Mediterranean Sea. It's pretty. And useful. Sophia uses it to tell which island is the right one. Hey, look at that. Wow. Is it a diamond? I don't think so, but it's definitely of value. Let's not touch it. Down to the hold. Oh, is this really all hers? I suppose so. Unless she stole from her crew. Now this will interest you. Oh, what is it? It's an astrolabe. Father told me once that you use it to find your way by the stars. Oh, can we try it now? Maybe at night, we'll see. Hey, look, a compass. Can I hold it? Yes, but be careful. It's heavy. That needle always shows where north is. He moves when I move. Well, just stop moving then. Here, the island is in the south, right? Right where we're heading. Can I keep it to play? Yes, but 
Don't break it unless you want to face Sophia. Climb up. All right. Hugo and Amicia on deck. Yes, we're here. We know. Uh, I don't know, mind. I wouldn't give anything to Hugo since he can control rats. He can pretty much just throw the compass in. And Sophia will smash him up, bruh. Anyway, we are, after uh, interacting with everything and having a look at pretty much most things, uh, we're going to go ahead and speak to Sophia, and then we are going to arrive on... Hola, cuna! Chamanuna! Welcome to your Spanish lesson, baby! Uno, dos, tres. Pitbull. Now, this is a lovely little place, but it actually is an absolutely lovely little place. But of course, since we're roughly only about halfway through the game, you know, you know we're not going to be chilling out for the next four hours, don't you? So what we're doing then, we're just going to uh, be following Arno. There are a couple of things we're going to grab. Another feather, another souvenir, plus we're going to get a missable achievement as well. Well, I say missable, it's kind of unmissable if you want to get the uh, next, the, the 14th souvenir as well, so... Uh, we're going to speak to Arno for now, and then we're just going to do a little bit more walking. Go on, Hugo. Yes. In my dream, I woke up on the beach, and I was sick and scared. But a big bird came, and I followed him. I thought I was dying, but the bird showed me water that healed me. And there was a huge tree, too. And that's where I wake up each time. Good. So, bird, tree, and water could be anywhere but I guess it's a start we can ask at the market come on oh it's amazing so many colors and perfumes Amicia can we ask people about my dream uh, you shouldn't tell them that it's a dream and don't ask too many people you never know yes hello sir would you... Is there a magic pond here? With birds and trees? <sighs> <laughs> I'm not from here, you know. I just come for the market. Maybe you have a bird? No. <laughs> well, thank you, sir. You're about as subtle <laughs> as you are tall. What? <laughs> so we've headed to the left for a particular reason. We're going to go through the gap here on the left. We're going to have a little chat with... Oh, someone who speaks so lovely and quiet and chilled and... Oh, great work with the black orations. Hell, we need a hand with tonight's feast. Good afternoon. Hello. We've just arrived, and we heard about a beach with a pond not too far. Hmm, that's very specific. Anyone? Sorry, I really don't know. Me neither. There's also a big tree. <laughs> well, we have lots of big trees. But of course, the main reason we've come here, it's not to give two monkeys nutballs about um, decorations. We're heading to the left as soon as we've spoken to her. And there is going to be Feather 3 out of 7 right by this tree. If Man Bear Pig will get out of the way, thank you very much. So there is uh, the next Feather. So that's, yeah, that should be Feather 3 out of 7 now to grab. And then what we're basically going to do is we're going to go straight for the next souvenir as well. So souvenir 13 out of 21. So, that is the black kite. That's a, that's a good looking kite. Uh, head back past the decoration lady. Don't worry, this guy, he looks like a bit of a uh, douchebag, but he's not actually doing anything. So from here, what we're going to do, we're going back into the busy crowd of life. Come on, just run, damn it. We're going to go straight ahead. And we're going to go and find some goats. 
Um, eventually. <whistles> yeah, lovely. But, you know, you could be a little bit quicker, couldn't you? So, instead of going where we are looking just there on the left, what we need to do is go basically straight down. Uh, now, that way is blocked off. So, if we will just head to the right slightly, underneath this archway, right in front of us. Next to, um, oh, I thought he was Bald Biscuit Head, but they've just got robes on and stuff. So just keep going straight on, and you can see the goats already, and that'll be Souvenir 13 out of 21. Goat curry by anyone? Uh, any any chance by anyone? Is she nice? Of course she is. Uh, Go on. Uh, Don't be afraid. <laughs> What's she called? Lucinda. You're a nice goat, Lucinda. She loves you. Really? <laughs> there. That's I love you in goat. <laughs> you all right? She screamed at me. That's called bleating. It's how they talk. She's a goat, you know. That's what they do. Well, it's not nice. Okay, right. What we're going to be coming up to now is the perfect throw achievement. Now, there are basically four wreaths. That you have to throw four pots through, and you have to get him in one each time. So we're going to head back to the right. If you end up missing, or basically you cannot miss, or you cannot hit the edge. They've got to go straight through, okay? Now this took me a while, and I will explain why in just a bit. Um, but basically, you can if, if you miss or something happens, you can restart the section, and you'll start again just from the goats that we were just at. So you'll have to just come back through this bit, and go again. So basically... Obviously, there's a lot of guides out for this. A lot of guides for this achievement. And what they were doing... Now, normally what you'd have to do is throw one of the pots. You'd have to throw them underneath. You'd have to throw... where The, the marker would look like it's going underneath. But that is what would actually get it straight through. But for some reason, the range for me was not close enough. Um, for whatever particular reason. So, if you... Th if I will pick up a pot, a couple of pots here. When you throw it... Now, normally at the bottom of it, if you throw it far enough, there'll be like two sort of white lines sort of separated. That's when you know, um, when you're aiming underneath the wreath, that it will go in. Um, but for me, I had to do it kind of the hard way this time. So if you've got the two sort of separated lines, if you're aiming at it underneath, then throw it. But if not, and you're like me, and it's just one sort of solid line, just aim just basically just at the top, right underneath the very top. And that will get the first one through. We're going to do the same here for the second wreath. In fact, no, we are going to aim un uh, underneath for the second wreath because we've got the two sort of separated lines. Sorry, apologies about that. So we've got the two separated lines for the second one. The third one, you can aim at the bottom, but keep it just above the sort of top wreath. And then the fourth one, again, what you're supposed to do is uh, aim sort of underneath the wreath and that will go straight in. That is, that was supposed to be the plan. <laughs> um, so aim it sort of right there, just directly underneath it, and then that should be the fourth one done. So, yeah. So you'll get the perfect throw achievement. You will also get souvenir 14 out of 21. So have a look if, uh, if there's any upgrades that you need. But yeah, that was a very weird one. So it's supposed to be aim underneath on the first, second, and fourth ones. And it was supposed to be as easy as that, but for some reason it wasn't doing it for me. So, um, anyway, that's how you do that. Perfect throw, souvenir, and now we can crack on. So, we'll just keep going straight. It's only one linear path for now. You're going to enjoy all what the all what these, uh, the nice, lovely, sacred people have to offer. Please stick to the rhythm, all right, Lucy? No improvisation. I sing for the child of embers, and he needs energy. But not that much. All right, focus, please. We're going soon. Hurry up! Last year was so great. You, you think they'll do better? I know they've been rehearsing for months. I hope they'll cross the main square once again. Who's this it's child of embers, anyway? A local deity, obviously. It's St John's Week on the continent. The summer solstice. So it's probably all about fertility and prosperity. Is he magical? He's a god. Pagan one. Peaceful one? Yes. Dances! <laughs> I see that. You know how to dance this, Arno? <laughs> Do I look like it? Well, you never know. I'd like to see you dance. <laughs> You're 30 years too late, lad. Oh, 
imagine it then. The walk of devotion has begun. The procession is coming. Let me see it quick. Blessed be the child of Embers. Blessed be the mother. Hello. Oh. Hello. We're just in time. Wow. Say, would you like to bless them with flowers? I just throw some at them. That's it. Like this. Blessed be the child. To his heart. Now they're blessed for many, many years. You're a savage, Shorty. Let's follow the parade. Sure. Let's go look okay. havoc somewhere quick, else. Quick, quick! I like blessing people. I really wonder why. Blessed is, blessed the, mother. is the mother. The mother is about blessed to speak. Blessed is the mother. <gasps> a crowd. What's going on? Wow, Man Bear Pig's naughty, naughty, naughty. So basically, I won't spoil it. I'll let you watch the cutscene and see what happens for itself. But we're on the run. So immediately, we're going to start running. And obviously, we're just going straight. It's not too much of a big section. We're going to head to the right through here, through the archway. And then from here, we're going to go right again. Just underneath the clothes. Oh, somebody's uh, crap stained underpants. <laughs> I got shit on my head now. Oh, or was that blood? No, it kind of looks like crap. And yeah, oh, poor Hugo, man. His happy days are constantly marred by guards trying to bloody chase us. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, I do feel sorry for the kid, man. Right, anyway, we're just going to head straight through the um, barn. We're going to climb over. No guards are going to chase us or anything. Uh, but what we need to do is get Hugo to climb, uh, to crawl underneath the gap there in order to open up the gate. And while the sad, happy, lazy bones does that, we'll just grab the chest there while we wait. There we go. So, come on, Hugo. Come on, rat boy. Let me in, let me in. Oh, thank God for that. Right. Cool, that's all good. We've got a cart there. But for now, we're just going to head over to the right. There is another chest here that we can grab. Again, as I say, always make sure that you got your crud skis topped up skis. Okay, skis? Grand skis. Oh, grand skis. Right, now push the cart. What am I on about? I'm losing my mind. We're almost five hours in now. Definitely feeling like Spongebob now. Water! Uh, so turn this to the right. This is the, the only way that we're going. Come we'll come back for you later, Barry Mookow. And we're just going to climb up. There we go. Good. Right, head straight through. And obviously we're going to push... Uh, we're not going to push it off. Because it's um, a bunch of tools and some pieces that we can grab. Uh, recycle, grab everything that you possibly can. And that's all good. And then we'll just head the opposite direction. Not jumping down, but we're just going to keep going straight. Wow. Right, this part is <laughs> kind of a lot of fun, actually. It's kind of a lot of fun. So this dude, he can clearly, clearly see directly in front of him a boy and a girl who everyone's after. But um, apparently he doesn't see us jumping down. So he's going to use his falcon instead. Whoopsie. So... What you need to do then is you need to distract the falcon, but you've got to move fast now, okay? So, what you need to do is, of course, we're using a hand pebble rock throw. That's what we're going to do. Eventually. No, when it means, yes, not speaking. Whispering. She's whispering like Zoe Ball on Radio 2. So, interact with that. The falcon's going to go. As soon as it goes, head straight to the next one. But you've got to be quick because he will try and attack you again. So that's why you've got to be quick. So hit the rock again and then immediately go to the one on the right as soon as the falcon goes. But again, he will see you, so don't move straight away. Do the same again. So hit the rocks here on or the metals on the right-hand side. Falcon goes. You go to the one directly in front of you. Try not to dally-diddle, dally-diddle. I mean, Brosie can clearly see us, but uh, anyway. So hit the, the helmets again with the rock. And then immediately you're going to go to the left. As soon as the falcon goes, go to the left. Make it quick. Oh, yeah, Falcon will slap you down. Right, there's going to be some helmets here on the left that we're going to hit. So, smash that. As soon as the Falcon goes, jump over and drop down. There we go. And then, again, the, <laughs> the same the same helmets there. Hit that. As soon as the Falcon goes, 
go straight to the next one straight in front of us. Again, there's a pot that we can recycle for some delicious pieces, if you so wish. Hit these same uh, rocks again, or the same, same helmets. Falcon's going to go, go straight in front of us. And you're going to have to do the same thing again, but this will be the last time. So hit the helmets. As soon as Falcon's gone, John Senior way up and go upstairs to the left. Run and you're all good. And straight through the door to end this section. That is one lazy guard, by the way. Oh, that was close, but we did it. That bird was awful. Now where's that damn honor? Listen, sword noises. Yes, yes, quick. They're here. The Count's alive. Can you stop him? Shut up! I'll kill you! What do we do? So, the gist of it is, we just became a traitor to Man Bear Pig. You know, we did save our ass a lot in the last, um, in the last chapter, but that's all good. Now, we are here with the Count and Countess, and I've got to be honest, I don't know about you guys, but from the off, right here, she talks about her love of life, her zest of life, her zest of everything. <laughs> she just, yeah, I got, I don't know about you, but she's giving me weird vibes from the beginning. I don't know, man. There's just being nice, and then there's seemingly like you're completely, uh, you know, off your um, nugget with various things you've smoked, etc. Yeah, she seems a bit off her head. That's what I'm trying to get at. Anyway, I'll let you judge for yourself. Maybe I judge too harshly. Kuna are one, united around the Child of Embers. So? I love it! Ha-ha! <laughs> a bon vivant! Be careful, they're very rich. So where are you from? Guyenne. We fled the war and the plague. We came here hoping for a better life. And we heard of this island. You were right to come here. Let's keep going. You must be tired after this adventure. It's amazing. I know. Can't wait to see our room. Agnes, go get a room ready for two, please. Certainly, Mother. She's her mummy. No, it's symbolic. And these are our gardens. My favorite part. Splendid. Finally, they clean to the basins. Yes, aren't they nice? You're quite young for such a long trip. Where are your parents? Mummy is somewhere, but Dad was killed. By who? How? Uh, Hugo. Victor, don't be so military. <laughs> you know me. Come next to me, Hugo. Yes. You see those plants? Most of them are not from here, but we managed to make them grow anyway. And they look great. Thanks to a lot of love and care. We are just like them, you know. We drink water. <laughs> and we need a good soil, love and care. This land is open to you if you wish to keep growing here. But of course, the big sister will decide. Right, Amicia? Thank you so much. Those were kind and true words. Let me show you something else. Victor? Of course, my Come, love. Hugo. The land here is strong. The child of embers breathes life into it. We created the brighter days to celebrate him. In the hope he'll come back to us, as it is foretold. To us, his mother and father. And to the people. We pray to him, not as a god, but as our long sleeping child. We love and revere him to revive his flame. Amicia, one stone. It's the bird. Wait, would you pray with me? You can do it in your own way. Sure. Hugo? I'll pray to the bird. A humble flame to light his night. And may he rise. A sun, a sun. So bright. So bright. So bright. Thank you. I appreciate it. Shall we go? Uh, sorry, Mother. Could we take...
take some time to pray for our father. Hugo? Yes. Of course. I understand. I'll wait for you. Come when it is done. Dear father. Hugo, is it really your bird? Take a good look at it. Oh, yes. I feel it. It has the same beak. And I just know it. Good. Very good. Let's go back to them. And no word about that to anybody here, right? It's our secret. I know. Is everything ready for tomorrow? Yes. The new robes look wonderful. It will be perfect. Excuse me. Oh. Shall we go? Sure. I must say, we appreciate that you paid homage to the child so willingly. Every child bears the future of the world. One child can change everything. That is very true. Here it is. So anyway, this is it then. This is the end of the chapter. So after all the you know trials and tribulations of the first eight chapters, it's been kind of nice to just relax and have a chill out and have a nice room for uh, for, <laughs> for five minutes. And now we're going on to Tales and Revelations. Now, this is the... I love that, uh, that rare achievement pop. It's like popping open a Pringles can for the first time, isn't it? It's just delicious. So, Tales and Revelations. This is the longest chapter in the game. Uh, roughly comes in at about an hour, but that's because <laughs> basically the area is so vast and huge that for a lot of the time we will just be running, running about. So for the first half of this chapter, it's just literally exploration and running about, messing about with windmills and stuff like that. But hopefully this is the chapter, like I said, from what I said earlier, uh, again, there's only one linear path down here, so for now. But this is the chapter where it's got two secret chests in it. Now, I messed up by, firstly, not upgrading all of my gear to three to carry more knives. And secondly, for missing the knife on the beach in chapter seven. So hopefully, I got I got that through to you where you've upgraded your gear to three. You've got at least two knives. You will get one knife in this chapter, but that's it. So you can get one knife for one chest. And if you end up having no knives for the next secret chest in this chapter, we will have to replay this chapter from the beginning here, and it'll take about half an hour to get there again. So, like I said, hopefully you got, as I said, you got all three gears all good, and you've got at least one knife in your inventory now. If so, then you'll be good to go. If not, you'll have to just replay this chapter for half hour before going into New Game Plus. So, there we go. We're all good. We, we've got that squad of our... Right. Nobody's trying to kill- you know what, it's actually nice. Nobody's trying to kill us for once as well. This is grande. Apart from Sophia. Slept well? Sophia, hi! And nice to see you! How did you know? Where you'd be? That's my life, sweetheart. Wake up early, observe. So as I said then, there's going to be a lot of exploring and a lot of running around for now. So all we're doing is just heading straight down anyway for now. And Lucas, Lucas, not Lucas, uh, Hugo Boss, old rap boy, is going to see a phoenix that he's going to be like, Wow, it's a Boyd. You're right. Is it the one from your dream? Almost. It's funny. It looks like it's looking at something. Oh, a treasure hunt. Already? Well, let's see what he sees. So from El Phoenix, it's the rise of the Phoenix. Tenacious just the only one. Uh, we're just going to head down and there's a path left and right. What we're going to do is start heading to the left and keep going until you see. It's kind of like a one small building on his own. So run, run as fast as you can. You can't catch me. I'm the Rat Boy Man. You have a real boat. Just do it for real. Oh, you've never seen a naval fight, have you? I've seen fights. A battlefield. Yes. Stay on land for this, believe me. So 
So here is that building then, just chilling on its own. Somebody literally must have got fed up with their partner and gone, right, screw this, I'm building my own building away from you. And it seemed to have worked. So what we have to do is not do what I'm doing here. Um, uh, just around the left-hand side, if we, there's an open window that we can shoot a lock with. So I have jumped in, and I have grabbed this treasure chest. But what we need to do is go through the door on the left, which holds the knife and the secret chest. As you can see, it's pretty much locked. So what you need to do from here is turn to the right. I've gone to the left for some particular reason. Uh, so we need to go to the right. Sorry, there we go. And you're going to see this open window. Again, I do apologize about the uh, edit there. For some reason, I kept jumping all the way down and running around. So I was just looking at rocks for, for whatever reason. So once you've hit the door anyway, we're going to jump back in. This is the only knife in the level, by the way, which is why I was so adamant about the gears and grabbing the other knife earlier. Because we're going to grab this knife here, but we're going to use it on the secret chest, which is going to be number 6 out of 10 immediately. So we need to do a bit of climbing for that. Oh, where it lays its eggs. Huh? You think it's mummy? Who knows? Damn ladders. Oh. And eventually, all the climbing's finally going to pay off. I'm knackered myself watching them. But here is the secret chest. So this will be secret chest 6 out of 10. And I digress. I hope, as I said, you got you have an extra spare knife on you. Because that the, the knife that we just grabbed, like I said, is the only knife in the entire level. Uh, which is a bit of a pain in the ass, really. But um, So yeah, hopefully you've got one spare knife. You'll grab the secret chest later on. Which means you'll get the achievement a lot earlier and a lot quicker than I did. And you don't have to wait an extra half hour replaying the point on this. Uh, replaying this sort of first half of the level again. But once we are done teetering up here, there is, before heading down, we're going to head up one more time. And we're going to grab souvenir number 15 out of 21. Screech! So eventually we're all good. So what we're going to do, head to the right. There's going to be a ladder, which is going to go up. And then all you've got to do is just interact with the view. And that's going to be Souvenir, like I said, 15 out of 21. Job done. Everywhere! It was worth it. Come closer. Look, now Ooh. you can feel like your bird when it perches nice high up. view. Not just any bird. A bird of prey. King of birds. What do you see? I see where I hunt. And what do you hunt? Sausages. <laughs> you know what else birds of prey do? They screech. You ready? Yes! Sophia is going to screech with us, right? I was born to screech. On three. One, two, three! Screech! screech! <laughs> <laughs> All right, time to head back down. Now everybody knows we're here. Nice screeching, by the way, you two. Yours was pretty good, too. I know. It's my commanding voice. <laughs> you need one to be heard over the sound of the sea. <laughs> Your crew must love it. Oh, they've never complained. Oh. Let's go down. Uh-huh. Hey, I heard your mom's going out with Screech! I know it's Squeak, but that's still funny. And if anyone has ever seen Basketball, Please let me know, because I absolutely love that. And if anyone hasn't seen Basketball, I highly advise you that you go and watch Basketball. So as we head out anyway, we're going to head to the right. And then at the end of this path, we're going to start heading to the right until we can see a big old long boy bridge to go over. Should be right in front of us now. There it is. So climb over that. And then at the end here, immediately turn to the right. And then just keep on going basically straight. And we're going to keep on going straight until we can see something that we can just climb through. It's going to be over the brow of the hill right here. So it's directly in front of us, not going to the right where I just went there, but here it is. So it's this little brick wall with something we can push up. And we're going to sneak through. Tell me this is it. I see. I see columns are trees, red roses too. Let's go to the left and climb down, you fool. 
My name is Mr. T. God damn, I need a P. Right, so when we climb down anyway, all we're going to do is get out an Ignifer. We're going to get the treasure chest first here on the left by the column. And then we're going to get an Ignifer and destroy the grass. That's going to get a cutscene going. And life will be glorious once more. Nothing will beat this moment. This is it, Hugo. Your bird showed the way. The view from up there must be quite a sight. Oh, I can't see it. And what I might buy, nothing will be as nice as this, is I mean it for Amicia and Ratboy. But we are climbing up to the left and climbing up to the left again. Uh, there is a little pouch here, as you can see. We can recycle a pot. Sorry, not a pouch. But we can grab a little cheeky piece bag. So, climbing up. And we are coming up to a little windmill puzzle type thing, which is... Nice, I suppose. So we will be doing those in just a minute as we climb down. What we're going to do from here, we're going to head to the right. And we're going to go for a long walk. Keep going straight just over the next bridge. We're basically effectively going for another souvenir, by the way. I don't want to miss the ceremony. Hello there. Hello. Hello. So when we get to the end, what we're going to do is turn immediately right now. And we're going to climb up. Are we go to this ship, yeah, mate. You need a kid to keep you up all night. So keep, as you keep heading straight to the left, we're going to climb up again. A few little houses, and this is why it's a long chapter, by the way. Uh, as we head to the right and go around this house, yeah. So this is why it's a long chapter, just because there are so, like there's a good couple of souvenirs, but a lot of stuff are out of the way. They're really out of the way. Um, so. Don't worry, these are not enemies. He looks like the Grim Reaper or something, but nah, he's all good. There is a workbench here if you want it. Uh, we don't particularly need it for now. So just keep going round. And we're going to need to... So we'll head down. So, get, Sophia, move, you beautiful git. Uh, head through this little house. I don't actually think that you have to. Um, I mean, it doesn't make a difference in terms of for the souvenir. You can go around the house if you wanted to. But the souvenir is going to be just past these people in this tree... Keep on heading down. And right at the tree at the very end is Souvenir 16 out of 21. Making love with trees. It must be so old. How old? An olive tree. Thousands of years, I'd say. Really? It's all twisted. Is it sick? On the contrary. It's strong. It adapted. She's right. It's been shaped by time. It's seen so many things. It has scars, too. I love it. Then tell it. It will listen. I love you. <laughs> and I'm sure it loves you, too. Let's go? Yes. And now we just head back the way we came. Oh, that's grande. So we're heading straight, but instead of going towards the flags here, we're going to make a right, and we're going to get up those steps. And I've got to be honest, all three of these are con consistently, constantly running. I am super impressed, because me even just walking up to the shop and back and I'm panting for about three hours. <sighs> and then i got to have a Monster Energy drink then to cheer me up, because I'm so depressingly unfit. So we interact with this first uh, windmill anyway. No, not too bad. I'm, I'm in decent shape, you know. Uh, we're going to head up the steps. Grab the pieces on the left-hand side. Grab the lever, or whatever this is going to be. Whatever you're going to call it. And you're just going to push it all the way in. And what that'll do is just hold the brakes on the, on the windmill. And it's basically the big ball that is just to the left of us as we exited. That is what has stopped. So from here, what we're going to do is head straight up to the second windmill. 
Yes, I... <laughs> You know, I wasn't a big fan of these. I kind of wish we could have just got on with the game rather than pissing about with windmills. But, uh, you know, it's what we're going to do. What are we going to do? So, interact with the rope here. Obviously, hold the white button, of course. That is going to smackle down the old um, the old barrel bags. You're obviously not going to climb the first barrel, are you? So, you're going to go to the second barrel, just behind it. So, climb up. Climb up. Crawl in. And head up. Well, sorry, say head up. We're already on the second floor. So grab the piece. We're going to interact with and push in the cart as soon as Amicia can stop sort of uh, walking into it, if she can. Cheers, me killer. Much appreciado, aficionado. Oh, it right, that's the first, That's the next one done. So now what we can do is just head out. For whatever reason, we couldn't open the door from the other side, but we can from this side. Okay. Right, head to the third windmill. And a child ember. <laughs> yeah, people believe in some hilarious stuff. You know, the works of Jeebus. Oh, no, actually, I'll, no, I'll tell you what. I'm not getting into arguments about religion. You argue amongst yourselves. I'll just watch and laugh. Uh, right, so get... Uh, I was going to keep calling him Rodri then. Get little Hugo to go underneath there. He is going to open up the door for us. Which would be nice. Might as well do something with his life, eh? I'm just joking. Right, we head in. What we need to do is go straight in front of us there to climb out. There we go. Oh, climb out, I mean climb up. And then, of course, you're going to push the switch all the way in again to stop the windmill. Again, not sure what this entirely has to do with anything at the minute. But we'll find out. So there's the piece. Another bunch of pieces that we're going to grab. And then we're going to go straight in front of us for the next windmill puzzle. There is a little treasure chest in here as well, full of delicious, yummy alcohol. And some sulfur and some, you know, saltpeter. If you really want to, if you really want a good deal. Uh, which, of course, um, I highly advise against. Nobody's allowed a good time. Apart from playing video game guides. Watching my guides. So, underneath the cart. <laughs> let me get... Uh, get me those views, guys. Let's get me rich so I can take you all out for a lovely romantic steak dinner. Right, we're climbing up the ladder anyway. I'm going to shut up now. What we're going to do is we're going to use our normal G-string rock thing and open up the lock on the other side. That's exactly what we've got to do. And we can just climb down. We can just jump down, actually. Yes. So jump straight down. Incredible sets of ankles all these people have got as well. Might have be shattered from one tiny little jump as well. That's the problem when you got skinny calves, see? You can train them and train them and train them. But it's genetics in it, so I've got skinny calves forever now. So I'm just trying to get big biceps, so at least they look decent somewhere. Uh, so we're going to head up the stairs. I'm going to stop talking about myself now, sorry. Uh, grab the piece, and this time we're going to pull the switch out, all the way out. And that will complete the windmill puzzle, I guess. Tidy mate! Happy days! Right, we've still got a few minutes to do so. Let's keep heading down. You can see this sort of lone hut by itself. That's what we're going to be heading towards. Uh, so just head straight through, through the flowers, through the uh, Grim Reaper hooded guys for whatever particular reason. And we are going to need to go into the baby clinic. This is what it's actually called. This is what it actually is, the baby clinic. Uh, but again, obviously, you can't have it all your own way. You've got a couple of things to do first. So we're going to climb the ladder. And then what you've got to do is climb up on the roof directly to the left of you. So what you need, what you can do is go to the window. Or what you're supposed to do after is go to the window. But what we need to do first, uh, because there's a big box in the way, is climb up onto the roof here. Go across to the other side. And use your regular rock pebble and G-string to knock down this box. Kablamo Marjo. There we go. And then we can just jump down. And then if we head... Now, again, I do apologize about this bit. I pretty... I, I don't think I even needed to do this. So, what I ended up doing was going around to the door, opening it up here, and then having to come back to climb up the ladder to then hit the... Uh, and there's another chest there as well. And then climb, coming back, climbing up the ladder, and then going for the window. So, I'm pretty sure I didn't even need to do this. So, I do apologize if this was a waste of about 30 or so seconds. <laughs> Uh, but as we obviously enter the door, we're not going to be able to enter. So then that got me thinking, 
Why didn't I just freaking do that, man? So, let's go back to the ladder, climb up. There are two locks that we need to hit by the window anyway. Hey, you're good. I should hire you. I wasn't like this before. It's fine. I wasn't born a smuggler either. You do what you must. Mind the drop. <laughs> so, apparently we can finally get in after about 30 seconds of uh, inconvenience. There, sorry again. So, straight in front of us, and it's, it's, to be honest, it's only a tool and some pieces and stuff in this big chest, so... You know, it's not like you're doing it for anything unbelievably specific. I, I was hoping there would have been a knife buried somewhere in here, but there was not. It's just this box, and if this is a baby clinic, this is the worst goddamn baby clinic I've ever seen. Mate, if somebody's after a baby, artificial insemination, yeah, if, <laughs> if I was a woman, you wouldn't be sticking nothing at me in this bloody hellhole, mate. Uh, no... You know, but as creamy goo, like none of that creamy goo. I'm not, I'm not, don't trust anything in this place. Anyway, that's it for this bit. Now, what we're going to do is just keep heading. We're, all we're doing is basically heading straight until the very end. So, you're going straight for the time being, past all the chanting hippies. What's going on here? Oh, look! We can see your bow, Sophia! It's so small! One yes, for the child, and even one small, for the mother, it's still one stunning. for the father. I didn't think we'd be so high above the sea. Not too tired, Hugo. No, I'm good. We've walked a lot. This island is quite big. It's big, but it's beautiful. I like it. Good. It wasn't easy. Now, you're thinking we're going to go straight through, right? Wrong. We're going left here. So, take a left now up the path. And we are just going to grab uh, one or sort of two more chests here. We're going to climb up. So we're going to grab another big chest, a couple of things from this next building before we can move on. Now, of course, if you do have to replay this chapter, obviously you can just crack on straight for the exit. You don't have to worry about going out of your way to grab chests and items and things like that. Shall we climb up here then? You can already see in the left-hand side corner is another chest to grab. Dear Hugo. Besides, nothing's nearly as fun as being where you're not supposed to be. Really? She's just joking. Right, Sophia? Ah. Uh... Then we're going to head up the ladder for a couple more items. And then, once again, that is it for this particular area. What do we have here? So, this is the end of this chapter. So, we can jump down, go to the left, and jump down again. Since we've got everything that we need, apparently. And we're going to head to the right. So, we're going to go uh, basically straight on rather than climbing up again. We don't need to. So, past the tree here on the right, we're going back over the bridge. We've got a magic bird, an ancient order of alchemists. The little one has visions. <laughs> well, just what else can I expect? Hugo's sickness is special. And this time we go in, there's a path, we go into the right, so take the right path, here with the left, uh, so with this wall on the left hand side. Take the right path again, go around, and all we're doing here is grabbing another couple of items. So another chest, man, I tell you what, these, these people must be rich or something, leaving tons of stuff for us, so... I spank you, I spank your hairy crutch, thank you. Thank you very much, spank your hairy crutch, yes, uh, yeah, anyway. So, uh, keep heading uh, sort of sort of up and straight. Keep heading up. Again, ignoring all the uh, death robe hooded figures or whatever. Uh, keep heading up the mountain. So, there was two paths again. And this time, like I said, we're going up. Uh, we're actually going to come up now to onto the mountain. 
where the another souvenir is and the no, the extra secret chest in this level and again I've already explained about the gears and hope that you've got a knife etc so if that's the case then we're all grando pipi there's the gate interact with that cutscene will start and it's going to be a long linear path again that's it the path to the sanctuary so we're done here for now yes let's go It's gonna be quite a walk. First to the top! Hey, easy, I don't wanna carry you! Chicken! We've been walking a while. It's not as high as it looked. Don't be disappointed. We're not there yet. <laughs> Damn, it's getting hot. Oh. Look! We're almost at the sanctuary! Do you know what almost means? Come on, it will be worth the sweat. Look at the size of it. So what do you expect to find up there? I want to see the real bird. The tree? Or the pond? I'd prefer an elixir. Something to really help you, Hugo. Maybe the bird will have it. Oh, spring water! How can he run in this heat? Child skill. He can also fall asleep in a snap. <sighs> mm, it looks so fresh. It is. Just what I need, anyway. Hey, Hugo, you have some dirt on your face. I'll get it for you. Ah! <laughs> Water attack! Hey! <laughs> Counter-attack. <laughs> Look at the runes, all right, Hugo! All right, all right, I yield. You soaked me to death. I win! <laughs> <laughs> A sailor defeated by water. He shot me in the eyes, all right? I did it on purpose. <laughs> That's my brother. Talk about a family. Well done, Hugo. I'll have my revenge. is huge. Yes. Carving that must have hurt. Oh, goats. There are a lot of Mesia. Don't be scared. They much prefer their olive leaves to little children. Yes, but they scream. I'm here. Well, well, well. Our fierce warrior is afraid of goats. There are too many. You're heading to the child sanctuary? We are. Oh, I'm afraid you're too late. They closed the gate, as you can see, for the ceremony. A ceremony? Oh, we came all this way for the little one. Ah, uh, well, that goat path to the side will take you closer, but you'll have to look from afar. The Count and Countess are up there, and the guards are on edge since yesterday's mess. They won't take kindly to uninvited guests. We'll keep that in mind. Thank you. Oh, by the way, if you stumble on Tramontan, Please send her back here. She's one of my goats. We'll try. Good luck, then. I hope she won't attack us. Oh, come on. It's a goat, not a wolf. But they scream. Oh, they do. <clears throat> so then old Brown Town there wants us to find his goat. Obviously, I haven't been speaking, there's been nothing to do except take a nice little walk. Uh, but this time, we're going to grab the next souvenir, and it's going to be in this burnt-out house to the left of us. Burnt-out houses to the left of us. Rap boys to the right. Here I am, stuck in the middle with a gashed forehead. So what you need to do then is get out your ignifer. We haven't used uh, we haven't used anything for a while, have we? 
get rid of the long grass in front of us, and that's going to burn for a while. She's nice. I'm sure she'll be thankful in her own way. If she's not, we'll lock her up again, won't we? Don't worry. You have two strong women to protect you. Hmm. Now, once it's all burnt out and it's looking like Reese James's new haircut, Reese James Chelsea footballer. If you just if you type in Reese James green haircut on Google, you know exactly what I mean. Awful. Um, <laughs> but uh, send. I just keep going to say Lucas. Uh, send what what's his name in your kid, your brother kid, and there's the goat for one. That's. Uh, I mean, yeah, it's a goat, bro. <laughs> There's nothing else we can say. But it's it's incredible that a man that can control. Up to a thousand rats is a bit petrified of someone that can, you know, lick his nostrils off. Screaming's not biting. Just say to yourself, it can happen. And that's all. I'll try. See? It's easy. They don't all scream. Yes. She's nice. All right. Yeah. She's saved. You've overcome your fear. And I want to see that. There you go, goat balls. We're all done. You make me some of that goat milk and I'll be back to drink some later. Oh. Wait, ghosts don't drink milk. Uh, ghosts don't make milk, right? Okay, I'll have to Google that one. Uh, right, there is uh, Del Monte, the souvenir. We can open up this. Uh, um, I'm so sorry. <laughs> this tool chest and everything. And once we've got ridden, uh, we've got the souvenir. Now we can move on. So we are going to immediately pretty much come up straight to the next secret chest. So we're going to climb up here. Keep going a little bit straight. And in fact, we're going to be coming up to some sneaky, sneaky guard action as well soon. We haven't we haven't seen no guards for a long while. Head to the left rather than going straight right here. We're going to climb up again. And the secret chest is going to be right in front of us. So like I said, for me... I get no secret chest because I don't have any knives, but I am hoping, um, hoping for your, for your sake and your half hour sake that you've got a knife on you and you can open up that secret chest and that will be secret chest number seven out of ten, and uh, yeah, you're going to be a lot happier than I was at this point because I was like, I was adamant there was going to be another knife before this one. So, uh, well, since it's not, um, we'll just crack on. But again, hopefully you've got that one open and we're all good. That is where secret chest number seven is. So, on our way, well, let's keep climbing up for now. Climb up. Oh. Up. Careful with the drop here. All right. What do we do with the last offerings? They stay here for now. So here we go then. This is it. We are now in a forbidden area. So we cannot be spotted and we cannot kill any of these enemies. So this is a pure stealth section. And it is it is generally easy enough because Sophia will come out with something that is just awesome. But incredibly, she hasn't told us till just now. Literally could have, could have told us earlier. Although we didn't see you earlier. We just seen you getting strangled. So... Right, so what you need to do then is press the left bumper on a patch of long grass and press the Y button to distract. What Sophie is going to do is get a bit of a smoky smoky the Joanne Mary. Or literally just smoking it itself. The guard's going to be like, hey, who the hell is that now? I can see a beam of light coming from the other patch of grass, but I'll ignore that. So as soon as the guard goes down here, we can head to the left. There we go. Go all the way here down to the end of the brick wall and then just wait until the guard, as soon as the guard starts turning his back and walks away, that's our cue to go. So that's our cue to go. Right, uh, you're going to need to do the same here with the middle patch of grass or the sort of right-hand right -hand side patch of grass right there. So do that one and the guard on the left will go and investigate it. So you can sneak past the guard on the right looking in the box, that's all good. And uh, what we need to do then is interact with the door. Not the door to the left of us now, but the smaller one right here. So get straight in there. That prism is magic. It is, but we're not there yet. Oh. 
All right, let's get to work. Through here, I guess. Oh, it's very high. Oh, wow. Stick to the wall. Keep going. It makes me dizzy. Oh, no! Oh, oh, oh. Oh. oh, shit. Bloody hell. You're right. There. Oh, all right, all right. I don't like your stunts, kid. I want to go. Yes, let's keep moving. We're here. We made it. You're all right, Hugo. I'm sorry. And it's at this point Hugo knew to bring some extra pants with him just in case. Because he would have had a turn in his pocket. Jesus Christ. Right, we're going to head forward. Of course, we do have a, a little bit more sneaky sneakings to do. So, oh, we're not getting up there. Are we were stuffing our way. Uh, but it's basically going to be a bit of long grass in just a bit that we can head into. The guard will start coming down on the left-hand side. So here is the long patch of grass. So just keep going. And just in front of us, you can see, already see the next patch. There it is. There is also a treasure chest as well. So you should be okay to grab that pretty quickly if you're needing some more items and some more things. Otherwise, we're just going to hide in this patch of grass for now. In the cathedral or whatever that is in front of us, there is literally nothing there except a guard patrolling around. So it's not the easiest way to go through. So on the left-hand side, you can already see the guard just starting to pop down now. And then as soon as he's done and he starts walking away... It, it may take a while, this one. I'm Grant Mitchell. Oh, right, there he's gone. He's gone. <laughs> now we can start following him. Don't worry about the guard in the church or whatever that is to the right. We'll just keep your sort of distance from all the gardo. And hide easily in this lovely bit of patch of grass right here. So again, just wait until he does turn the corner and he is past the, um, the bricks, just in case he will see you from there. So now we can climb up. That's all good. And he's actually going to stop here and then turn back around. But of course, there is another guard straight in front of us. So what we're going to do, when the guard on the left disappears and starts heading down the other way, we're going to climb through the window. So just keep waiting. And then for some reason, the guard on the right will not be able to see us somehow. Again, that comes, it comes to our advantage. Don't get me wrong. But there we go. So now we should be good to go. So head over to the left-hand side patch of grass. So he may actually spot you. But again, for whatever reason... He knows there are three people there, but he's gone, oh, it turns out it was nothing. Which is probably what I do as a guard, to be honest. <laughs> I'd just be like, nah, nah, it was nothing. I don't get paid enough to go around chasing people. Keep heading to the left-hand side with this patch of grass as well. There's going to be two big armoured boys that are going to be patrolling as well. So what we need to do then, we're going to have to do a bit of distracting here. So the patch of grass right in front of us, we're going to distract him. You can see the guard just to the left of the tree. And he's going to be like, Oh, somebody's smoking. Somebody's smoking without me. What's going on? Right. So head left, but instead of going to the patch of grass on the left, we're going to brave it and go straight through to the middle. As long as the armoured boy is not here, you should be able to just make it through behind this guard into the, this patch of grass. But like I said, there will be... There he is. So there's Mr. Armoured Boy on the left. That's why I was able to make that. So that's why... Uh, yeah, so I was able to make that. Otherwise, you can go into the left patch of grass. Do a distraction on the other guard when the armoured guy goes away. And then come over here. But we basically do need to be over here. Otherwise, there's no way past. Right. Now, we have to be careful. Because there's the armoured guy on the left-hand side, there's also one patrolling at the top. So what you need to do is go behind you, distract the guard, distract them with a piece of grass behind you. And eventually the guard's going to start walking away. As soon as he does that, hopefully the armored guy isn't looking. So that we can just immediately go to the next patch of grass. He may catch you, so just be very careful. He did, caught, he did catch me a couple of times. You can already see the armored guy there just at the top. So as long as he is walking in the opposite direction, which he is... We can just go straight through and we're all good. So we're going to climb straight in through to this open window. Again, if you need to, of course, there are plenty of patches of grass about. But otherwise, we are done with that section. So it's not too bad. It was just the two armored guards there who can be a little bit of a pain in the old third test eye koal. Right, interact with this door. 
And we're actually going to be grabbing the next feather now as well. So he's locked <laughs> she's locked everyone out. She's realised that's a mistake before. So just keep heading up anyway. I feel funny. I feel funny. <laughs> Me too. Me too, mate. My head's pounding because I keep getting stamped on it and thrown off cliffs and stuff. But as we head all the way up, we've, we're going to climb up. And the next feather is going to be just around the corner here. So, everyone! I am bald. Well, that's not really a, you know, that's not really a thing. But uh, there we go. There's the next feather. It's on the rock. We're all good. It looks like tiger bread. Mmm. Oh, I do like a bit of tiger bread. Uh, but it's not tiger bread, because it is a bird. And it's actually called uh, tiger bread bird. Barn owl. Yeah, close enough. Right. Now we can just drop straight down. Again, make sure that the big armoured guy is not around. I kind of didn't check that one, so I got, got away with that. Uh, so, as long as he's not around, we can just basically go straight forward for another cutscene. This ends this section. Friends and children. Today. Open your mind and heart. It is so, there's nothing to do in this area except stay in line and, uh, you know... <laughs> you know, you're really wondering what the hell's going on. Yeah, this is why I just get weird, creepy vibes. Anyway, all you got to do is just fall in line and just do exactly as they do. I don't think there's any time you can get really caught out or anything, so relax. You know, poopy pants, relax. Because, uh... Part of the order. This place belonged to them. Centuries ago, a child was born on this land. His heart was blessed by the sun, from which he inherited the flame that rules everything. And so was born the child of fire. What? His flame shone over the world. He blessed it with his perfume, his laughter, his joy. Of all places, Lacuna was his home. It became a land of life and peace, a place to heal, to thrive. Lacuna became a cradle of light. But light tempts evil. And evil knows no mercy. Come. A child on a throne. In an order temple. It's him, the child of embers. Take your place at our sides. Look, the drawing. It's the carrier of the macula. That fresco was in Mother's laboratory at home. Please kneel. Evil found the child inside these very halls. It fed on his fire, weakened it, marked his flesh with coal black scars. His mother's arms couldn't warm him anymore. And so his light faded, almost entirely. And the child of fire turned into the child of embers. Lord. A dark era began. Men forgot about him. But we did not. This flame is the last gleam of his light. Our hope. And now, two of you, a woman and a child, will carry it through his night. You. Your heads are bent. Your humility honors you. You will walk his flame through his darkest hours. Take it. You will walk in his steps. Know the cold that bites the flesh. The drowning in the absence of light. The uncertainty. You will see the child die through the eyes of his mother. You will be the victim and the witness. Keep that torch alive at all costs. The carriers have been chosen. Take your places. What do we do? We have to play along. Let's cross. Go forth and bring him the light. Much depends on it. This is unreal. It's Those gone. frescoes. The plague. They think it was caused by the child's death. So they don't know the macula? I don't think so. They interpreted all this. They made a god out of the carrier of the macula. Amicia, the water will put out the torch. I think it's part of their ritual. 
drowning in the absence of light. <laughs> I'm cold. It's over. We'll soon warm up. <coughs> it was horrible. But you did it. I thought I was drowning. Calm down. You're fine now. No, I'm scared. The child is gone. <gasps> Just walk. I'm with you. He's dying in his mother's arms. Evil has won. Centuries pass. Famine, war, and plague descend on us. He dreams of a fiery reborn. You are back and your torch is gone. You are not alone anymore. The child must meet his mother again. His embers glow in the dark. I am the mother, and I welcome him. Pass it to me. You did well. The child the must rise again. again. Hear me, child. I am not barren anymore, for your flame lives in me. I am the mother. Become the phoenix, the child of fire reborn. Join us. Blow on these flames. <gasps> So somehow Sophia managed to <laughs> come with us, even though everyone else has got a kid with them and she's on her own. Well, whatever ha whatever helps, doesn't it? So what we can do is just follow Sophia again. Remarkably, nobody else is just looking up, you know, with the corner of their eye, blind tunnel vision and stuff, and going, "Oh, you can't go through there, mate. You can't. You got to chant into a fire for some bloody reason." Uh, but anyway, we're through the door. Things waiting. <laughs> What's all this? Are we the first to come in here? Oh, a tent! You're right. It looks untouched. Too sacred for them, maybe? Do you know whose room it is? It is. It's Basilius's room. Just imagine. He was living here. Playing here. Sitting where you sit. Isn't that astonishing? Yes. And he loved tents. Just like you. You love tents? Me too. He had a phoenix. Yes. And this is the room with the old protector achievement. Now, it's going to take about five or six minutes, but basically all we have to do is interact with every item possible in these next set of rooms. So I'll obviously tell you what to do. First of all, we're going to interact with the rocking toy horse straight in front of us. So you have to make sure to interact with absolutely everything. And that is what will get us the old protector achievement. It starts now, but it'll end in about six or seven minutes. So directly in front of us again then, just to the right, is this um, bed. Looks like a coffin more than a bed, but uh, we'll, we'll take it. King King Basil? Well, that's where the herbs and spices come from then, doesn't it? King Italian Mixed Seasoning. It has a ring to it. So, right where Sophia is standing to the left before heading through the door, make sure to interact with these... Um, <laughs> they look like odd shapes, but they are supposedly just doll toy things. So, uh, don't try to think of anything else. Now we can head through the door. They're the only three things in this room that we need to interact with so far. This game too. Come, we've barely started. Wow, that's... So into the next room we go, and then what we're gonna do is go automatically straight in front of us here to interact with the armor. Now this is 
um, Italian mixed seasoning herbs sister. Alio. 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 She was his protector. Protector? The carrier's personal guard. Like me for Hugo. She looked strong. So from here, and apparently we're walking away, Sophia smells or something. Have a look to the left and you can see all of these toys uh, in this little basket. So that's the next thing to make sure to interact with. Of night. I would have loved to meet them. And when we're done sweet talking about the toys, go past where Sophia is standing before heading through the door. There's two things. The first is here on the left, this big uh, sword and spear rack. Look at the axe too. I wonder if they were put to use. They built this place to avoid it. The carrier draws attention. Valuable tiny creatures. <laughs> and then we can interact with the box right where Sophia is standing just before we head through the door. Vax tablets. Oh, but you can't call them tablets now because uh, parents, uh, people who don't have kids will get so annoyed. Tablet? My kid won't be having tablets. iPads? Disgusting. I'm telling you now, if you're going to have a toddler, an iPad is going to be the best thing that ever happened to you. It gives you peace for at least an hour. It's awesome. So don't knock it until you've had a kid. Right, into the next room then. It's a beautiful looking area. Somehow growing flowers and stuff. I know what you mean. Oh, look. Huh, that bird again. Its shape. It's the order symbol. The phoenix is the order. It's just that. Um, sorry, boy. But no. That explains why it stands above the child on their frescoes. They thought they were better than him. They didn't care about him. It doesn't change why we're here. Come, let's finish this first, right? Hmm. So we can just turn around, go through the door. There's nothing to interact with in here. I thought this was going to be the end of the level and I thought I'd missed it, but uh, oh no, 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 no. So into this next room, this is where we are going to get the achievement. A lot of things we are going to grab. So eventually Sophia's going to ask you to come over. Don't go over though, just uh, keep interacting with everything. So first things first, we're going to go all the way to the back of this room and just interact with the door first. You have to interact with other stuff in order for the next button, button prompts on things to appear. So you have to interact with the door first of all. And as you can see, that's gone mighty well. Right. Go to the right there, you can already see uh, the next button prompt. What, were they making in these things? what are they making in these things? Probably drags, mate. This Looks like a centrist. meth lab. Go to the left, interact with the next set of meth. I, I mean, it's not meth. It no. Sorry, I've got I've got a bit of a lisp. I meant mess. It's a mess. Sorry. I apologize. Autocorrect of the mouth. Uh, keep going down, and already you can see on the left there the next button prompt. So we're going to interact with that. Now, that is a bong. I don't care what the uh, I don't care what you say. That looks like a bong. Where where are you where Sophia is standing directly in front of us? That looks just like a pizza oven or something. I don't, you know, doesn't look doesn't look fantastic. But hey, you'll eat anything. I I'll eat anything anyway. Uh, so now we are going to go past Hugo to the opposite side of the room and interact with. Go past the sack of potatoes on the floor and interact with whatever bowl of grassy dust crap that is. Again, not me a clue. Right, from here then, what we're going to do is interact with the other door, just to the just to the left of where we were. And of course, that's gone mighty well, hasn't it? And now we can interact with Hugo. This is okay to interact with Hugo here. I'm sure they heard him too. Hey, I know things aren't turning out the way you expected, but... Nothing ever changes, Amicia. But Aelia wouldn't let them hurt him, right? You... You let for done? No! I... I tried to stop him, but... I, I know. You tried. Sorry. And then after this bit, you're gonna go back around to... past the pizza oven type rat thing, and you're gonna interact with this curtain here to, uh, in order to move upstairs. Come on, Hugo. What is this? No door. Some sort of uh, observation. Left or right? I mean, left or right, sorry. Uh, still, literal autocorrect of the mouth there, going a bit wrong. Uh, left up the stairs here. 
And we've just got a couple more things to interact with in this room, sorry. I thought it was the uh, bottom room, but it is the top room. So before interacting with Sophia, make sure that we've interacted with everything to grab the achievement. First of all, we're going to interact with this great direct in front of us. And I tell you what, the story gets actually intense from now. If it was already intense before, oof, we're finding out a lot of stuff we don't really want to. I may have a lead. What are you, Sophia? A dog? And anyway, head to the left. Sorry, when she said, I have a lead. <laughs> Okay, what do you want? Do you want to walk on all fours? Yeah. Interact with this, uh, what kind of looks like a wine bit. It looks, it, it looks more like scrolls, but that looks more like a wine rack in all fairness. Just using scrolls as an excuse to hide their alcoholism. Which, we've all done it. And we've all got it. And that should be the last thing that we've uh, unlocked and interacted with. Giving us the old protector achievement. Interact with all the old protector stuff. Now we can go ahead and talk to Sophia. And then after this, basically what's going to happen is the Count and Countess are going to come in and start doing all that. A wimba way, a wumba way, hum, nom, 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 you know, cruddy crap um, in the pool of water. So all we're going to do is just sneak down this next linear path, get out of here, and end the chapter. Then we're on to chapter 10. We're on the double digits, baby. Careful, it's a big cat. May this putrid water seal our determination. To stand by your side. Day and night. I feel your sickness. I share your pain. We will protect you. We will care for you. I am the father. I am waiting for you. I am the mother. I am waiting for you. Join us. Whenever you feel ready, we are. How can they stand in that water? They look so eager to have this child. It's not this so wrong. Let me just thank me. So what we're doing then is, as soon as we get to the end, we're just going to go to the left underneath. There's the Wimberway partners. You just go underneath. Yeah, it's a bit poopy in here, but, you know, better than being <laughs> potentially stabbed to death there by the Count. It does look like an angry bald man, so don't risk it. It's too scary, but he would have seen the flowers. Keep talking about it, please. The tree smelled so nice. It had branches like hair. Looks so gentle. Go on. And the water. It felt like it could clean anything. Not like this one. The... <laughs> that was. <sighs> Spend a full week at sea with my crew. Changes your notion of stench forever. That was enough for me. All right. Like nothing happened. Welcome to chapter 10, Bloodline. Lovely. Now, this, personally for me, was not my favourite chapter. I don't know why, I just did not enjoy this chapter at all. There's nothing like particularly wrong or particularly challenging about it. I just, I don't know, just didn't want, I just didn't, this is the worst chapter for me out of the game. And it's not even that bad, so there's nothing too difficult or anything about it. You get into a few scraps, as is the norm. Um, other than that, it's, yeah, it's all good. So head obviously keeps straight here towards the bridge. I'd rather be a sinner and be free. So I escaped, I joined my father and... We must be careful. If my dream is wrong, more things can be wrong. Hey, look around you. It's fine. We're centuries later, right? She's right. We're with you. On this brighter day, 
We celebrate the child of embers with our life, our joy, and the unity of the bond we all share with the mother. May the light of our souls wake the child from his deep slumber. May it lead him. Here we are. Looks like the real festivities are... So after all that, we're going to dive a little left here through the flowery archways. So take a left now. They don't need it, and we don't need them to know. I wish I was like them. Now there's a path here, we're gonna go to the left, so don't go up and right, go left and down. So do apologise there, it looked like I was going up and right, huh? <laughs> I tricked you. Please don't hate me. Uh, so just keep sort of sticking to the left hand side edge for now. Visions of it travelled through your dream, didn't they? And that sanctuary still had a lot to tell. Mm. We'll find something in that chapel. there. Hugo, wait. Would my knight conquer that tower for me? What? I want to see how you charge it. Claim it for me. Go. Yes. Stay in sight. Yes. Whoopsie doodle. There is a treasure chest. If we turn directly left now and have a look back, there is a little chest for you full, full of items. I will eventually get that. As soon as I'm about to turn the way, there we go. So I decide to now grab it. So you can go and grab that chest and then start walking up. But... You're chasing ghosts. Ghosts that scare him. We've gone through hell, Sophia. You can't imagine. I can't. The question is, does he need more? We have nothing else. I believe you. Fine. Be nice to old people. You're not that old. So is that tower ours yet? No, the door is locked. <sighs> locked from the other side. Time to take a little look. So, time to take a little look around, she says. So we're going to climb through the window here on the left. There's a treasure chest to our left full of obviously obvious del delicious items. So when we've, when we've grabbed that, we can obviously head straight up the ladder. Contract. I'm honoured. Don't forget we still have a real fort to conquer. Ah, oh, right. The fort and its chapel. Through here. And then after climbing across, we're gonna have to do some G-stringing. Some thong slinging. Some rock binging, just out of the window here, and just to the lock, there it is. So open up the gate, that will obviously open up the way for us. So you can grab, obviously, the pot and everything that we can do, and then what we can do is just simply jump down. Mind the drop. Mind the drop? Well, thanks, Amicia. No, I was going to go head first again. Uh, no, we're all good. So Sophia takes the harder way down. I appreciate a woman who takes the hard way down. <laughs> That was an unintended pun, actually. Uh, now we can head through the gate here and straight up the steps. If I, I think that was a bit of a stretchy pun, that one. Um, anyway, moving on. Enough of the puns. Ready to go? Yes. Let's get going. So, Hugo, you ever offered a flower to a lady your age? No. I prefer feathers now. Ah, moving on to something more exciting. Flowers, feathers... Feathers are better. Why? Because they make you fly. I get it. Well, don't fly away right now, please. 
Hmm, small problem here. How are we going to cross? Let's see down there. And of course, there's something out. Because nothing ever goes our way, does it? So interact with the post anyway. And what you're going to do is shoot the crossbow. And then uh, press and hold the white button to slam it down. Is it going to work? Hopefully. Well, it works. The golden staircase up. Will it hold? Just don't oh. jump on it. Wow. Look at that view. Beautiful. You're missing the sea already. Not yet, but it will come back. But you're not leaving now, right? No, not until I've repaid my debt to your sister. What? She didn't tell you. She saved my So just before heading right and around, what we're going to do is take a left here. Well, uh, well, at the bottom of the beach, as soon as we can, we're going to take a left. We're going to go all the way to the opposite end of the beach to just grab a couple of items in a chest. Looks very, very old. Yes. Who knows what story lies behind it? What happens to people when their boat breaks like this? Some survive. Some are taken by the sea and sleep forever, cradled by the waves. Nice way to put it. Then they become crab food. Ew! Thank you, Sophia. Anytime. Our fort. It's big. It's scary. That building on the left. It looks like our chapel, no? I think. Yes. Perfect. Let's keep following the coastline. Amicia, there's blood. Oh, excuse me, but you dropped some red wine. Oh, oh whoa. Okay. That's not red wine. That's red, red blood. Uh, he looked a little, uh, uh, we'll leave him sleep. Permanently sleep for a while. Oh boy. <laughs> right, now it's going to start getting into the old nitty of El Gritio. So again, at the minute, we're okay to just follow the path ahead. I got that one. The others ran away. Shit. Keep watch in case they come back to try and free the rest. I'll take this one back. Right, so the next part is automatic then. So what we're going to do is obviously jump down in just a minute after this is done. Uh, well. This isn't, uh, well, this hasn't gone to plan for her, is it? Uh, but as soon as we climb down, what's going to happen is we're going to crash slam through. Sophia's basically going to save our life. Cheers, mega. Them like animals. Really? But that won't stop us. No. No! Oh. I think. You made a mistake coming here. And when I said Sophia's going to save her life, I actually meant Amicia is going to be... She's basically just grown an extra ball sack there, because that is incredible. The balls on this chick is... Uh, on this girl are unbelievable. Bigger balls than me. I'd cry and say, please don't kill me. <laughs> Amicia's just like, nah, I'll just uh, shove you in the fire. Amicia. Tidy. Yes. Right, <laughs> we're climbing up, and now it's the start of these sections. It's the beginning. So again, like I said... What you can do... Now, obviously with the unhelmeted enemies, what we do is we're just going to chuck a rock square at the head. You can either try and stealth your way through this section, or if you just want to kill everyone quick as you can, lure enemies into the long grass and then just hit them with a big uh, with the big ignifer from the hand, 
and that will explode them dead. If you can, if you can, obviously, just try and... Oh, whoopsie doodle! If you can, of course, try and load two guards in, and obviously that'll uh, save up some grass and save up some ammo as well. I obviously messed up. I actually didn't mean to do that. There's one guy, as you can see, he tries to throw a grenade tar bomb at you. You can't hit him in the head, but you can hit him in the hand, which will explode him too. Uh, so, yeah, completely up to you. Obviously, you can just run straight past these enemies if you want to. And uh, break their line of sight. That's also another thing. That's that's also what you can do for the prudence skill as well. But a lot of the times, I end up just doing this. Get out of the fire, though, because fire can still kill you. So, if you're going to do this, be a lot wiser with it than I was right there. Uh, but that is literally what I do for the majority of the game. Until I get more crossbows later on. It is literally luring him into long grass. And burning him dead. I honestly don't know what I'm trying to attempt here, by the way. Uh, you're not going to stick a G-string pebble square in his head. He's more than none the wiser to it. Uh, so I'm just wasting ammo here. Um, <laughs> so don't, don't worry about trying to kill these guys. Again, there is literally a, gra a patch of grass I could have just used. Instead, we're going to climb up these steps. This is the way to the exit, mind. Um, but f and for some reason, I'm telling Sophia to uh, distract. There are going to be another bunch of enemies up here and a couple of archers at the top. So anytime you see the sort of circle ones at the top, make sure to get rid of those first. You want to try and kill archers as quick as you can. Otherwise, like I said, it's just a case of any unhelmeted enemies, hit them in the head. Anybody else with the, with the sort of guard sword signs, get them in the long patch of grass and burn them up. Burn them like bacon, girls. Oh, fuck it! Now, of course, what you can do is obviously do a, f a bit of exploration here, and uh, there's obviously quite a few items and bows and everything to pick up. So, uh, I headed up to this right side of the building, more or less just to get away from uh, the, the, the angry armoured man, to be fair. Yes, what you can do. But if you want to actually get out of here, we need to go to the building to our left. So, we can just jump down, providing it's safe for you when you've killed all enemies, or if you're still sneaking. Of course, I messed it up. You can obviously still do a lot of good sneaking um, and try and get away with it. But obviously, I messed up. That's why I've just gone straight into this. So, we need to get onto this building here, which is basically the middle one. Um, I mean, it is pretty much going to be probably easier if you just kill a couple at least <laughs> rather than try to stealth. Interact with the pole. Shoot your crossbow at the door and give that a big Y pull. Why, why, why? Noise. What's inside? Mind the drop. So for now, we're a bit safe. <laughs> that makes me very happy. 
So heading through, and we're just going to climb under here. We're going to be coming up to another feather now, actually. So we're going to climb up. This is pretty much a linear path anyway. So obviously we are just going to climb up. Feather will be coming up. We're going to uh, jump back down. In fact, we're not going to jump down yet. So what we're going to do is get um, pull this rope with the crossbow already on it. And then what we're going to do then is shoot. We're going to get Sophia to interact with the lever there on the left. And then when the chandelier comes down, or the chain starts rising up, sorry, we are going to shoot it. Yep. Yeah. Because there ain't no other way getting under here, apart from the big gap in the wall on the, on the left-hand side. So give it a pull. Shoot it with the crossbow. Give it a pull. That's going to slam open the doors for us. Dutchy on the left-hand side style. Agreed. So grabbing the next feather, then what we're going to do is head straight down the middle here. There's going to be a gap in the left wall that we're going to climb through now. So head left now. And keep head, sort of go to the right of the tree right here. And head, start heading down. And this is where the feather will be. As soon as we drop down, the feather is going to be just in front of us. Just around the corner, just in front of us. I think I said about three things that were kind of wrong right there. So I do apologise, but there is the next feather anyway. Because what I meant to say was, head down, go to the left of the tree, head down, turn around the corner, and there it is. So there we go, so we've got that one. So that one is the raven. The ravens that want to kill you dead, because they are man-eaters. So that's the next feather. In a couple of minutes, we're going to grab the next souvenir as well. Uh, but for now, we can just carry on. And we're going to start doing a bit of... Oh, I'm going to try and do a bit of stealthy stealthy after we have a look at the workbench. See if there's anything that's worth doing. Now, for me, what I would personally do is go and get the crossbow next. All crossbow upgrades. Uh, the reason being, uh, with the third one, you can obviously hold more bows and you can uh, pick up... Uh, anytime you kill an enemy, you have a, a pretty good chance of picking that same bow up. So that... Um, because in the end, it's it's like your best friend. You thought Hugo was your best friend? And it's all about the crossbow, girl. Now, if you didn't watch the cutscene, and you're wondering why Sophia's pissed, well, you'll just have to watch the cutscene, because, man, that got insane. So what we're doing then, we're going to have a quick chat to Hugo over here, a quick chat to Sophia, and then we're going to go and grab the next souvenir before heading on. You two run away, and I... I didn't want you to. It was wrong, yes, but I thought this place would give us a chance. I thought... You wouldn't have to see us like this. Just go talk to him. I need some time. I understand. Hugo. I know you're upset. And I know you wanted to help. But killing people, even bad people. They're just like the Inquisition. It's like Rodan. They do whatever they want to other people. And sometimes they force us to act, yes. But just let me take that decision, please. All this, it's not fair. I know. It will stop once we find out how to heal you. Come here. I think we owe Sophia an apology. Sophia? I'm sorry. I am too. Yeah. So let's go grab another souvenir, shall we? Ready for our adventures of pure hurt and death and hatred. Turn to the left. We're going to have to go through the archway, of course. And then what we're going to do is pull the rope once again. We're going to shoot the crossbow at the door directly in front of us. Or just above the door, even. And then we're going to pull that down on the... 
It's the grate rather than the door, of course. Smash that one down, that opens up the way for us, and that's exactly what we want. It's exactly what we want, brother. Oh, take a nice little casually joggy stroll over here. Yeah. Jump up. Jump up and get down. Jump, 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 jump. I head to the right immediately. And right here is where the souvenir is. Another tree. Um, but it's got a whole bunch of um, chained up slaves in it. So it's a bit more eerie than the other tree from earlier. <laughs> a ragdoll. There was a child here. Charming. A child slave? That's possible? It's not, is it? I'm sorry. They took their door away. You should put it back. They couldn't even bring it with them. But maybe they escaped. That's what's most important. Yes. Come, Hugo, let's leave. So, after getting depressed about looking at chained up slaves, which again is it's pretty, um, it's pretty horrifying actually. A ragdoll. Now we can just go back the way we came, so we're gonna... From here, we're going back obviously to the left, so we can jump back down. Jobs are getting. And then we're gonna go to the right. Now we're heading towards the big castle in the background. There is going to be a knife in this area as well, so we're gonna, I'll obviously tell you exactly where it is, because we do end, I do end up grabbing it this time. Now, again, this is one area where I did try to sneak, but uh, I kept getting found out, and <laughs> so, in the end, we're going on a murderous rampage. So if that is the case, and you do have to go on a murderous rampage, just try, literally try and kill as many enemies as you can, because it makes your life a whole lot easier. Uh... So for the exit, if you wanted to just go straight for the exit, all you needed to do is head all the way down to the end, jump into the water on the left, and get through. But of course, there's uh, quite a few items to grab, tools, pieces, and a knife to get as well. So as you can see, I just uh, sliced that guy up with the old Ignifer Sling Sling. The Sling Slong of my wing. Mmm, hot wings. Man, nah, such a fat git. That's all I do is talk about it. That's all I do is talk and think about food. Sorry. Right, so you can kill this guy. Of course, he's got no helmet on, so that's pure unlucky. Um, but for now, uh, we're going to just head into this little area. You know, I was just seeing if I could <laughs> kill him. Uh, I'm going to unlock this treasure chest. Again, you don't obviously have to get every treasure chest because there are plenty about... And now it begins anyway. So, like I said, um, on the main path, there's going to be a building on the right with a bunch of hanging bodies. And that is where the knife is. But if you get found out, that's if you want to go and grab the knife and just run to the end. If not, you can simply just go ahead and kill these guys. And that's exactly what we're going to do. The building is just in the right. So, where we are now, it's to the left of us. So, that is the building where the knife is. So, if you want to grab that... You can go and grab that now, and then run to the exit if you want. Completely up to you, however you want to play. Obviously, I've been found out, so I'm going to kill all these broskies. We really need to get out of this mess.
So, Captain Prickbag, we have one car left of the entire area. You can see how easy it was for me. Uh, don't worry about those guards down there for now. Again, like I said, we still haven't grabbed the knife. And it's not in this building. Um, it's just a cheeky bunch of dead bodies there hanging by their one arm. So, <laughs> the only way... Ah, oh, see? See, could have died. Could have died. But I got invincible mode on. <laughs> so, all I was looking for... So this is the building. What we're right outside now. This is the building where the knife is. But we're just going to get rid of this guard for now. Just to make it, you know, it just makes it a whole lot easier for you. And of course, if you kill all the guards, you get more progress on your aggressive skill. So that's why it's always worth doing. Um, uh, potentially, sort of, if you just want to go for one, to get one skill at least unlocked during one playthrough. If not, it doesn't matter. You've got a hell of a long time in the second playthrough to do it anyway. Oh, God damn it! Is it going to be a guy that's coming out of the building to the right of where we want to go? So, there he is. But, of course, you can just G-string him to death. Boom! So, there's the knife. Chilling on the table. That'll be good for the next secret chest, which will be number 8 out of 10. And we're going to head up as well, and we are going to get a cheeky bit of toolage and some peaceage underneath this wallage. What do we have here? Be careful how you land. So if you manage to kill all the guards or you're still sneaking, obviously just very be aware of your presence. And then what we're going to do is start heading down the hill. So we're going to start heading down the hill. There will be one more guard. Just relax your rancho in, but you can easily kill him because he's one of those tar fire big chunky boy grenades. Um, you can have a look here on the left as well to grab a crystal off the rock. There it is. Not a lot of these rocks in here, so if you need one of those, that's where you can grab one. And then, obviously, you can explore at your own leisure as well. So if you want to have a look in the buildings on the left to see if there's any chests and stuff. Because there's no doubt that I have definitely missed, you know, quite a few. So, you know, don't think that I've just done a perfect 100% run in terms of grabbing chests and tools and everything. There would have been an enemy up there. And we could have exploded him lovely, but I, I'd already killed him. Here's a shame. Right, old broski bobs, let's head towards the exit. He's gonna see us, that's fine. He's gonna go to throw summon at us. We're gonna fire him up. Wow. Well, buddy, you need to do better than that. If you're gonna try and lob something, at least lob it straight away. I, mean, I don't wanna give all the enemies ideas, but there we go. So we can just jump down here to the right in the water. Let us interact now with this treasure chest. Grab what you can, remember to top up everything that you can, and then head straight through. And we're going to be going through a cheeky little crack bag in the wall. Fine. Dancing, the music, flowers. Hey, the windmill. Hey, Hugo. What? I know it's hard, but please stay focused. Yes. That's our way in. This fort is bad. It probably is, but we're still together. We are. Make sure there's no one still breathing in the cart. They're right there. They all look pretty dead to me. Make sure. Hey, what? Bloody Who you? God! Oh. Amicia! No, no. Kill you! Uh, uh, get your hand! Oh. 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 No, please! Put them away! You're right. <laughs> Thank you. Duh, Bastard. Amicia! 
Hugo, it's over. I didn't know what to do. It's all right. You did well. You let us do it. We have to go now. Come on. How are you doing? Hey, thanks, girl. You saved my life, girl. I owe you one. In fact, now we're level. Right. Well, since you saved our life, let us chill out and, uh, you know, upgrade some stuff if you can. Try not to get yourself killed. I will. Let's move on. Much better. So? Checked all of them yet? Almost. You were right. One was still alive. There are so many! So here we are in the courtyard, and as you can see, it's looking a bit uh, a bit worse for wear right now, isn't it? So, uh, get your hand again for out, throw it at the brazier right in front of us. That's going to light a little bit of a way. Sophia is popping out there, and all of a sudden, she's got this incredible other secret power, which she didn't tell us about until we actually need it. So, you know, fair dues to you. Yeah, son of a beautiful Baghdad. Baghdad, no, I, no, I won't call you beautiful Baghdad. Uh, but anyway, there you go. So she sh shines a light. Somehow that works. It's fantastic. It's probably wouldn't work in real life. Genuinely, I think Mythbusters should get onto this stuff. Can it work? If we were in a plague right now, would that work? Because it'd make life a hell of a lot easier, wouldn't it? Right, so we've dropped down. We're all good. We're going to head now to the left. Oh, oh, straight into the fire. That's all good. Obviously, what you need to do is press the left bumper and then the wide bumper. Now, what we're going to do is go for another secret chest. So, throw a hand igniter. It might have to... No, you should be able to get away with the hand one. There we go. Again, aim with the fire. Left bumper. Y button to refroked. So, let's refroke it. And go straight forward. We are heading in the secret direction of the secret chest. Secretly, of course. So, no secret knows about secret bobs stealing secret pants. Um... Obviously, you have to get off. You have to tell her to stop in order to open up chests and things. Oh, man. Rats are squeaky and... <laughs> They're so spooky and scurry, man. Right, so what, you need, well, what we're going to do is get Sophie back on the light. Back on the light. And we're going to go basically straight through the door behind us. What is technically behind us right now. Uh, you, For some reason, you can actually recycle and grab stuff. Uh, but you can't actually open a chest. There we go then. We've gone to this bit. We can tell it to stop. We're going to head up the steps. And this is going to be secret... Uh, secret chest 8 out of 10. Like I said, you should have at least the one knife on you now. It was only chapter 9 where you could have the problems. The rest of them should be absolutely golden dandy nugget bags. Once again, of course, we are going to need Sophia to Sophia. Help us out, please, Annie Pie. Thank you. All. Right, get to the next part then. And there we go, we can stop that. Right, what we're going to do is throw another hand ignifer. The old stignifer. Oh, well, we're going to throw it. Right, and once again, go over to the next part as well. Now, just behind us, where the rats are. We're going to keep going because there is a uh, little bunch of pieces that we're going to be grabbing now as well. Uh, it's just by, just by the rock. So keep going. You can just see it just by the rock there. Hold the fire. So grab that. Now, yeah, and obviously, as Sophia just said, don't go too far out of the light because it will uh, disappear and you'll die. Right. Have a look to the right and you're going to see another brazier. Oh, sorry. We'll just... Um, Sophia, just... There's nothing I can do, honey. You're just going to have to walk it yourself. Oh, there we go. Thanks. Right. So to the right there, you can see another brazier that we're going to ignore for with. Let go! 
deal. And then, yeah, so, get a path going. So we are coming up into the courtyard now, which will be, uh, we're about 20 minutes away from completing this chapter. So, have a look at the treasure chest. Any goodies? Any bees? Any flies? Nope, nothing, then we're all good. Right, so, th there it is. That's what we need to, that's where we need to go. So, we're going to grab a stick. We're going to do this the old, or the old-fashioned way, like, by sticking an onion on our belt, which was the style at the time. But of course, what we're going to have to do, actually, is make it so we can get through the fire. So we need an extinguish. We need to get through the fire. Because, of course, if you get over to the fire, well, you're screwed because there's no way through it. <laughs> so uh, there's nothing else here. Again, obviously, just make sure you've got everything topped up as usual. Which, as it turns out, I need a lot of things topped up. And as it turns out, we're not actually grabbing a stick. We're going to use the rats. So we're going to get some Hugo powers going in a second. So we topped up these things. And then we're going to press down on the T-pad, I'm going to control the rats, and we're going to try and kill a couple of guards. Now, this does get a little bit trickier, because the guards are more aware of rats, so they know that there's going to be a lot of light about. You can tell where the light is, because it looks like sort of red, uh, like red little beams on the floor, as it were. Um, so the only place that you really can go with these rats is heading up the steps, and there's only a couple of places which don't have, a, uh, which don't have any light. So, as you can see, I would j just failed Mega, so we're going to head up the steps, around up the steps. Yeah, I really could have done this one a lot better. Because as you can see, I'm not getting that guy. He is full of, I mean, literally a rat could have just snuck through and bit him on his nuts, couldn't he? At least giving him some pain and stuff. So, well, there's one at least, so he's not going to hes not gonna be a problemo. And uh, that's... Pretty much, there might only be, I think, one more that we can potentially do. Um, as if we head to the other side, there should be another two that we can do, and then that's pretty much it. Right, so here we are then in the courtyard. So now we can finally grab a stick. Now we can finally do that. And we can just make our way in. It's not so confusing, but of course, if you wanted to try and grab as many items as you can, then obviously you're going to be wanting to do a lot of exploring. I'm going to try and sort of minimize it since uh, we're still going to grab a few items and things on the way, um, but there's really not a lot else. In terms of like secret chests and stuff like that, there's not a really lot going on. So from here then, what we're going to do, so straight in front of us is the exit. That's where you need to go, directly in front of us. That is the that is the big courtyard that we need to get through. But we've got a few things to do first. A bunch of rats. Hopefully there's, the rats won't be chilling out for you. Sometimes, even in the dark, even in a bit of light, they can sort of be around weirdly. So go back down the steps. We're going to get Sophia to whip us out a light. Oi, mate, you got a light on, yeah? Yes, thanks very much. And there we go, get through to the other side. Now be careful, um, when you tried the first time I played through this, I accidentally knocked out a couple of these lights, making it almost impossible for me to get through. So just be careful, if you're fighting some enemies, try not to knock out the lights. So there's a bunch of items in here, which we can grab. Yum, yum, yum. Sophia, you are yum, yum, yum. We're going to go outside. Again, that is the way, but we're not going to just go through towards the exit just yet. And obviously the guard cannot kill you anyway, so don't worry about big broski babs. The old kebab head. <laughs> I don't know what I'm attempting, actually. I, I th in fact, I was trying to extinguish him. And as it turns out, I, uh, <laughs> I just made his I made his hell head smell like fart in a jar for five seconds. Right, a bit pointless, <laughs> so we'll come back. Right, grab the pot from here. We're going to go into the next building now. There is going to be a guy here. In this next building. There he is. But if you can't grab him, don't worry. Again, if you want, you can obviously just throw an ignifer, ignifer pot at him. And that'll kill him dead. If it is um, one of the enemies. 
uh, one of the uh, the helmeted armor enemies. So light the path and get through. There is, as you can already see, a gleaming chest path. But let's kill this guy first. Again, either use the crossbow. Like I said, the only reason I haven't used the crossbow much is just because we don't have that much ammo. Because I haven't crafted it yet. So that's why I don't use it until uh, a little bit later on in the game. So, there we go. Just in case you were wondering, there it is. So what we can do now, we're going to head out the other part of the building. What we're going to use, we are going to use the fat in a jar, the old odorous. And we're going to use it on the right hand side. And this is merely only to pick up. There's a crystal, as you can see, directly in front of us. That is the only reason we do that. If you end up going down there, you will pretty, you will probably pretty much die because there's nothing there. So don't worry about going down the ledge. Um, we can head up if you want. Again, like I said, I'm doing this purely on exploration and just grabbing some items as I can. Um, otherwise, if you're not, if you don't want to, you can literally just head straight through, extinguish the flame on the guard. The rats will end up killing him, and um, yeah, that'll do it. So obviously if you want to just skip forward a minute or so and see that instead of what wandering around trying to grab everything Then of course that's completely up to you, but we're getting it now anyway, so we're gonna make a path for the other way around Or oh, basically just just through the uh, opposite of this door You know and I wouldn't be a good guide maker if I didn't show you where most items were huh? I'd be terrible if I just turned on invincibility mode and got straight through to the end wouldn't be a very good guide now would it? But we are now getting through to the courtyard. So, if we turn to the left, just outside of here. Don't worry, there's no rats. Uh, there are rats down there that will attack you if you try and grab that crystal just down there. So, you grab this crystal here. Grab this uh, tool kit and piece kit and kit jit. But what we are going to do after we grab all this, we are going to grab that crystal. Now, you need to be quick. Don't hang around. You're literally just going to grab it as quick as we can. So, start sprinting down. Grab it as quick as you can and then run immediately back because the rats will kill you dead. So get straight into the fire and there we go. So job done. There we go. Uh, there is a guard, of course, right in front of us. So if you want to kill him, obviously you can. Um, he... Oh, in fact, it is the guard. Sorry, it is the guard that we... It is the way that we need to go. So what we got to do then is we are going to extinguish... So we're going to extinguish his flame first. There we go. That'll do him. And apparently just another one for good measure because we hate him. We hate you and we hate your guards. Right, use the uh, extinguish on the flames right in front of him. And that will get the rats going. Slicing him, dicing him, slamming him dead. Yum yums. Delicious bows. Right, now we can just make our way through. Crystal right there as well if you want. But there are a bunch of rats in the way. So you don't have to grab it if you don't want. I end up leaving it. Otherwise, we'll just get a stick, get a fire, and start heading straight through the middle. Uh, he looks uh, a little bit fleshy <laughs> right now. Looking a little fleshy. Right, so now we can get rid of the stick. So what we are going to do from here, we are going to use a hand ignifer, throw it over to the torch and straight in front of us, and then we're going to use the um, Sophia's uh, secret power, as it were, to get that going. But what we're going to do, there's basically a guard that is patrolling the way in uh, where, where we're standing now. There is a guard. You can probably see him in the background there. He is what we're going to need. We need him to jump down and then we need to extinguish his butt. I mean, not, not literally unless uh, he's had some pretty bad rat poisoning and some rat food and his ass is on fire. Then we're going to need to extinguish his ass. Uh, but if he's not coming down, make sure to distract him. Honestly, this will just make things a whole lot easier for you, of course, if you're playing with invincibility mode off. So, what we need to do is get him distracted. He will patrol up and around. Uh, he will appear somewhere. So, as soon as you see him, give him a little tap on the head <laughs> with one of your rocks. <laughs> it's class. I think it's still hilarious. So, anyway, now he's going to see us. He can find us. Now he's going to come back down. So, it's as simple as just waiting. Get your extinguish. Ready? Extinguish, man! Ah, oh, come on, mate. You haven't got all day. We want to bloody finish this stuff, man. we got homes to go to. There we go. So he's jumped down. So wait until he gets about halfway in. And I mean, I don't know how stupid he is, but there we go. Extinguish him. And that's the rats all done. Right. Now we're going to get a, a path going from the torch there on the left-hand side of the sort of archway. 
Uh, make sure to grab this bit of a crystallite or the uh, palamanamana isamala goose. A big fat goose. And then just head around. The exit is to the left here, but we need to get up on top where the guard was patrolling in order to open up the big castle door, which is fine. So make sure to open up the path again. Keep heading down and around. Don't go through to the left here. What we need to do is just climb up where the guard jumped down. And that'll do. So jump up. Now, be careful up here because some of the rats, there they will only be a couple sort of, you know, crawling around. But they still can attack you and you can st still can die. So, as you can see, there's not that many there. But, you know, even, with the, even when there's a couple of them, they'll still fudge you up, man. So, uh, we're going to grab a stick and we're just going to go straight for it. So... Go through. There is a chest on the left here if you want to. If there's no rats about, it's definitely worth uh, just grabbing. Or we can grab it on the way back. Probably easier to grab it on the way back if you wanted. Uh, apparently, I don't even take my own advice with that one. Uh, which is fine. But we're going to head up the steps. So, as you can see, there's one rat there. So, I just bolted it. I just ended up bolting it right there. A couple did chase us. I don't know why Sophia's running. Apparently, she's got nothing to worry about since nobody's trying to get her. Um, so we need Sophia's light now. Again, if there are no rats up here, then it's all good. You can just pretty much run straight through to the door and uh, get rid of... Um, open up the door, open up the castle gates. Otherwise, we'll just run. And we finally made it. Well, we've almost finally made it. I'm having a bit of trouble for some reason. There it is. So it's right in the room with the chest that we were just in. So we're going to open up the gate now. Amicia, Milo's right. Oh, good stuff, mate. Right, head to the opposite side of the castle wall. Two guards are going to appear, so we're going to get out a hand extinguish. There's one guard. Whoop. Death by him. And the second guard. Come on, let me extinguish your ass, man. There we go. And that's death number two. Oh, and an explosion as well for good measures. That get, gets rid of a good couple of rats as well. Now, there may be a third guard that could appear. Um... Uh, for me, there was no third guard this time, but he may be checking out the area and he may um, be having a look at the sort of... Yeah, so he may be having a look at the area. So what you can do, if there is a third guard there, extinguish the two torches so that the rats kill him. And then, of course, you can just hand Igna for them yourself to get back down. Or, if he, like I said, if he is there, what you can do um, is grab a stick, drop down, and then you can just throw the stick with the fire at him. That can also kill him dead as well. So, a couple, uh, couple of ways to kill this guard if he is there for you. Like I said, he's not there for me, but if he is there for you, sometimes he'll be wandering around this area, so you can either extinguish him or throw a stick with a fire at him, and job done. But, like I said, we're good to go. Light the path and head on through. We finally made it. This, this chapter just seemed like it went on forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. No, no, like ever. Do this together. Careful, it's barely bright enough for my prism now. Right then, so this next one is just a big fight scene. You versus a whole bunch of guards. So you can just do what you've been doing before. There's going to be some oily explosives about. There's also going to be, well, in just a bit anyway, we're going to fight in this little courtyard area. And obviously you can do the same thing we've been doing in terms of the pots, the crossbows, with, with Ignifer in it. There's going to be like flower bags for the big armoured enemies, the one with shields, so they'll so you can kill them, etc. Um, so yeah, just, just... Whatever you've been doing for now, you will be able to do that when you've been fighting in just, in just a bit. Uh, we are coming up to the end of the chapter, so we've just got a few little bits of chat in here to do. And then one big fight is coming up. It's the only one where she appears. So, what? This chapel was dedicated to her? To the protector. Aelia was just filling a position. That was her function among the Order. They wanted to punish her. Let's look down there. Where the hell is Milo? I don't know. Aelia's more important. A 
crypt. There's nothing. Let me look. Still doesn't tell us where Milo is. Well, it looked like his work was done anyway. And then Ratboy gets all pissed off, and then he's all like, rah, have some rats up your ass, mate. And then, um, yeah, that's it. You get rats up your butt, and that's it, you're dead. But that is Bloodline, that is Chapter 10. Honestly, finally complete. That done my titty bags in in the end. And now we're on to, finally, Chapter 11 out of 17. The Cradle of Centuries. Now, this one is... It's gonna take about 40 minutes or so. Not too bad. Not too bad, this one. It's only really sort of chapter 14, 15, 16, and 17 are really short chapters. So if you're wondering how we're gonna get to 17, it's easy. But this one is more of a big puzzle. Um, big puzzle uh, chapter rather than a big fight one like we did in the last one. So what we're gonna do then, we're gonna get Sophia to light the way as we begin. There's there's no chill walk in this time for the start of a chapter. God no. Oh, God no, mate. So just keep getting Sophia through each light. Uh, if we head to the right here, I believe there is a chest that we are going to grab. Uh, just to the right in this little gap in the gap in the fence. The gap in the wall. Why do you have a gap in your balls? Uh, sling the first straight in front of us. Sorry, I don't know why I'm singing so much in this guide. I'm generally, I'm just piss awful as well, so I do apologize if you've probably already quit, given up, and told me to shut up, I know. So I do apologize. Anyway, grab the light, and we're going to walk straight through the rat bags until, of course, we get to the next section. Uh, this is a level with a big puzzle door as well. A lot of it's very easy, but it may take, if you're trying to do it on your own, it may take you a few attempts to realize what's happening. Opening the way here with Sophia. Because we're going to grab this chest. Oh. If we are going to grab this chest, you don't even need the path lit up there. <coughs> Excuse me. Right. After grabbing everything in the chest, now we can light the way. 
And there is going to be a little torch just on the left that we can smash open, or a little brazier, sorry, rather. So we don't even need Sophia just yet. But thanks very much. All right, there's a chest here on the right. Make sure to grab that as well. And obviously, like I say, always keep things topped up as you can. Then, like the way, again, you're going to probably need a bit of tar as well. Either that or just use Sophia again. I mean, you might as well use Sophia. She's my favorite pirate of the Caribbean now she is. Move over, Johnny Depp. But you're close second. Right, light the way. Oh. Yeah, thanks very much, Hugo. I don't know what you said. More rats are going to appear. There we go. So that gets rid of a lot of people and also a lot of light. So head to the right. And we are now going to finally be into the cart that we're going to be pushing for just a little bit. There is a chest here on the left and a whole bunch of little items. So again, obviously it's always worth grabbing them. There we go. A whole bunch of booze. <laughs> I think we need it, to be honest. Starting to get a little stressed out now, you know. Anyway, there's the cart then on the right-hand side. So what we're going to do is use a crossbow with the ignifer, shoot the box directly in front of the cart, or where the cart is. And we're obviously going to either tar the way, or we're going to use Sophia's path. Again, like I said, save yourself some tar ammo and just use Sophia. My little angel pie, Sophia. <laughs> I'm just joking. She's badass, man. I like a badass. I like a badass girl. Right, that'll do. So what you do is interact with the pole, eventually, somewhere. And then, of course, pull the cart. Now, what you need to do is get, it's on a bit of a downhill slant, so you're going to need to run after it. So as soon as it starts, make sure to run after it. Here it comes. Here it comes. Everyone's going to turn 30 this year. As soon as it goes, I mean, it's not too fast. It's not too bad, but you do need to uh, keep up with it just for a little bit. And there it is. So that knocks that over, and that's all good. Couple of items here, which is all good. We are going to be, yeah, in fact, we're not grabbing a, I thought we grabbed a souvenir here, but it's not a souvenir. We are going to start getting into the underground, the weird, the weirdness of life. So what are you going to need to do? You're going to need to pull it. And then what we're doing is going to the sort of left hand side. So from where we were, push it to the left. And then, as you can just see, like, the archway in front of us. We're obviously going to be going under that. We're getting there. The map. The carrier. He's the key. Oh, he's so old. He's been dead a long time. There will be something left. Something to save you. You don't care about me. Don't say that. You're everything. Hey, will you stop torturing yourselves, you two? This is hell. Yes. But we've got a lead. So we stick together and see this through. She's right, Hugo. We've got nothing else. I know. And I'm sure that there are survivors. Their palace is like a stronghold. True. It's the Count's duty to offer shelter to his people. Please. He's a real knight. And so when we get to the end, then, we can let go. We're going to grab our Ignifer sling. Have a look at the left-hand side of where the cart is and interact with the hay. Hey, hey. So, make a break for it, and keep going until you hit this next bit of torch. There we go, should be good. Nice, uh, nice sleeping man there. Permanently sleeping man. Sorry, love you. And we can now do the same thing, so hit uh, the another Rigna for Sling. I mean, if you can try and hit it first time, that'll also help. And uh, use Sophia there. Um, I think I'm going to use the tar this time, but either do that, use Sophia, it makes no difference. But this time I'm, I feel I feel like wasting some ammo or something, apparently. Do I? Yes, I do. So, there we go. We're going to make a little break for it. He's still going to need to use the next tar. And that'll light up the way for us. Do the same with this one on the right-hand side. That'll light up the way for us again. And now we can finally climb up. Now we are in... Now we're in the sub-chapter called Back to the Map. Back to the Map. And now we're going in to see a passage. I said back. Through the map, back, 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 back. Where are you? Where do you hide your most valuable treasure? Underground? Yes. He has to be down below. Uh, the map could be the entry point. Are we breaking it? Stay back, all right? Ready? Push! Oh, 
hallway. It's been sealed. Ah, uh, see, there's always a way to push some stuff under and get a random, weird, weak column and a weak bit of floor. Always an underground somewhere, whatever you're adventuring. I won't. Don't worry. So if you need some more items, just before heading to the left, head to the right in between the little gap here for some more delicious yum-yums. It's getting darker. I'll light it up. Yes, please. So there's no rats, but you need to hit an ignifer. That will basically light up the way now. Very creepy and spooky. Um, but from here, instead of just going straight for the time being, if we head directly left, you're going to find another big uh, treasure chest with tools and a bunch of pieces and some other stuff in it. Some sort of temple? It looks like it, yes. Into this next area, we'll take a little right, a little detour to grab another bunch of pieces. Uh, like I said, there's no rats or anything, so you don't have anything to worry about. Again, this is just more of a puzzle section, a little puzzle area. So on the right here is uh, some more things. It's like a little barrel full of explosive... <laughs> Might as well be explosive diarrhea by the looks of it. On to the right again, and there's another chest with another couple of items in there. So again, if needed, well, that'll always come in handy for you before we can head basically just straight through. And apparently it stinks. Kind of stinks worse than, uh, you know, a kebab after a big heavy night out and you destroy a toilet with it. You know, that kind of stink. Rat's nest stink. Let's see the rest. There was another blast here too. The gate's destroyed. It has to be her. Alia, she escaped the chapel. She destroyed all this. She wanted to take Basilius back. She forced her way through. We're on her trail. There's space behind. Let's try through there. We're really going through there. Don't worry. It held for centuries. Going deeper. Hopefully we'll catch up with her somewhere. We'll see. No. <sighs> Careful with the drop here. All right. Oh. Landslide. If that's her. Right, head down to the right. We're going to see another little chest that we can pick up and grab some more items. I tell you what, I'm having nightmares of saying, go to the right, pick up some more items, more items, more items, more items. I hate items from now on. Uh, right, we need to get our way in. Of course, it's not going to work. So what's going to happen is Sophia, with her big, beautiful, muscly arms, She's going to grab one of those oil barrels, stick it there, and then all you've got to do is chuck a sling ignifer at it. A, sl a slignifer. Yeah, I'll do it. Chuck it in, drop down. It could explode in a tank like that. Yes. Let's try it against that door. Really? Uh, these walls held long enough. But... I've done my fair share of blowing things up, you know. There. Now take cover. Amicia, you handle the ignition. Are we far enough away? Yes, just keep your head down. Damn! Damn! What? Damn! That was an explosion. So, we are momentarily going to be grabbing another feather. So turn to the right, grab another chest. One full of tools and pieces and yummy things. Um... But yes, from now we are going to grab a chest. So there's a bow on there as well, a bolt. Sorry, not a bow. And then if we have a look just underneath this pallet, what we're going to do is use an ignifer sling. Explode the crap out of that. That is some incredible explosives. And we're going to head just underneath. Unbelievable. It is pretty unbelievable. And the flower is... Uh, the, the feather, sorry, is right there. So that's going to be 
Feather number six out of seven. Exactly. Let's keep going. And maybe we'll see it. If it hasn't been too scared. Yes. And then we can just go ahead and nip on by. So in a couple of minutes, we are going to be grabbing yet another knife. We are coming up to the end of the secret chest. Remember, we've only got two left. So as long as you've got two in your inventory, uh, you're pretty much golden. You're pretty much golden nuggets now. You are squared away. There's a workbench on the right if you need to upgrade anything. Right, so from said workbench, let's turn directly left and then go directly underneath the wall. The wall of life. Jump up. Jump up and get down. Right, uh, turn to the left and you're going to see a couple of pieces here on a barrel, which are going to lovingly... Oh, in fact, it's pyrite, actually. Not uh, It's not pieces, it's pyrite. Explode that. Ha, my ears. <laughs> yeah, not, I'm not surprised. I tell you, we'd be able to sue if we weren't in such a rat plague infested hellhole. Which, of course, that is all the rage these days. So, you know, something goes wrong. Oh, I'm going to sue. Something you don't like in a movie? I'm going to sue because it hurt my feelings. <laughs> so head through the open gate. Um, the opposite side of where we were. Now we're going to head to the right. And there is the knife sticking out of the guy's eye or the skull's eye. So if you need that. That is where you're going to get the extra knife, which, of course, if you do need it, it's going to come in handy. We're going to be grabbing a secret chest in a little while, in about 18 minutes, about 16, 17 minutes. So for now, we're just heading all the way up. Um, we, we need to open up the way. So, girl, that's what we're going to do. That's what we're going to do. Open up the chest as well, if, of course, you're needing the tings. Crank it up for some reason. I'd be calling it a lever or, or some switches. And of course, it's called a crank. So, uh, you know, another stupidity error for me there. But it's all good, you know. And it's open, we think. Okay. So, head all the way down, and it's time for a chunky puzzle. Because you don't let go. <sighs> well. <sighs> wow. How is it even possible? What is this place? That gate over there will tell us. We should... So, uh, slingify, slingify, as it were, the <laughs> the uh, open thing, and that'll open up. We're going to go straight up the steps just for a couple of uh, pieces right here. What I tried to say was slingify the um, brazier or the campfire or whatever, and that gets the puzzle going. And you thought it was going to be easy. Of course not. Of course rats are going to be there. Of course, because that's how it goes. So, we're pressing Y here, and we're going to go to the left cart first. So, just directly to your left. And we're going to pull that one towards us. And eventually, we're going to get there again. Remember, Elite Amicia has those incredible strong trend baloney sandwiches arms. Which I wish I had, in all fairness. And there we go. So, you should be good now. What you're going to do is uh, go directly from where we were, straight into it, and push forward. We're not going to go all the way. A lot of the times we are just going to stop, but we're not going to go all the way. So we're going to put it just before the dead body there on the left-hand side. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use a bit of tar. bit of tar. We're going to slig tar it. Hand tar it will probably be easier. And that's what we're going to do. And then from here, immediately run to your left over to the next cart. Again, there may be a few rats, which will try killing us, but you pirate should save you. Um, it probably would have been easier to use Sophia's little special power there, in all fairness, <laughs> rather than the tar, but there we go. Right, to open up this chest, um, upgrade and put everything that you can, and grab everything that you can, and then we are going to push this. As you can see, it's on a rail, by the way, so you can't just push it for, um, freestyle, it's literally on a way, so you can only go straight, left, right, whatever. So when it stops here, go around the other side, sort of to the right side, and then make sure to push it again. 
I tried pulling it for some reason, because, hey, because you can't pull it, obviously. So keep going until it stops automatically again, and you'll obviously know when it stops automatically. Okay, that's as far as it goes. See, I told you, I could have told you that, Misha. See, I should have been, I should have been in this game. I'd have been super dead very early on. Right, we're going to slingify, so ignify the way over there, that's the bash, the bomb, the bash, the bosh. And then you're going to give it uh, the right one. This time we're going to start pushing that, um, obviously, straight. So push, so leave the last one the way we were, and we're going to push this one. Everything points here, only a led us here. They're dead people pointing at each other. I'll do, man bear pig. So have a look at this sort of main area. We've got the um, little crossbowy ropey pulley thing again so this time we're going to pull the one to the right so look to your right give that a pull again if you can hit it first time that'll always come in handy instead of missing but uh you know what do i know i'm just a guy that is generally a terrible gamer but talks so much crap people people buy that i am a good gamer when in fact i suck so we're pulling the cart pull 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 the cart pull it with your trend baloney arms Come here, rat boy, let's go now and get a secret chest. So, what we're going to do, grab a chest first, just in case, once again, you are in need of any itemios. And then we can just push this boy. Hugo. Hey, funny. How funny? Yeah, come on, Hugo. We're almost there. How sure are you about that? Because this place... Well, I am sure. I'm sure this carrier is why Hugo dreamt of this island. But most of all, I'm sure we have no other option. Fine. That was... forget it. Oh, I'm really sorry. We have to do this. Yes. Don't get angry. I'm not. I'm... Right, so it's going to stop automatically. And then to get the secret chest, we're going to go to back to the left side. Or sort of, the, you know, left once. And then we're going to push it all the way again until it stops. Right, so what we're going to do now to the, the uh, souvenir, sorry, I kept calling it a secret chest, it's actually a souvenir. Uh, we are going to hand tar this and we're going to run immediately over to the right where this chest is. So the tar should burn bright enough, just long enough. Grab this and then jump down and this is where the, uh, what we are now, the 19th out of 21 souvenir is. Not a map, a plan. You can see the mechanisms. There are others. There. Looks like the Chateau d'Ambrage, Amicia. You're right. It's the courtyard with all the braziers. And what are those? More plans. There must be a way to get rid of that wreck. You wanna hear my French? The Chateau d'Ambrage. The Chateau d'Ambrage. Damn, that's awful French. I, uh, yeah, yeah. French is obviously not my strong suit, just like every other language, including English. Right, so we're going to tar it up again. So what we're going to do is tar it, make a break for it, and head back to the cart. Um, we are... In fact, we're pretty much going to be done with this area now. There is a little piece on the right-hand side there, which you can grab. Sophia, get the hell out of my way. Thank you, Nugget. Beautiful Nugget as you are. Right, there we go. So now we can push it. Push it until it stops once again. And then what we're going to do, we're going to head to the left once. And then push it again. And then when it stops again, go left once. And then just push it to end this particular section. So of course we could have done this section a lot quicker. But we had to move a couple of the carts and we had to get the souvenir as well. So, you know... Oh, better late than never, man. When the devs said they were going to put at least 3,000, 300,000 rats on screen, uh, well, broskies and girlskies were not lying, were they? <laughs> Finally. Good work. Yes. Let's push forward. Oh, all the guards. I can't believe she took them on by herself. That girl must have been one fearsome fighter. She was committed. He was everything to her. Something bad was happening to him. 
Do you know what it was? I just feel dark. Like in my dream. When I was dying. Lord, I hope she made it. Please, give us something. So... So here be the big door puzzle. But we're going to grab a few things first. So go directly back on yourself. And you're going to see this little hole in the wall. So we're going to, of course, send a little Rodrigo and Luca Cerrone, Hugo, Boss, Ratman through. Because that's all the names I've given him so far. Because I keep forgetting his bloody name. And then if we have a little look through, straight in front of us there is going to be the next souvenir. So that'll be souvenir 20 out of 21. His. This doesn't look like a playroom, though. They took them away from him. It means he's close. Somewhere beyond that door. One hell of a door for a child. Not just any child. We'll see. Let's go back to that door. Right, one away from a beautiful achievement. So, for now, we are going to smash open this big door puzzle. Very easy. It may look complicated. It's really not that bad. Uh, but head sort of all the way back down the end of the room here for another uh, set of tools, pieces, and a couple of chests, if needed. Go over to the left-hand side, you can just see a little open gap. And all there is here is just a piece, uh, a couple of pieces, just chilling, killing, a little bit of willing on the floor. And then we're just going to go back around all the way to the left. What we need here, I've put, I've put Sophia on the door, you don't need to do that. Head through this little gap, and we need Sophia to go on that. So again, of course, it's left bumper, and then the Y button. So she's going to open up the crank for us. And we are going to pull this cart out. So, there is a pole attached to it. That's mad and convenient, isn't it? <laughs> the convenience is unbelievable. And obviously, we can tell Sophia to let go, because for some reason, she doesn't have her own mind. Um, <laughs> which, uh, she can share mine if she wants. There's not a lot going on in my mind, to be honest. It's it's pretty empty. Knock, knock. Nah, not a lot in my brain. So, uh, we can't actually push it that cart anyway. It's, it's got a pole attached to it, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to now shoot. As soon as we get tell Sophia to open up the crank over on the just right-hand corner there, we can now open up the way. Shoot the crossbow at it and give it a little pull. It works. One bar done. Now for the rest. There it is. So you can obviously just wait for a second. We can tell Sophia to stop now and we can put it on to the opposite side crank or the opposite side lever. So the lever there on the right hand side. We are just going to stay here for just a moment. There we go. She's going to open up the gate even though we could have just got in anyway. And then eventually the lever right in front of us will be available to pull. So once it's available to pull, you it, well, uh -huh. you know, pull it. <laughs> Job done. Once you've pulled it, I think it did the trick. apparently, oh, apparently we can tell Sophia to stop because that has done the trick. So door. what we can do now is get onto it. You're going to be going backwards and spinning it around. And that is one massive giant door to keep a little kid behind, huh? We're here. If you want to go back, Sophia, now is the time. <laughs> Ooh, you think it's done? Well, it's not quite over yet. So, signify the way up. Signify. Ignify. Slingify. And just go for a little a walkie walk. Seven hours and 23 minutes in. Yeah, we're having a great time. But we are going to end up now in the rat tank. This is where the mega smell is. You know, massive kebab on a night out after, like, you know, a hell of a night of drinking. Your poor toilet. It's a hell of an hilarious insult, mind, isn't it? Your ass smells like a rat tank. Whew. Damn. Damn, there's no coming back from that. Noise. Courage. What is that? Right, so this is the last final sort of puzzle of the area before we've got a few things to do. So hit the chain there. That is going to open up some bridges. Now you'd think 
he can sort of just walk across. But, of course, that's not going to happen. It never happens like that, does it? Especially in the Plague Tale era of rat death and stuff. So, what we can do from here then, we can't obviously... I mean, what you could do is just jump across the chain and sort of do some Assassin's Creed, Prince of Persia-style jumping, but uh, maybe not. So, we're going to have to jump down. So, do it. Do it, Amicia. Get your rat baloney sandwiches. Oh, it's looking nasty. But we need to run immediately, so run straight forward. Just keep your uh, finger on the trigger. Now, I was already, I already had my finger down on the right trigger and up, so you didn't see, but there were a bunch of rats behind you <laughs> as you begin. So, this is nice. Now we've got to find our bloody way out. But this is where, this is the area where the secret uh, chest is. So, snoop through. And then what you're going to do is, over to the right here, there's going to be another set of chains that we can hit. Eventually, after we get the uh, another couple of items here on the left, again, if you need it. If not, then, well, you don't need to grab them, really, do you? But it's always worth it, since in about a couple of chapters' time, we've got a few big battles coming up with men with incredibly big armor. Maybe they're compensating for something. Yes, they are. <laughs> yes, they, yes, they are. So, hit the chain. That's going to get the one, that's going to get the counterweights down. The, the one side of the bridge start going up. But it's not as easy as that. We've got a few things left to do first. Right. So, what we need to do, obviously you can see that is again a very convenient brazier just uh, chilling out for us. So, chuck a bit of Ignifer on that. That will enable us to jump down. And look directly behind you there for another chest. More items. Fantastic. Right, what you need to do now, we need to be kind of quick with this one. So you need to get an Ignifer on the crossbow, shoot the pallet in front of you, or shoot the wooden board. Next up, we're going to thro hand throw a piece of tar right at it. That'll light the lighten up the way for us. Then what we need to do is immediately and very quickly get another Ignifer on the crossbow, shoot the next wooden pallet right in front of us right there, so that's lighting up the way. Grab a stick, run down, and then use, and then obviously press Y by the fire to open up the way. So... Again, with a tie, if you're not quick enough, you will end up dying, but you won't start too far back. So grab a couple of crystals there, and then just keep walking forward to ignite the ignite the brazier. Have a look behind you for another chest. That's all it is, it's full of chests. This is the chest day ever. Chest day ever. Right, jump up. Jump up and get down. I'm never going to stop getting bored of that song. Right, the secret treasure chest is coming up for 9 out of 10, but directly in front of us is another chest. And again, obviously it's just all full of items. So what we can do from here now is we are going to um, get our normal slingshot out, slip through the cracks. We're going to grab this little piece of crystal here, or uh, Alicia Spargros, whatever you want to call it on the right. Grab the piece there. It's another pyromaniac. So again, if you're in a bit of a sticky situation with some rats, that'll automatically work, of course, as you'll know. And then from here, what we can do is finally hit this chain as well. So, skablemo. That's going to get a couple of counterweights down and the other piece of the bridge up. And now we can sneak through, head to the left. Yeah, thanks, Hugo. I get that, mate. I'm not going to stay down here for the rest of my life. Yeah, you dumb bug. I'm just joking. Right, so we've got two knives, so we're all good. This is where the secret chest is anyway, so this will be secret chest 9 out of 10. Sorry, I, I, I didn't mean to shout to poor Hugo, but kind of stating the obvious. You need to find a way to come back. Well, duh! Of course! Not like I'm gonna, not like the rats my friends. Not like I'm gonna be cannibals and eat my rat pals, am I? Jesus Christ. Alright, now we good, now we now we're talking. So slip back through the chainy crack, get another hand or slingshot br um, ignifer, throw it down on the cart below you. Again, incredible convenience how all these things are just placed just perfectly for us. You can't beat it. So just keep going, keep pushing. We're almost out of the rat's nest pit hellhole. 
Of course we'll do it. You guys ain't helping you. You're just telling me the obvious things, like you need to get back here. Well done. Well done, everyone. Could have figured out that myself. So anyway, what we're going to do, we're not going to push it all the way. There is going to be another little gap that's going to appear on our left. Damn wreck. Ah, damn wreck. In fact, in fact, we automatically stop. So what we need to do now is press the Y button here. That's going to get us, get us a bolt, which we need. Um, so jump up on the right, grab the uh, hand or sling ignifer. And obviously we're going to use it to light the way. So in fact, we're going to crossbow the box first, sorry. I'm going to crossbow the box. And then we're going to hand ignifer the torch just over the other side. That should give us a little gap, just enough in order to sneak through. And again, a fantastically placed uh, crossbow thingamajigger. So don't bother wasting any ammo. Uh, they're just going to pull it down. And then right at the bottom, it'll just chill. Ready for you to shoot your shot, mate. Step back, Hugo. Here it comes. I see it. Yeah, so I think I shot about two or three crossbow crossbows there. <laughs> so wait until it's at the bottom. Then we can shoot and pull. Shoot your shot, king. And be prepared to get rejected. Uh, only if you me. Uh, so sling your shot, slam that, explosions, that's all good. Whoa, don't run into the rats, of course. That'll come in mega handy if you not die. <laughs> You're a stupid rat. Man, the amount of times I've heard that as an insult. <laughs> that's quite insulting. Right, keep pushing, keep pushing. Now, this is where we are going to see a little gap in the left, which uh, is going to house another little chest. Or was it the right? Was it the left? Was it the right? Was it the up? Was it the down? Uh, so, we're going to tar this one, and it was in the right. So, the right-hand side, pick up uh, the other item there, which is just another five pieces, and even though we're getting blinded and deafened, we can still push it with ease. And we did it. That's it. We are pretty much free now. And all we're going to do is go down the well, which is one big-ass, long-ass, massive-ass staircase. In fact, there is the... Uh, treasure chest there on the left. So we do tower it up again. Sorry, got got it a little bit mixed up there. But it's on your left. Pick what you need. Recycle what you need. Chew, shoot, bum what you need. And then we can just push forward and go straight into up to the ladder to complete this hellish section. You're here. Hey. You. It's all right. It's all right. Let it go. Do you want to take a break? No, we'd better go. I'm here now. Let's go. I'm sad. I'm scared, Amicia. I know. We've been through a lot. But it's like... Like it's not my mind. Is it... Basilius's? Maybe. It's really heavy. I'm scared. Oh. I guess that means we're getting close. The end of the bridge. What's going on? It's there. Amicia, I don't want to. But we have to. We have to. Oh, it looks bad. Lord, it feels like a, a cathedral. They built this for him. So, he's down there? Yes. At the heart of all this, it looks like what the last threshold would do. Aelia failed to reach him, and this is what happened. But what? What happened? And what happened to him? I don't want to know. You have to. He brought you here. It's your legacy. I don't want a legacy. I want to be normal. Hugo, before we get things back to normal, you must live. You want that, but I keep ruining things. But you don't do it on purpose. You're... You're a child. There were children in the Red City too. It's tough, Hugo. We don't know each other very well, but... I know you deserve a second chance. Even if... We have to find it in hell. Yes. My head... It's getting... Louder. I want him out of my head! We're close. If he's down there, so is what could save you. What's the point? If I keep ruining everything... Stop! You have to trust me! I can't! Alicia! Sophia! 
sweetheart. Please, I know. No, you don't. Why are you doing this? Come on, you tired little bupper. Whatever the hell a bupper is. Lazy mate. Lazy. You got the You've literally got the power to summon rats. Couldn't you just get them and you can lie on top of them and just, you know, take you where you need to go? Oh, I suppose it wouldn't be much of a game then, would it? Uh, but uh, get ready for a uh, little surprise here at the bottom. Quite disgusting, actually. We'll live. We will fight. We will part. Come on. Come. Chihuahua. So <laughs> it turns out they were so scared of his power, they um, sort of just left him here to rot and die. So that is a child. That is not good. Anyway, we're going to skip the cutscene. You can obviously watch the rest, but we're going to need to make a break for it now because we are running like hell. So run, run, run as fast as you can. Oh my God, I'm a gingerbread man. Just keep running up, keep running up. Now there's going to be a bit, a little bit of an edit in just a bit. I'll tell you exactly where and when and where you've got to go. But it does look a bit uh, weird, sorry. So we just keep climbing, running and climbing. Now when we get through this next door, we're going to need to take the staircase, which is to the right. So through here, now go right up the staircase. It's because I died there, which was uh, why it was a bit of an edit. But you had to go right up the staircase. Keep going, and obviously trying to avoid the deaths and all the uh, rocks and everything, falling rocks. Again, incredible show of speed. The rats, you'd think in reality, would kill us, but no. So just keep on going. Flying up. Literally. Jesus, man, that has got to be shit scary. Straight through, climbing up. And then turn to the right. The camera pans in that way anyway, so you're all good. So just keep sprinting. Sophia leaving us behind. Thank you very much for that. Um, <laughs> Angel. Uh, keep going. Try and stay in the middle because you can die, I believe, with the rats here uh, in the right and left. So just stay away from them. And eventually we are going to be able to turn left. There it is. Turn left. Climb up this jaggedy rock. No, no, no. Good shout, Hugo. I believe you. And just run backwards on yourself. Now, there's nothing else to do here except go straight. <laughs> My leg! Fred the fish from SpongeBob. My leg! And this will be the end of it. But it won't actually be the end of it. We've we've gotten back over the bridge. And the rats really didn't want us to find that thing. Uh, so climb up. Make sure to climb up there. Otherwise that'll be a bit tricky. And run again. Run, run as fast as you can. Head to the right. Again, st try and stay in the sort of middle of the path. Just avoid the rats as fast as you can. There's a bit of daylight in front of us. So this is going to be the end of this section. Plus the end of the chapter. So that is chapter... Um, uh, blah, blah, blah. Chapter 11 done. Getting through it now, kings and queens. I think we're fine. Anyone hurt? Hugo? It was horrible. Things are not getting better. Although it seems they figured the critters out already. Right, so now we are starting to sort of come up now to the um, shorter chapters. We're about 7.30, so we've got less than two hours now left to complete the game, so we're coming up to the sort of shorter chapters now. Um, there's still a lot of action packed into those chapters, don't get me wrong. But we are coming up to the short one. So, um, so this one, for instance, is literally about 20 minutes long. So, shoot your shot. In fact, we don't need to shoot our shot, do we? No, we're going to... There is a torch right here, which is exactly what we need. Yes. Pop that in the fire and just walk forward, of course. 
Good. Now we do things safe and slow. No taking stupid risks. Hugo, if you feel funny, tell us right away. I will. Can't wait to leave this rock. All right, the harbor, come. Hey, my lady. What is it now? You're the Countess's guests, aren't you? Are you hurt? No. We have orders. What will we tell her? The truth. We found what we came for. And I'm the one to blame. I'll defend you. My hero. Hurry! Move before they come back! Is the palace going to hold, sir? For now. The Count opened the gates to the people. But there's so many dead and wounded. We've seen that. Careful! Stay back! It's like the one we saw. The broken one. Shh. Yes. Where did they get it? You're safe as long as you stay inside this light. But outside, without light. Yes. We know. Anyway, you're safe now. Planning to evacuate? Not yet. Not until we've got everybody regrouped. Get to the bridge! Hold the line! We need more fires on the main road! Pick up the pace! Keep these flames fair! Even help here! It looks like a war. Come give me a hand with this! The rats are pushing on our east flank! We need torches there! They should evacuate. Yes. No more can win against them. We'll need it to carry the wounded. Um, the lights. You, can, you can bring them inside. All right, I understand. Good luck. Dig trenches along the ramparts and fill them with tar. Keep them burning. Any breach could make the palace fall. And if the rats enter the palace... Then you're dead. Keep them burning. Have you fixed the piston yet? We need this cart on the ramparts fast. Another one. Get off my back! This thing's so old, it might just explode. We've got wounded up here. It's not pretty. The uh, child may want to look away. I know blood. Still, try not to look. There are more. My arm! It's burning! They're the ones who've been bitten. No. Yes. <laughs> it was soon spread. This is but a test the child senses. You must not lose faith. Are the rats really announcing his coming? Through there. Why is he killing us? Still you too. your hearts. Pray to him. Just pray. Oh boy, it's a long walk, but it is worth it to see who's behind those doors. Yay! So wholesome! Mummy! You're here. My God, you're alive. Mother? Come here. Please, come here. Mother. How are you? Your head. It's fine, don't worry. Follow me. Best not to keep the Count waiting. Do you know what come. the Count wants with me? No. I, I thought he would be attending to more urgent matters. Seeing you must be an urgent matter. Act with dignity in his presence. These are dark times. He's touched, like any of us. All right, I will. The main gate is secure enough for now, but the western rampart is still weak. If the rats enter through there, we won't be able to evacuate the wounded. Now, I want to know where those Wait rats here. come from. Send scouts. If we can find a way to slow them, stop them, or send them to hell, it'll be worth the risk. 
Sire, she's here. Good. This is a war unlike any other, but it is still a war. Dismissed. And have faith. It's not over yet. Yes, yes sir. sir. Hey, don't tell me what to do, big guy. Yeah, hey, look at me count. I'm d d sort of half twerking or just acting like a chicken. <laughs> anyway, follow the count for now. So what do you think? What do you think is the reason the Count is getting us? Do you think because we've survived this far that we can we can help him destroy the rats? Yeah. Oh yeah. The Lord should know that no peace lasts forever. But I confess that after years of war, I had dared to hope that this one would. I understand. The scars are still so vivid. They fill the mind when you want only rest. Uh, sorry, I... No. No. That's exactly it. It's only human. I think. You're right. But it doesn't stop you from being there when battle calls. Yes. Hey, Senor Canto, look what I'm doing. Look what I'm doing to your frontal area. <laughs> also, I'm just wondering if incredibly, like, mega bald people on top, do they have bald on the bottom as well? Or is it, are we just completely hairless? Or do we have a, a sort of a little bit, like a good balance? Or is it full bush down there to make up for the lack of hair on top? Yes. Hey, it's just one of life's many, many questions, isn't it? Um, <laughs> not one that I've thought about recently, in all honesty, but um, I was just looking at the Count's incredibly bald head. So, as it turns out, no, the Count was a complete and utter asshat. Now, remember when I said when we first met the Count and Countess that I had weird vibes off them, and I got that when I first played it as well. And it's just for this particular reason, man. So we're just going to keep moving back for now, and then we're going to have to do a bit of running and hiding. It's a bit of hide and seek. So it's just gone from happy and wholesome to, dude, what the hell, bruh? All because they think Hugo is their ember child thing. Weirdo. Right. Because I invented most of it. And I did it for her. What? Emily. Her bloody parents broke her mind until she tried to take her own life poisoned her own body. So I brought her here, offered her this child of Ember's story, and not only did she believe it, she turned it into hope for the people. You fed her a lie! to do? Accept your fate! Yeah. Oh, damn you! You go, run! Oh, mega shot! Now, let's run. Obviously, we're not running very far. We've got a completely messed up shoulder. So, keep heading forward. I mean, if, if he really wanted to, the Count could have just come up behind us and killed us, but uh, he's playing a game with us. We can't go through the door, so we need to go down the stairs. So there you go, make a break for it. And we're going to head through the right now. And now we're going to be able to go through this door. This is fine. She likes seeing Bastard a lot, doesn't she, as well? Which I'm not surprised. Again, that Trembolone arm is just coming in mega handy. Look at that. One arm she needs... Just to pull that, and the count can't even get through. Mega strengthos. Okay. By the way, no collectibles or anything in this level, so we're golden. Stop telling me who am I? Oh, okay. Right, so head to the left. We're going to jump over here. In fact, no, we're not. We're just going to head through the chains here on the left. We're not going to bother sneaking around. We're going to go to the right now and smash our way through. And go straight uh, to the left. And then to the left again through the open door. Sorry, I was going to say we were going to go through that door, but no, we're going through this open door. And go to the left. What's going on, mate? My shoulder's busted and I'm about to be stabbed to death. What the hell do you think? Go to the right, since Count Knobhead is right there. Count Balls Balls. Head to the left. Uh, sort of where the light is right there, you can see. And sneak your way through. Go to the left again. I'm very calm in a situation where I would be absolutely crapping my pants. Go left again. And head to the left. Again, you're going to see the open door right here. Not, mate. It's not. You think Hugo's your kid? He's my brother, bruh. Uh, go through all of this here. Obviously, we're not stopping for anything, as you can imagine. When we're into this room, then, we're going to sneak through again by smashing all the pots. Job done. And smash through the pots again, straight through the middle. Go through the open door. And head left. Head right. Head nah, 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 nah. Nah, 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 Go through the door. Right, in this next area, what we have to do is actually open up a big crank. 
and we get about halfway through before we have to run away and do a bit of hiding before finishing off the crank. Uh, so this bit can be a little bit difficult, especially if he catches you. So just head all the way to the left. You can see the crank in the middle of the room, sort of uh, all alone. So pull it. I bet it hurts me. He just got smashed down the stairs. And the count is eventually going to appear. So obviously if you're just in invincible mode, you can literally just keep on going. Um, open up the door behind us and go straight through. But obviously I'm going to show you sort of what you're supposed to do properly. So he is coming. So, ah, yeah. Now I would be knocked at there by now. Kind of um, got a bit cocky with that one. So what you're supposed to do then when he appears, just um, run run around. Sort of run sort of as far back into the room as you can. And you're supposed to try and hide from him. Uh, so what I advise is, if you're not playing on invincibility mode... Go back as far as you can, because obviously he can just smash through anything. Go back as far as you can. Hide, um, quite, you know, hide in the dark as much as you can. And then when he stops, whatever side of the room that he's on, go to the opposite side and just go straight through. Uh, basically, do the opposite of what I just done there. Uh, otherwise, as soon as you do that, and you can sort of sneak, sneak your way through to this lever, get back onto the lever, keep pushing, and eventually when Amicia says... Hiya! In, you know, shoulder pain noises, then you're all good. Right, when you get outside of the door here, the door is directly in front of you. Don't go to the right, because the door is not there. Uh, the door was directly in front of you from where, pretty much, more or less in front of you from where you just uh, re uh, come out of the previous door. So, uh, yeah, don't know why i just done that. So there's that one. I did do it amazing, <laughs> It's not because I got help from invincibility mode or anything. Yeah, hell no. Okay. Okay. All right. So, obviously, there's a reason why this is so, um, so such a short level. Come on, Amicia. You do it, my girl. They'll take him away. Mother, Lucas, get them out of here. Even if it hurts. It's all you have. You, you know it all. So use it. Use it against them. Don't be afraid. Yes, you failed, but... This child was never truly yours. I feel so full of him. He This is an invitation I can't refuse. You called me by some... You're quite something, you know. You face me, thinking with all your soul that you can defeat me. I can. You won't have my brother. <laughs> Such dedication. <laughs> You have a burning fire inside you. But a flame without discipline doesn't make a soldier. It consumes them from within. I'm not a soldier! Oh, I know. You fight because you don't have the choice. I chose this life. This is why you'll fail. You talk a lot, coward! <laughs> Steady your stance! Stand your crown! <laughs> Grip that sword properly. You're a disgrace to it. <laughs> you never fight to defend yourself. Fight to kill, to conquer. Whatever. You're still a coward. <laughs> Who do you think you are to defy me? I'm Amicia Jerune. Ah, shut up! And I kneel to no one! Shut up! Amicia! You see, you kneel just fine. No! No! Please stop! Please stop! From one mother to another. 
Enough games, Victor. This is not what we're here for. I'm uh, I'm gonna let you watch this cutscene, but another gut wrenching thing decides to happen. Uh, yeah, you can probably imagine what it is. Or even if you skip the cutscene, you're gonna realize we're gonna play as Hugo for a bit. All we're doing again is just walking forward, but you're gonna probably realize what's happened when our little rat boy gets I'm seriously angry. Seriously angry. Amicia. Lucas? Where are you? Where is everyone? So, if you're in the gym and you want to squat 800 solid ass pounds, well, get yourself some kind of weird disease in you and have a look if... I'm, I obviously still won't spoil it just in case you missed the cutscene or whatever, but have something very traumatic happen to you and have a weird disease in you. Uh, or just be as massive as Ronnie Coleman. And again, if you don't know who Ronnie Coleman is, legendary bodybuilder, legend, absolute legend. So. What's going to happen then? We are going to not squat 800 solid ass pounds, but we are going to aim at the target. So obviously you need to press down and, well in fact we're already controlling them. So basically all it is, is just have a look at the enemies, wherever the enemies are coming from. Obviously you can see the reds on screen from where they're coming from. Just press the right trigger from wherever they go in. And that's going to be it for the next couple of minutes. This is how, well, like I said, you squat 800 solid ass pounds. Lightweight, baby! Woo! Ain't none but a peanut. <laughs> yes! That's it! You did it! It's your turn, Emily! We'll spill your blood now! Emily! No! No! Sire, we need to evacuate, Sire! It's too Let late! Let me go! Let me go! Sire, your people need you! Sire! Amicia? I mean, the Count can't be too pissed off with us just destroying his wife. Um, <laughs> no, not like that. Literally destroying. Um, so, yeah, that happened. And now we're on to the Ian Beale from EastEnders special. I've got nothing left! Chapter 13, in other words. Please, Hugo. Say something.
A uh, little rat boy there looking all squatted out. Yikes. So incredibly, in just one cutscene then, Amicia has gone from I really can't move or run at all to You know what, my shoulder feels not bad actually um, But anyway, we're going to be coming up to another souvenir In fact, it's going to be the last souvenir that we're going to be coming up to now um, And so what we need to do then, uh, if we just head sort of back and right on ourselves there uh, You're going to see a little room that we can enter, so that's what we're going to do uh, First of all, and we're going to get a little chunky chunk chest. There we go. Again, we've just got a couple of things. Now, there's going to be a couple of knives um, coming up soon. Uh, I think new. Yes, in fact, there's a couple of knives in this chapter uh, as we just exit the gate and go straight ahead. But like I said, we've only got one more secret chest left to get. So again, providing you've got the the two secret chests in chapter 9, you'll unlock the achievement uh, in this chapter. So, after grabbing the uh, few items, follow Lucas. And obviously follow uh, Hugo as well. Have a look at your workbench. Now, obviously you will notice a, a very noticeable absence. And that is, of course, why Hugo went from I'm a little boy to I'm squatting 800 solid S pounds. Yeah. Anyway, now we're going to be coming up to the uh, where the souvenir is. So just keep following Lucas for the time being until we get into this room, which we cannot cross. And like I said, you know, you look at Amicia's shoulder now. When she got pushed down the steps, she said she couldn't move it as we ex uh, hit the gate. So there's a lock on the gate there. So we're going to hit that. And now she's moving it and, you know, she's all good now. So through the door, a couple of little things that we've got to do before we get to the souvenir. There is a little item treasure chest again, which we can grab. Because they need nothing but a peanut. Right, I'm going to stop now. Uh, we're going to move this chest backwards. Or move this cart backwards, even. And then go around, and that's going to e e give us a little exit hole to... Uh, hole to run into. Jump over. And you're going to see this little cart that we can move out of the way as well. Man, I can actually... F I've got shoulder pain, actually, now. Just looking, just looking at Amicia. Go through the hole, the newly crowned hole... Here is the last souvenir. It's basically a lot of crying and a lot of emotion, and <laughs> I think we're 100% with her, to be honest. She has had it Please. rough the last two games. Please. How am I going to do this? Please. I can't. Help me. Lord. Stop. Stop. Stand up. Stand up and go. So after we're done and we Amicia has pulled herself together here called a mess, the immortality achievement or immortal memories achievement, sorry, should unlock. And that's it. We don't have to worry about any more souvenirs. Remember, we do have one more feather to go. We do also have uh, one more secret chest and one more flower to get. Uh, but you won't get the last flower until chapter 16. So anyway, interact with the pole. You're going to crossbow just at the top right corner. There we go. We're going to cross that. Hold the Y button. Pull it down. And then just knock yourself around and head up. How is he? His mind is extinguished. I, I think it's not just the shock, it's the macula. So he's not coming back? Not yet. Let's use this thing. Come on, you. Anyway, grab the torch, 
Which, to be fair, that you know, it's it's kind of hard to be a bit, uh, kind of hard to be a little optimistic, isn't it, when you've gone through what these have gone through? Head through, ignoring the half-burnt, legless body and bunch of skeletons and stuff around. Now, do not get too close to these heart-pumping things because they will pop out. So if you do get too close to them, they'll pop out and they'll eat you alive. And of course, we've gotten through all this game. We don't want to be eaten alive. So from here, head to the left. Again, stick as close left as you can to avoid the rats on the right. Then when you pass this one, move towards the right-hand wall to avoid the rat hearts on the left. Or the rat things on the left, whatever. And just keep going then. We are in the rat's nest again. We are in the toilet bowl after a night out. More rats, but again, just don't panic. So stay as far left as you possibly can. And then just keep heading in a straight line until we are out of the toilet bowl. I felt his body spasm right before it'll burst. I told you, his bond with the macula is getting stronger. I know you're still there, Hugo. Please hold. Did I say out of the toilet bowl? I meant we're gonna have to run out of the toilet bowl because this is a giant That is generally just a giant genital wart sack full of rats So as soon as we skip we're gonna immediately start running <laughs> You know this this ain't gonna go well So let's go So stay close to the wall. I you know I'm gonna take your advice literally there Lucas. Thank you I'm gonna uh, stick close to the wall jump up here. Let's climb up and we're going to be doing a backwards running thing, so run, run as fast as you can. Rats on your tail, they're going to eat your ass, man. Just run like hell, Jesus. Dude, this ain't even the end of it. It's climbing down, grab Lucas, uh, Hugo. Bloody hell, I get confused. I'm like a, I'm like a nan now. Ugh, can't remember. Right, stay as close in the middle of the path as you can. They're going to start spalling out of each side. Damn you all. Yeah, that'll tell them. Uh, so just keep running. You should pretty much be good to go now. We are effectively out. Uh, in fact, we have made it out now into the fresh air. Ish. Breathe. Breathe. Hugo. Tested. Let's go. Let's just go. Goodness. The tremors brought those bloody eggs out in the open. And once again then, Hugo is just about to get his inner Ronnie Coleman inside out of him. And uh, get rid of a few rats for us. So cheers for the uh, cheers for the squat, buddy. You are not in charge. I am the one in charge. Oh, you obey me. You obey me! All right. I think they heard you. I've never seen you do that. Because it hurts. So once that's done then, we nip it off and we're going to start heading to the right. Like I said, uh, we are going to get one. There's obviously a couple of guards. But this is kind of like the last sort of big level 
the, ne the next two chapters do involve quite a bit of fighting, but this is like the, the sort of last long level. It's only about a half hour long as well, um, if you're sort of following along. So a couple of guards popping up here. We are going to get the Night Guard achievement. That is for extinguishing 40 fires, so you may get it uh, a little bit later on. You may get it, uh, you may have got it earlier on. You may, you may still get it a bit later. Um, if you don't have it just yet, I highly advise just going around and... Um, it, or just ext extinguishing these three fires right here, resetting the checkpoint and just resetting it until you will get the achievement. Uh, but that's obviously up to you. So hopefully you should have got it by now. This is where it unlocks for me the rarest of beautiful achievement. That's 7% and I am an I am a night guard. So what we're going to do when we extinguish that, you, we're going to now hit the uh, Jenny Wart sack. There it is, the old butt sack. And that gets the rats out. That also destroys the guard for us. So bang tidy, mate. Cheers, mate. I appreciate it, you know. So, this is where, if you need any more knives for the next secret chest, as we just kill one guard right here. Um, again, I do try and be very stealthy through this section. Uh, so, we are going to need to uh, go, just go straight. Just go straight for now. There is a guard that is directly in front of us, but the rats just did appear out of the heart sack. Whatever it's bloody called, I don't know. So, there is a couple of guards right here, so... Since I got lucky with him, he did turn around. He didn't see us, so he turned around and we were able to do that. Remember, like I said, if these guys are seeing you, um, you can either put the Ignifer in a pot and kill them that way, or just get them over to long grass and put the Ignifer in the grass and that'll kill them dead as well. Uh, otherwise, or of course, you can just easily crossbow them to death. That always works mighty well as well as they char the potty chars to death. So, now we are going to grab the next knife. Again, there are three in this level. I don't end up getting the third one. But from sort of here where we are right now with this uh, with this toolbox, piece boxes, what we're going to do, we can grab a little crystal, a little uh, Aspargaro thing on the right, or, or sort of on the left. And then from here, what we're going to do is go past the columns, the one fallen down, into this little sort of crevice or whatever you want to call it there are a couple of enemies here so again just be careful if you're doing stealthy the knife is not too far in front of us obviously he's seen us so we're just gonna burn him to death because why the hell not bruh and this guy he is just one of those chunky guys so we can actually just throw something at him no he's not he's an armor guy sorry got that one wrong the next guy will be a guy that wants to throw a tar fireball at us so when we're in this area then the knife is literally just in front of us and it's going to be sorry just wait i am just waiting to see if this guard's coming but he's disappeared so he's all good so the knife will be sticking out right next to this chest items so if you like i said if you do need um any knives for the final secret chest you should now be as golden as balls uh, you should now you should be sorted now now the other thing is you don't actually need to collect any more um, because you can't take them with you through chapter select. So that is just another thing here. So heading to the sort of edge, what we're going to do is we're going to extinguish this guy. So to get through this guy a lot easier, we're going to extinguish him. And then we just... <laughs> now, normally, I think if you're playing on normal and above, he will probably... I think he turns around and has a look in this area. But obviously, since we're playing on uh, narrative difficulty, we're going to throw a stone square at his nugget. Boop! There we go, that gets his armor off, because <laughs> he's looking behind. Just keep throwing at it. Like just keep throwing pebbles at him until he starts coming to this area. So he's gonna start looking around. So now we can we're gonna start heading around and we're gonna start heading down. So grab any bolts, of course, that you see as well. So there may I think there's another enemy on the right, so just be careful. And what we can do now he's extinguished, we can just open up the rat, the rat pack, the rat hatch. Uh, as Hugo, of course, press down with the D-pad and control the rats, and now we can go ahead and just kill this armored guy. And that's the easiest way to do that. <laughs> Although, <laughs> there was a lot of fire, but we're still good. You can also go ahead and kill this guy as well. He's not in any light, providing he isn't in any light. He should be good. And that's pretty much it. They're the only two areas, sort of walk, uh, two enemies walking around this area. So from where we are, we can literally just head up. And there we go. Now we are with a cart. 
so we do have a cart now. So what we're going to do, uh, we're going to open up the, or oh, sort of shoot the way out. Cart nips on. That's job done. We're going to head through and just open up this chest. Yeah, and like I said, even though we are sort of coming up to the end of the game, ish, we've still got roughly about an hour of gameplay left. So not too bad, we are getting through it. We're going to drop down here as well. We're going to open up this another chest. This another chest. This other chest, there we go. And then we can just climb back up as well. Job done. Now we're going to head through. So we've got, got a couple of items there. I thought that was a guard. I crapped myself the first time, but it was just a wall standing still. So, I was, so the first time I went through this part, I was there for ages because I couldn't, I couldn't see what it was. Turns out I'm blind because that is not an enemy. Right, now we are into the ruined village. There is another knife and there's the final feather and the final secret chest in this area as well. So, job done. And we are about, we're 15 minutes away from uh, completing this chapter. And it'll be on to the very short ones. Job done. Right, so what we're going to do then, we're going to drop down. Again, we've got some more skill unlocks. You may get the same, or you may get something different. Here it goes. So you don't actually need to head to the left here. We can't actually get down. What I'm going to do, though, is... There's obviously a lot of places that you can go and you can have a look in a lot of the houses. What I'm going to primarily do though is stick to the left hand side because this is where the next knife is if you need it still. Um, plus I just found it it was the easier route. So I extinguished that guy. I'll get a couple of rats, you know, doing, the, doing what they've been doing throughout the entirety of the two games. So head through. There will be a couple of enemies walking around and stuff. I thought that was one behind me, but it just turned out to be Lucas. Uh, so you can... Well, in fact, you're trying to extinguish someone who doesn't have a fire on him. So, yeah, let's try not to do that. Uh, again, it may just be easier. So we need to tar our way through. So uh, tar up this... Lucas! God damn it! Lucas! Jesus Christ! Get out of my bloody way, damn it! Anyway, so now we're going to tar our way through. We can head through. An enemy has now caught on to us because I decided to run like an absolute turd burglar. Turd bag, I meant. Uh, <laughs> turd, turd nut bag. And there is another enemy here as well. So again, it's pretty much going to have to use a crossbow or use... There are no rats about in this area. That's why. That's why there's no rats killing him right now. Uh, so easy enough to just either pot ignify or pot uh, ignify crossbow. I'll do it. Cheers, Maga. So the knife isn't too far away. Just having a look at uh, there are a couple of chests in this room again. If you want to have a look at some chests, obviously you can do that. But I think we've probably getting to the point now. We're a bit uh, bored of items and chests, aren't we? There's just so many. So it is this area then. Here is the next knife. It's just on the table here with a couple of wreaths, and this is actually the way out as well. So there is a guard that sort of come behind it does come behind me so i yeah pretty much pretty much at this point you can run away if you want this, this me just chucking random stones at his, his helmeted head for no particular reason so you can kill him if you want i i'm just going to end up running away here until we get to the next area um and there we go so let's just run we're going to climb up this part and then we can start crawling at, start kneeling down so we are, like I said now, we're coming up to about 10 minutes away here from completing this chapter. This guard will not follow us, so again, do not worry. Nothing yet. Child will fix this. Child. Right, so when we've dropped down, we're going to head to the left here into this long bit of grass. Now, there are going to be three enemies. One will always be looking out at nothing on the left. There's going to be an armoured guy who is going to be walking up and down. 
There will also be uh, another guy with him. Now, when we explode the guy on the left, the armored guy should always hear him. But the third enemy didn't. So if the third enemy does hear you, uh, what you're going to do, you're going to have to wait until the armored guy goes to the left. Then uh, Ignify Pot the third enemy. And then when the armored guy starts going to the right, you're going to do exactly what I'm doing here. And we're going to uh, normally G-string off his thing, his, uh, his armor, his thing, his armor, and then crossbow him. So obviously the other guy, the other enemy didn't hear us, so that's why I've just done that a lot quicker. But that's what you'd normally do. Even if I put the first guy in the left, even if I put the second guy in the right, wait until the armor guy walks away, kill him the way I just done, and that's how you get rid of all three enemies. But since he didn't, uh, we can pretty much just run straight for the exit. The exit is directly in front of us, right in the archway, but we can head left here into the church to grab another toolbox and tool chest and things like that. So grab what you can, recycle what you can, recycle your nan. No, no, hey, hey, wait, don't recycle your nan. She's pleasantry. Um, so yeah, where the uh, archer or where that other enemy is, that he is actually guarding the exit. So you can pretty much just run there, press the white button and get through to the next section. So when we've just uh, nipped it down that path and we've jumped down here into this big, big main area, turn around, you're going to see this window that we are going to little hop, skip and a jump. And again, that incredibly damaged shoulder appears to be a lot better now. So well done, Miss Trembolone Sandwich. Uh, so it, anyway, you've got the couple of items out of the chest, couple more pieces. There is another gear workbench if you so desire and if you so wish. Again, for me personally, I went with the crossbow. When I have enough pieces, I went with the crossbow. Uh, so you can take some bolts back off enemies' bodies. So we're going to climb up here anyway. We are now going to start getting the final feather and the final chest. Go to the right, and it is just a couple of pieces. Head back on yourself. Go right, and we're going to drop down. Good catching, Miss, uh, my, my little trend but only love. Uh, we haven't seen Sophia for a while. I hope she's doing fine. Uh, head to the left. Out of the door, there is another chest immediately left again. So if you're needing it, it's right there, my guy. There we go. Once that's done, then we can head back left out of the door. And you're going to see a cart, which is going to be on our right. There are enemies, but don't worry. They can't actually spot you or anything. So what we're going to do first is... Come on, Lucas, boy. we got places to be, mate. Come on. So drag it around. And then what you're going to do is aim it just to the right of the door in front of us. So that's what you're doing. Aim it to the door just to the right. There we go. That pops up. Climb up. Now, I had mega connection issues um, in terms of the sort of the next few achievements popping. So straight in front of us, you're going to see the final feather. Now, the achievement on Ornithologist should unlock for you. For whatever for whatever reason, like I said, I had mega connection issues. It totally glitched the game out. Um, so it didn't unlock on screen for me. But... Like I said, set feather 7 out of 7, that should now be unlocked for you, Ornithologist. So the secret chest is just behind this door that we're going through right now. For me, I'm getting confused as to why it's not unlocking. But as I said, you got 7 out of 7 feathers, that's it. So you can have a look there by pressing the select button and having a look. Otherwise, we can. this should be, this should be your last secret chest as well. The Explorer achievement should unlock again providing that you've got the two secret chests open in chapter 9. If not, like I said, we'll just um, start the chat there and play for an extra half hour. Really doesn't matter, as long as you get all 10 secret chests in the same playthrough. But hopefully, you manage to get all 10 open, and you've just gotten two lovely rare achievements popping at you like a big 
popping piece of popcorn. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I'll do it. Right. Now we need to rescue. Rescue someone we haven't seen for a while. So we're going to drop down. And we're going to grab this cart again. Now what we're going to do is actually just pop it uh, to the right. So where the sort of... Um, like sort of van branches are and stuff like that. That's what we're doing. So for some reason I uh, do take a bit of a wide berth. Uh, but we are just going where those uh, sort of vines or that... You know, those leaves are or whatever. So literally could have just gone backwards a little bit. But there we go. So we're going to climb up. And we're going to go straight here. Yep, there we go. We're going, we're going straight. We'll head left. We'll grab this piece. Now, this looks like the obvious way to go would be straight, but it's actually not. We need to go back and then left here to head down. And we are going to rescue. I might as well just tell you. It's Man Bear Pig. So Man Bear Pig hasn't died from the count. We are going to rescue him. So again, it is going to be another big fight section. So as you know, with any archers, just kill him dead with the uh, normal G-string. And then you can just do your normal tricks of... There's a bunch of oil barrels about. So anyone with big armors and shields, get them close to the ar uh, get them close to the oil barrels. And then kill them with the crossbow. Like I said, there are plenty of bolts and stuff about. So if you do run out, just have a look at that. Make sure you to use your ignifer pots as well. And you should have no worries.
Watch out! Heavy bastards approaching! You've done enough damage! Oh no! Hugo, stay so here! Often, you'll get a quick death! Never! We're here to save you, sir! Wrong! Bloody hell! It's over now. We did it, Hugo. Yes. Breathe. Calm down now. That's Friano, right? Yes. Please. Hooray, man, Big Pig! I'm so happy you're alive. Sorry about the whole, you know, uh, basically tucking you up, tra being a traitor and uh, sending you into the count. So sorry about that, pal. You're right. I mean, you look a bit pissed off, but um, anyway, like I said, more connection issues, but you should get the achievement there called Nothing Left for obviously completing the Nothing Left chapter. And then we're on to chapter 14, Healing Our Wounds. So for the next literal two or three minutes, all we're going to do after this cutscene is we're going to go ahead and speak to Hugo. We're going to go ahead and speak to Sophia, since Sophia's back. Oh, my little angel, Sophia. Um... Simping hard for some reason um, on a video game character. That sounds weird. Hmm. Right. Anyway, so we're gonna speak to Lucas, speak to Hugo, speak to uh, Man Bear Pig. I can't even remember his name. Arno, and uh, speak to Sophia as well. And then eventually, after we do that, well, a little surprise is gonna happen. Not a good one, of course, because we can't have two minutes of bloody peace without trying to be attacked and killed. Almost. There's a home ahead now, Lucas. Will you come with us? Well, I think... You and Hugo are my home, so... Yes. We're glad to have you with us. Hey. Is that well? Don't want to wake up. How's the view? It's nice. What's on your mind? Do you think I'm different? Well, I don't know. Are you hungry? Huh? <laughs> yes. Well, still the same. <laughs> I feel different. Things feel different. It's called growing up, Hugo. Some things just make it go faster. Yes? Yes. But we'll slow things down from now on. We'll take all the time we need. I can't wait to be in the mountain. Soon. Very soon. We're going home, Hugo. Our home. Yes. Is he fine? Who knows? How about we ask him directly? All right. I can feel a fallout quote coming on here. War. War never changes. Because war apparently doesn't change. So it's all kicking off now. The count's after us. So what we need to do is head up the steps. Go on, broski. Come on, Amusia. Head up those damn steps. Head up those damn steps. Okay, there we go. So we need to man the hoist tequila side, whatever this side is, of course, the right side of the boat. So, press and hold the white button, of course. And then as soon as this one's done, they're going to say, he's not good enough. So this is pure Pirates of the Caribbean now. Go on, Sophia, girl. Right, go down and interact with the, the other rope on the uh, tequila side, the liquor side, whatever I said. And that's going to do the same thing. And it's going to be a bit of fighting on this ship in just a little bit. So, like I said, these next two chapters are literally about 10 minutes each, so which is awesome. So, uh, having a look here at the grocery cart, we're going to try and do this. We are going to get smashed open. <clears throat> God damn. 
Right, so what you need to do is head straight back up to where Sophia's standing, and you just need to, um, well, just string them all to death. So like I said, it's another big fight. Uh, so Arno is obviously going to be, uh, he's going to have a lot. There's a lot of bolts in here though, which is good. Just obviously you have to make sure that you are at least killing one so Arno can just focus on one guy. So again, use your pot ignifer and use your crossbows as well to kill the majority. And obviously, obviously always make sure to look out for archers. As soon as you see the circle of the archers, make sure to kill them first. Uh, otherwise, it's going to be like this just for a couple more minutes. Come on now, bruh. There's no way Amicia surviving a literal bow and arrow square through the old stomach knots. Surely bloody not. But of course, this is just video games, isn't it? So all you gotta do is bandage her up. Look, and she's slamming. Oh, <laughs> you gotta call him Man Bear Pig. That would have been funnier. Anyway, we're on to the next chapter. Chapter 15. Um, Dying Sun. And again, this is going to take about 10 to 12 minutes it's literally just a case of we're gonna nip through to the next part and in fact this is going to be the sort of last human fighting element of the game and we still got you know about 40 minutes left so it's all about rats from here on out but this is the last big big fight including the count that we're going to do so obviously this is going to be another fight section like we've been doing so again it's a case of pot ignifers having a walk around uh, just having a look at things there'll be oil barrels to shoot uh, flower bags to shoot as well for the armored enemies so basically everything that you've learned up to this point is just going to be in one battle for the next couple of minutes and then eventually after a few minutes uh, it'll start getting a bit foggy you'll see but like i said it is just one big fight section so there's nothing else to say really no collectibles or anything so should be uh, nothing but a peanut. No, but we can't move. Just stay alive. We'll get you out of here. You're going nowhere. You stupid bastard. What have you done with the boy? He's my son now. Secret <laughs> weapon. Yeah. Ah, child. Let him pass. You won't finish your evil work. You find out. Oh, I will. But I'll finish you first. And <laughs> Yeah. 
Too old to fight? No! Not! Not Man Bear Pig! God damn it! Anyway, what we're gonna do, you, you're just gonna whip out your rock stone, you're gonna slam the cow square in the nugget, and boy, that's the end of that chapter! So that was one big fight, and that is one big death for El Counteroni! 
Um, but yes, that is also the end of Man Bear Pig, which, you know what? We've seen deaths in the game. Still nothing has hit me as hard as Roderick from the first game. That, that broke me. That genuinely broke me. Now I'm kind of like, well, you know, we haven't seen you for much of the game. You did try to kill us first as well, so a bit awkward, right? But uh, anyway, we are on to the cart. Nothing again to do for the next couple of minutes, just a bit of dialogue. But like I said, as far as you fighting humans have gone, it's over. We are done. Just a whole bunch of rats left to get through. Grande. Stand it. You did all you could and he knew it, Amicia. Besides, you gave him what he needed most. The Count's death. No. Someone to care for. A real purpose. Yes. Yes. He gave his life for us. I won't let it be for nothing. Now we need to find out where Hugo is. That's the problem. Marseille's a damn big city. The burst of the nebula probably left marks. Whatever's happening over there, Hugo must be at the center of it. How can we know he's still alive? There'll be signs. I hope. Wow. That kind of sign? Yes. It's him! But I don't think it's a good sign. What's that noise? Is it coming from the city? It's coming from the ground! What? Don't what happened? Way. Straight to the hills! No! Not the sea! Let's find the small boat! What's that damn rumble? Enough! You're scaring the children! The gates of hell have opened! Marseille is lost! It's the final chant of the macula. Barricading the gate. Why? Because that rumble is coming from the other side. But what about those still inside? They're dead already. Keep going. What do we do? There's another gate further on, but that hay is in the way. Wait, we have this. So, after a lot of death and a lot of annoyance, now it's time for a flamethrower, baby. Come on! Nothing, nothing better than a flamethrower. So, uh, literally all it is is holding the left trigger and right trigger to aim, of course, and shoot, fire. Job done. But for the next couple of minutes, what's going to happen is um, the horses are going to speed up because there is going to be a bunch of rats that are just going to just appear out of nowhere. Your job is literally just to flamethrower the crap out of them. They are going to be all over the screen. Um, so, you know... Enough for you to shoot them and stuff, so don't worry, they're not going to be like flying everywhere, so it's a bit difficult. Um, oh! <laughs> Sorry, I just thought I could give you a little uh, haircut there with my flamethrower, but evidently note! So, rats are going to appear, we're going to look backwards, you just got to keep your flamethrower pinned at them.
I'm telling you what, she's had her head bashed in, she's had her shoulder bashed in, she's been stabbed through the stomach with a bow and arrow, she's just been blown to pieces, somehow she's still going, still going to try and find Hugh Goss. Hugh Goss, Hugh Boss. So this is chapter 16 then, this is the last chapter where things are going a bit nuts, we do have one prologue, sort of, uh, well, um, epilogue, sorry, after this one. Uh, but again, not a lot to do, just keep on following uh, Big Lucas for the time being. They are. Now that Hugo has become their leader. It was always his favourite game. Conquering. Well, someone's dream came true. What do we have here? And coincidentally, this is where we're going to get our fifth and final flower for the Herbalist achievement. It's going to be right in front of us. You can't miss it because Lucas is going to point it out. Somehow through all the rat disease and death and stuff. Yeah, this is uh, this is it. So you should now be on flower five out of five and you should have the Herbalist achievement to go with it. Ready for the pop? Oh, that ain't nothing but a peanut, man. Or something or other. You're alive. Oh. Keep going. Hugo's close. Right, so once again, nobody's dead, which is always handy. But this is, uh, I mean, this is a hell of a section. This is a hell of a section. So what's going to happen is you're going to see rats that appear, and then another bunch of rats appear from a little... So it's kind of like two waves of rats, but you get about... You get a good couple of seconds to run from bit to bit. So basically, they're going to go around a lot of these walls. So that is what we need to do. So what we need to do then is just simply wait for a gap. Simply lovely wait for a gap. In fact, as soon as Lucas stops talking and then we're all good. Right. Now we're good. What we're going to do is wait for this first set of rats, or th these next set of rats, to go past. As soon as they do, and the last one's gone, you're going to press the A button and you're going to make a sprint for it. So drop down right now, and then sprint straight for the wall in front of you. No stopping. Just run, run, run. Straight for the wall in front of you. Somehow the rats are not getting through there. You'll automatically crouch down a lot of the time. As soon as the next set of rats have gone, just keep sprinting down to the next bit of wall on the left here. And then when this next set of rats decide to knob off, completely sprint to the next set of walls. So you do get a good, you know, a good couple of seconds in order to make it. At least 10 to 12 seconds. There's that one. Now we just need to wait until the rats have gone through the gate two times in order for the gates to actually blow off. So we're waiting. We're waiting. We're not master. But we are baiting some fish, because we need some. Okay, there goes the rats. As soon as the gates are blown off, make a run for it now. So straight through. That one gone. Don't worry about that. Just head for the next one, and you will, and you should make the next one. There we go. As soon as the rats have gone again, make another break for it. Because, well, the wall's gone anyway, so you have got a choice. Make a break for this one. And, of course, it's going to be the same thing again. So as soon as the rats have gone... There we go. Ain't nothing but a let's go. Go, go, go. Go, go, go. Damn it. Straight for the uh, bits in front of us here. There we go. Head to the right slightly. Not all the way. You don't want to die yet. Now we can run again. So again, as soon as the rats are gone, that's what we're doing. We're not hanging around. We're not waiting. Uh, so we're going to do a little bit of sneaking through. Now, sometimes this part can be sort of hard to tell if you are too close to the edge. Um, so I actually end up waiting for these to go. Going forward a little bit more, and then I just wait now until the next one. Because it's kind of hard to judge if you're too close, or if you're not far away enough. If you know what I mean. So, edge forward as far as you think you can. As soon as the next rats go, get out of it, and sprint. That's what we're looking for, the bridge. So run straight for the bridge, and that'll be the end of this section. Man, that's some unbelievable ratiness. We made it! He's 
that, Lucas? Look at you, hiding under a blanket. Go on, jump! I dare ya! In fact, we gotta dare you, you gotta do it anyway, so ha <laughs> ha! You win! Ah, uh, ah. Uh. Anyway, jump! Take a deep breath. Lucas! <coughs> Lord! Lucas! <coughs> where are you? <coughs> oh, uh, my head spinning. Oh. Focus. You go first. Uh, find him. So we follow the linear path, what you're going to see now is a whole bunch of like phoenixes. So it's kind of foggy, it is kind of hard to tell, but basically what you're looking for, and you'll probably just be able to see them in the distance, so all you need to do then is just keep walking forward. Um, if you're looking for something to sort of follow, there's going to be like these little sort of fences that are popping up and, um, from underneath the ground. So follow them, and then eventually, either on your right or your left, you're going to find a bunch of phoenixes, or these phoenix statues. Now, what's going to happen is you're going to follow a couple of these. Now, when Hugo says, I'm here, I'm close, just keep moving forward. Don't try to look for another phoenix, just keep moving forward. So for the time being, just keep going, and anytime you see a phoenix just in the distance, uh, just keep following it and going past it. All natural laws stop here. Right, hang on to that. So this will be it for me then. At this point, Hugo's going to say, I'm here, I'm close. As soon as you've got this bit of dialogue option, just keep running forward. Do not look for another Phoenix point. Just keep heading forward and eventually you will get the cutscene like this. So you'll start slowing down. This automatic cutscene will happen. If this doesn't happen and you sort of feel like you're going around in circles, simply you'll just have to restart the section and just go back from the beginning of this section. I had to do it, don't know what happened, but it may happen to you, so just be aware of that. Otherwise, it's a long bit of cutscene now and some emotional crap is going down, Charlie Brown. Hello. Can I do something for you? 
Hello? We met already. Hey, what's going on with you? It's the boy! He killed her! I'm sorry. Killed her? What the hell? What's going on? She's right. I'm doing this. How? I see no rats. It's the mistake I made. It's what I've become. Let's not stay here. Come. We need to fix this, Amicia. We will find a solution, but first we must get out of here. Yes. Look at them. I loved this place. And these people. You have to stop this. I can't. Just focus. You did it before. Have you already forgotten? It's a lie. It's the macula playing tricks. I am the macula now. I am. What? No. You know it could happen. It's too late. No, no, no. I let the macula take all of me. Now this is what happens. I... I know. We must do something. We must stop people from dying. Maybe if we leave, it will stop. Hugo, can it stop? I miss you, Amicia. Not just them, but all the others. And even more as the rats spread. So this is the end? Not completely. We have one chance. The last one. Tell me. I'll do anything. I think you know already. I... You must stop me. To stop the macula. Hugo, you can't. Ask me that. You're the only one who can stop me from becoming a monster. You're not a monster. I will be. If I kill all I love. All these nice things you showed me. I understand, but... Please, Amicia. I... I'll try. <sighs> all right. What now? Hugo, where are you? Where are you? I'm sorry, but you're ready now. To save everything. Ready? How can I be ready for this? I know, but I can't stop myself now. Only you can stop me. Hugo! I love you. I've been happy with you. Goodbye, Amicia. I love you. I love you so much. When you're gone, there'll be nothing else. I'll be alone. <laughs> All alone. <laughs> I can't. Oh yeah, bloody meant it, mate. So, as it turns out, then, so we've just gone through a whole bunch of games trying to find a cure for Hugo. As it turns out, um, he's too powerful, and we're gonna have to do to him what the others did to Balicia, to Basil, the Italian mixed herb seasoning boy. You know that that kid. Um, but it's not just letting him die. It's. <laughs> I mean, imagine if you were put in that position. And you had to do this to your little brother or sister because they carry a disease, the macula, that turns out will just destroy the whole world with rats. So we walk forward and, well, you're going to see what's happening. And I'm thinking, I couldn't do it, but, you know, it's for the good of the world. So, uh, I don't really want this to be the end of the game. I really, really do hope they bring out a third game to sort of end it. It would be perfect. Although, at this point, you're probably thinking <laughs> it's it's not going to go well. So, yeah, dude. Oh, man. Oh, man.
bruh, 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 <laughs> you can't even bloody explain it, can you? Uh, we're going to uh, skip the credits. Again, I got a big hand, big shout out to everyone who made this game. It was, personally, personally, this is a game of the year for me, without a doubt. Uh, but we get the King Hugo achievement for killing your baby brother. You killed your baby brother. You get an achievement for killing your brother. Jesus Christ. But it had to be done, you know. So anyway, this is the epilogue, not the prologue, as I said earlier, dumbass. This is the epilogue. Uh, Amicia went for a, a Captain uh, Captain Wonder Woman haircut. Oh, Captain. Captain Marvel, sorry, not Captain uh, Wonder Woman. What the hell am I on about? Uh, so this is it now. There's obviously nothing scary, nothing else is going to happen. All we're doing is just following a path. And that's going to be, end that is literally going to be the end of the game. So, just enjoy the interaction here. I'm not going to spoil it here. We finally see Sophia after a couple of months. Yeah. Uh, oh, what have I been up to for a year? I uh, Just having vivid nightmares about everything that's gone on for the past two games. What do you think? Yes. Good. You had me pretty worried, you know. I'm fine, Sophia. It's been a year. Already. And... How's the business going? Good. Doing more legal trading these days. Oh, what happened? Well, I just want to live longer. Really? I like a quiet sea better than a storm. Speaking of which, we'll depart tomorrow. Great. Great. Is our alchemist coming? Lucas. Oh, no. He's still on the road. Studying. All by himself. They grew up so fast. He needed this. Whew. Getting chilly. Let's pick up the pace a bit. So, do you know where we can put you ashore? Not yet. But I think I'll know when I come across the signs. Of the macula? Yes. It leaves marks on things and people. I think I can find where the next carrier and protector will rise. The next plague. I want to set the path for them, like Aelia did for us. No use telling you just to rest, then. <laughs> None. Fine. Ah. <sighs> It smells so good. And the quiet. Yes. I'll miss it. <clears throat> Getting there. This is Amicia. Be kind to her. It's a special day. It's going to be all right. So flat compared to this.
I mean, this is a pretty long claim. Oh, it won't be two minutes, no. Just, you know, going over chasms and, you know, doing some Assassin's Creed-style parkour and stuff. Jesus Christ. It's me. I'm coming in. here before? I always knew you'd be good at making friends. I wasn't sure I was ready, but Sophia's here. Sorry. Why is it so hard? We never backed down, right? We held. May this earth remember how much you loved it. May it remember all you gave to protect it. I remember. There we go then. So I left the final cutscene in for your enjoyment, uh, purely because that was just, it, that was kind of heart ripping that, wasn't it? So, stunning game. Absolutely, absolutely amazing game. Um, but there's going to be this little post credit scene here. Of course, you can all guess whose little hand this is. You know, that makes it sadder. His little hand and his little arm and... Hmm. Anyway, apparently it's not all over yet. As you can see, some of the macula appears... To remain in him so hopefully fingers crossed there is going to be at least a third and possibly final game in the trilogy um a sober so studio have said there's no plans for a third game but hopefully they'll um you know just just crack one out even if it's like two or three hours long just to tie up everything neatly i refuse to believe that just two goes dead and that's it uh, so now, of course, we've got new game plus which we are obviously going to need for the three skilled achievements which I will explain what to do in just a bit. But for now, obviously for me personally, I missed out the secret chest. So we need to go back to chapter 9, Tales and Revolutions. And you cannot just go... Obviously, because I didn't have any knives at the point where I went to get that other secret chest, I actually had to start it again. So hopefully, as I've said, um, with all the, with all the um, ideas and information that I gave you earlier, hopefully you do not 
need to do this again. So hopefully you do not need to do this again, which would be great. Uh, but obviously I'm just showing you. If you do need to do this again, obviously just refer to the timestamps, what time the chapter was. Uh, chapter 9, Tales and Revelations. And then of course, just go again from there. Um, but I'm obviously just going to quickly show you me unlocking the achievement. So of course we started again. It was only a bit of a pain in the ass because... I mean, it's obviously a lot quicker than exploring around and everything, but it still took a good sort of 15 minutes, 20 minutes just to get to that point. So uh, this is where the knife is. If you couldn't remember, this is where the knife is. Pretty early on, we're with Sophia, remember. We come down, we find this building on its own. We unlock the door. And then, of course, we jump in. And remember, because the secret chest is already open, all we need to do this time... Well, it's not open now, but all we need to do is just grab the knife from here, and that will be enough. Like I said, the... And we've already... Now we're coming up to it. So, again, that took about 15, 20 minutes. Now, like I said, you can get the achievement, but it all has to be done in one save through. So, you can't start a new game plus and then go to the chapter. You have to collect all secret chests again if you started a new game plus. So, that's why I'm just showing you. Making sure that we get this one out of the way first. And then uh, we can go from... And then, obviously, we can go from there then. So, now we're going to go back up to the secret chest there. And this is... I'm just going to show you the achievement, of course, anyway. And then I will quickly explain how to get those other three of the three skills and how they actually work because a good few people have ex sort of tried to explain but it still leaves a lot of people confused so uh what we need to do then i'll show you there we go so we can finally get the secret achievement there this is what we need this is just exactly what we need so job done well thank you oh my god thank god Right, so now, if you've been following along with the guide, you should only have three achievements left. And that is, of course, for just um, getting all the skills up. Now, I will quickly try to explain as best I can. So, to level up your stealth skill, you can be spotted, and basically you can run away to a door. The only, the only problem is, if an archer's around, they will still shoot at the door, so you can't escape. But um, all you've got to do is just sneak past enemies. You can be caught as, just as long as you break their line of sight and get into the next area. Okay, that is for the leveling up your stealth skill. Of course, for the aggressive skill, all you're doing is literally just killing everyone. You can leave a couple behind if you want, but just try and kill absolutely every enemy in every area until you get that achievement. But the main one is the opportunism one. So what that is, is you have to kill half of all the enemies available in the area. That is how you level up your alchemy skill. It's got nothing to do with actually killing them with alchemy. So you've got to basically... Have a look and take out of how many enemies are around in the area because you can kill, you can kill, you know, 40%, 60%, roughly, you know, if you try and, you know, roughly about that, that's okay. Um, but if you kill too many enemies, it's going to go to the aggressive count. If you don't kill enough enemies, it's going to go to the stealth skill. So, obviously, with your invincible mode on, this should be a bit of a piece of cake. So, you just have to take, be aware with the alchemy and the opportunism one of how many air enemies you kill in an area. So remember, you've got to kill roughly about half. An easy way to remember it is for every two enemies you kill, just kill one of them. And that's pretty much it. So you, obviously we have to start a new game plus now in order to keep our levels and items and gears. And all of that was amazingly explained by Swarodia XP on True Achievement. So a big shout out to, uh, to him. So there we go. So they are the three. That's as best... Uh, that's as best... Um, advice that I can give, thanks to, again, Swarodia, to be honest, because a lot of people did get exp uh, did get a bit confused with that. So, there we go. Just do your new game, uh, new game plus, smash out the last three achievements, and that is that. So, there we go then, guys. So, thank you so, so much for watching. This was a Playtale a play, a play Requiem. This was, once again, they smashed it out of the park. A lot of people had a lot of high hopes for it from a Playtale Innocence, and they delivered unduly. So, thank you so, so much for watching, guys and gals. This, I can finally go get my water. Uh, but I really, really hope you enjoyed the game. I really do hope that the guide helped as well. If it did, of course, don't forget to like, like, comment, subscribe. Share with a friend as well. A big shout-out to everyone on Patreon who continues to support the channel. Thank you guys so, so much. And that's it, thank you guys and gals. So it was a biggie, but we're done -y. Thank you again. I'll see you in the next Game Pass game.
Big love.